Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Hogwarts, A Bit Rebellious as the Dark Lord. Chapter 61 Riel stood up suddenly and looked at the information on the light screen in surprise. Not to mention the special lottery and magic fusion, this character panel alone is a good thing. He has only entered the wizarding world not long ago, and it is okay to say that he has few talents and magic spells. If he has more talents and magic spells, he may have to get confused. The most important thing is that he doesn't know the effects of many talents. With the character panel, he can check the effects of these talents. The system opens the character panel and takes a look. Host, Riel's Thomas, Identity, Orphan from Basia Street Orphanage, Student at Hogwarts, Hidden Prefect of First Grade Slytherin. Talents, Heart of Curse God Level Talent, Transfiguration Talent, High Grade Wand Making Talent, High Grade Photographic Memory, No Level Herbology Talent, High Grade Magic Talent, High Grade Magic Spells, Flying Curse, Quick Confinement, Thousands of Bullets, Oolong Out of the Hole. Assets, 1300 Gold Galleons, Fine Wand. Looking at the information on the light screen, Riel smacked his lips and said, It's only been less than a month and my panel has looked so good. How can I do it in the future? After sighing, Riel's began to check the functions of each talent, focusing on the magic talent that exploded from Flitwick. High grade magic talent. Those with this talent will learn magic twice as fast, making it easier to master magic. But I'm not educated either, so I can't do anything about it. Riel suddenly beamed. This thing is perfect when paired with the curse heart. It takes other people 10 days to learn a spell, but it only takes 5 days for me, or even shorter. The gap widens instantly, and it's so fast for everyone. The heart of magic can increase the power of magic, and these magic talents can speed up the speed of learning magic and the proficiency in practicing magic. These two things cannot be said to be completely unrelated, they can only be said to be a match made in heaven, providing one-stop service. After reviewing the remaining data, Riel's had a concrete understanding of his current situation. Strong, it's easy to defeat the invincible first-year players. It's a little harder to beat the second-year players, but it's not without a chance. In the third-year class, he has no problem single-handedly defeating three or four. But this level is not even considered mainstream in the wizarding world. If wizards are divided into levels, then he can be regarded as a trainee wizard at most. But he is not particularly sad. As he said, there will be bread, chicken drumsticks, chicken legs are already available, and abalone will also be available. It is only a matter of time. But he really needs to hurry up and become stronger. Nose is back. If Nose goes crazy without thinking about it, it will be great fun. So Riel's looked at the remaining two rewards, or to be precise, at the magic fusion. Would the fusion of two magic spells with similar effects have a better effect? Looking at this prompt, Riel's couldn't help but fall into deep thought. If there was one prize that was the most precious this time, it goes without saying that it was the magic fusion. If he had to choose one of the three rewards, he would choose the magic fusion without hesitation. Needless to say, the character panel is just data to him. It is useful but not very helpful to him. The special lottery looks good, but what you can draw depends on luck. If you are unlucky and draw a bunch of garbage, it is not impossible. In comparison, the magic fusion is more stable, and as long as he doesn't use it randomly, it is a real reward. Riel's rubbed his chin and began to think seriously, the opportunity for magic fusion is precious and cannot be wasted. But these spells I have now. It wasn't like he hadn't thought about saving it for later when he could get a more powerful magic spell before using it, but as soon as the idea came up, he rejected it. Why are powerful spells so powerful? Because they all have some extreme characteristics. For example, Avada Kedavra, it means that the one who wins will die, what kind of magic can it be fused with? What magic spell can be combined with it to greatly improve it? A magic spell like Rapid Confinement. Let's not talk about other things, the difference in the levels of these two magic spells is too big. If they are really fused, it is likely to be counterproductive. The level is lowered a bit, and the advanced magic spells such as Shen Feng Wying are available. The characteristics of Shen Feng Wying are also very extreme. As long as the injury is caused, it can only be cured by rapid healing, and there is no other way to recover. In a sense, if Shen Feng Wuying didn't have the counterspell of rapid healing, it would definitely be one of the top spells. 
What can you fuse with it in this case? What is it missing? Apart from the shortcoming of quick healing, it really doesn't lack anything else. As for letting Shen Feng Shadowless Fusion heal quickly and eliminate this shortcoming, level aside, these two spells are inherently counter spells, so he didn't dare to gamble. Once the bet is lost, such a precious opportunity will be wasted. It is undeniable that some advanced and even top level magic spells can indeed be tried to be fused. For example, the fire spell is fused with a fire shield to protect one's body, summoning a fire dragon and summoning fire at the same time. Grindelwald has to call him an expert when he sees it. Another example is Crucitus, bone cutting, and a spell that goes straight to the soul, allowing this extreme pain to directly act on the depths of the soul. When the time comes that you ask Voldemort to be your little brother, he won't even dare to fart. But those magic spells are still too far away from him now, and water from afar cannot quench his thirst for nearness. Moreover, high-level or top-level magic spells are perfect. It doesn't mean much whether they are fused or not, and no matter how much they are fused, they won't be any stronger. In comparison, it would be better to look at the low-level magic spells, what if something good can be fused? Then isn't he just using a high-level or even top-level magic spell for nothing? After thinking for a while, Riel's eyes flashed. I almost forgot, there are these two magic spells. The effects are similar, the grades are not much different, and each has its own advantages and disadvantages. If they can complement each other after fusion, then it must be a high-level magic spell at best. It is known that the function of the flying spell is to summon objects or creatures very quickly. The disadvantage is that the summoned objects will only fly towards the caster. In contrast, the floating spell is different. Although it is troublesome to move the object or creature it controls, it will not force the caster to fly. The effect of the floating curse and the flying curse are similar. In a sense, the flying curse is a variant of the floating curse. If these two magic spells are fused together, and their function is to summon objects at extremely fast speeds, and at the same time throw objects away at extremely fast speeds, then it will definitely be an advanced magic spell. Riels rubbed his chin and thought of an anime he had watched in his previous life. If there is no deviation in his speculation, and the two magic spells really merge, it will be the magical version of Shenluo Tianjiang and Wanxiang Tianyan. At that time, whether it is used against enemies or for daily use, it will be the best magic spell. If controlling objects is easy enough, then his previous ideas are not impossible. Carrying 1,800 silver needles with you, you can directly perform the Rainstorm Pear Blossom Needle, and even have the chance to fly with a sword. Riels pondered for a while, gritted his teeth and said firmly, whether it works or not, I won't suffer any loss. System, consume the magic spell to fuse at once, fuse the flying spell and the floating spell. Consume the magic spell fusion times once, the floating spell plus the flying spell or being fused. The familiar light curtain appeared in front of Riels again. Above the light curtain is a fiery red furnace that looks like an alchemy furnace. It says fusion furnace. There are two small white balls rotating around the left and right sides of the furnace. If you look carefully, you can see the flying spell and the floating spell written on the two small white balls on the left and right respectively. Under Riel's gaze, two small white balls flew into the fusion furnace, and then began to rotate at a speed that was difficult to distinguish with the naked eye. Riel's clenched his fists, straightened his body, and stared at the fusion furnace on the light screen. Even if he has been prepared in his heart, he will still be nervous when he should be nervous. This is human nature and it is not easy to change. Meow, meow, Garfield looked at the serious-looking shit shoveler and couldn't help but tilt his head and look at him in confusion. Round-faced and fat, Shanna also opened her eyes, looking at Riel's unblinkingly with her round eyes. They can all feel that Riel's is very nervous now, and his body is very tight, just like, animals when they encounter natural enemies. In Garfield's understanding, it's, a shit-shoveling guy. Comma, Riel's doesn't know what the two little ones, dot the big one is thinking. If he knew the difference, he would have to punch them twice. His attention was now focused on the light screen. At this time, the two rapidly rotating small white balls had disappeared. It was replaced by a lavender ball that was twice the size of the small white ball. Successfully consumed one spell to fuse. The flying curse and the floating curse have been successfully fused. Please name it yourself. 
unnamed curse yet to be named the product of the fusion of the flying curse and the floating curse, which can completely control the movement of the cursed creature or object. Note, the weight and quantity of the controlled object depend on the amount of magic power injected by the caster. Riel stood up suddenly, scaring Garfield and Shanna to the point of almost exploding, thinking that an enemy was really coming. As a result, all they saw was that the shit shoveler was holding the wand with some excitement and casting a spell on the books on the desk. Seeing this scene, Garfield and Shanna closed their eyes in unison, good, crazy again. They remembered that the one who went crazy last time was the owner of the pet shop. Riels, who controlled the magic book to fly around in the air, said excitedly, it's really done. There is no longer the shortcoming of the flying spell that can only summon objects, and there is also no shortcoming of the floating spell that controls the slow movement of objects. Whether it's controlling the speed of an object or the degree of control over it, this spell is as good as the other. After testing the spell, Riel sat back on the bed with satisfaction. Now he already has the magic version of the combination of Shinra Tianjiang and Wanxiang Tianyan. Relying on this magic spell, it was not difficult for him to push through the third years. Although he still couldn't defeat Voldemort and Quirrell. But it's easy to mess around and cause them some trouble. Coupled with the special feature of his wand, as long as he can use it properly, it is not without hope to counter-kill Quirrell and Voldemort. Charge up your magic power and hit them hard. Riels nodded with satisfaction. Relying on this magic spell, my combat effectiveness is at least twice as strong as before. As for the name of the curse, since it is the fusion of the flying curse and the floating curse, let's call it the floating curse. Flying curse plus floating curse equals floating curse, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this name. What, would it be embarrassing to call him out? Again, as long as I'm not embarrassed, it won't be me who's embarrassed. Riels was very satisfied with the name he got and secretly sighed that he was really a genius at naming before he set his sights on the last reward. The special lottery for dog betting is really, either a wave of wealth or a wave of loss. The universe is so vast, and the probability of coming up with something good is, hard to describe. Riels rubbed his chin, looking at the special lottery with some toothache. To be honest, he never thinks that he is a lucky person, nor does he think that he has any shit luck. If it weren't for the system's lottery being unaffected by the elixir, he would have to go to Snape and get a bucket of elixir and put it in his stomach. If you draw early or late, you will be drawn. The quality of the reward cannot be determined by whether you draw early or late. The reward should be whatever it is. After successfully brainwashing himself, Riel said, System, use the special lottery. Consumption of a special lottery, the drawing is in progress. Congratulations to the host for getting a bottle of Godzilla genetic fluid diluted version. Godzilla gene fluid diluted version used on animals, it can greatly enhance the animal's ability, and there is a probability that the animal will have the characteristics and abilities of Godzilla. Note, this item has been diluted and can be used on any animal, and is only effective on animals. It is invalid for human consumption and has no side effects on animals. The system's voice fell, and a test tube appeared out of thin air in Riel's hand. Holding the test tube that suddenly appeared in his hand, he looked at the light red liquid inside and smelled the faint smell of blood in the air. Riel's was unusually silent as he thought about the various rewards he would draw. He thought about good rewards and bad rewards, and he wasn't surprised even when he drew out the original bitter tea seeds. But he really didn't expect that he could actually pull out. Godzilla. Oh, no, it's diluted Godzilla genetic fluid. This can be considered, a lot of luck. But what do I need this for? Not to mention it can only be used for animals, even if I can drink it I won't drink it. I think it's good to be a wizard. I like being a wizard the most. Things that mess with my mind, they deserve to die. It's true that it's tasteless to eat and it's a pity to throw it away. Riels looked at the genetic fluid in his hand worriedly. He really didn't know how to deal with this thing. He couldn't give it to Garfield and Shanna, right? Xana is an owl, so what's the point of giving her a drink? Garfield is a cat, so giving her a drink, is not a bad idea. Thinking of this, Riel suddenly turned his head and looked at the gas, fat cat Garfield beside him. Meow, when Garfield saw the shit shovel looking at her, she hesitated for a while, then stood up helplessly, ran to his legs and rubbed against him. Hey, it's not easy to be a cat these days. 
I can only eat 3 kilograms of cat food in one meal. I can't feel full. I can't feel full at all. Forget it. She still has to coax the hairy man, which is really painful. Garfield. Life is not easy, Mau Mau sighs. Garfield, do you want to become stronger? Do you want to step on a dragon, punch a dementor, and fly through the world on a hippogriff? You listen to my deception. Well, let me introduce it to you. All you need to do is drink this thing, and what I said before will not be a dream. Garfield, no, as long as you drink this, you will become Garfield, and you will become very awesome. Then you can do whatever you want. After a round of fooling around, I saw that Garfield was still unmoved, with a humanized disdain on the cat's face. Riel's mouth twitched a few times, and he could only unleash his ultimate move, drink it, and you can show off as much cat food as you want. As soon as these words came out, Garfield's eyes suddenly widened. She looked at Riel's in disbelief, as if to make sure she heard correctly. In response, Riel's could only nod with tears in his eyes. Don't worry, I will do what I say, and I will eat whatever you want. What, just a little cat food? Is it worth it? It is indeed hundreds of millions of cat food. Whose cat can eat several kilograms of kibble? I can't afford it, I can't afford it at all. He finally understood why Angeloy was so excited in the first place. If it were him, he would be excited too. Meow, Garfield's eyes were bright, and without waiting for Riel's to react, he swooped up and took away the genetic fluid, bit open the stopper and raised his head to take a deep breath. The whole process was completed in one go. Riel's is already used to this. This is not the first time Garfield has shown her flexibility. Of course, every time it is when he unpacks the cat food. Don't talk anymore. If you talk too much, you'll be in tears. Seeing Garfield drink the genetic fluid, Riel's also became serious and carefully observed Garfield's changes. Although the system said that there are no side effects when taken by animals, otherwise he would not give it to her. But be careful with the Wanian ship. If something goes wrong with Garfield, he can think of a solution. Time passed by, Riel's and Garfield stared at each other, full of doubts. Isn't this shit shoveler not wanting to admit his guilt? Do you really think she, Garfield, is easy to bully? Garfield looked down at his paws, and then looked up at Riel's face. If she punched him down, would he be able to get up tomorrow? Riel's was pondering whether Garfield was too big and the genetic fluid was too little for her. Thinking of this, Riel's couldn't help but frowned, System, what's going on? The genetic fluid is useless. Host, please don't be anxious, the genetic fluid needs time to diffuse and absorb. Just when Riel's wanted to ask something more, he found that Garfield suddenly fell asleep, his body like a gas tank trembling slightly. Vaguely, there seemed to be something reddish flowing in her body. Riel's touched his chin. Has it started? System, how long will she be like this? Each organism is different, so the specific time cannot be calculated. It is roughly estimated that it will take 36 hours to complete gene fusion. The host does not need to worry, the system produces it, it is absolutely excellent. Riel's ignored the system's bragging and squatted down to check on Garfield for a while, making sure that she had just fallen asleep and then felt relieved. What if I really evolve into Godzilla? How can I fight with Superman? Thinking of that scene, Riel shook his head speechlessly and lay down on the bed. Looking at the fish outside the window, Riel couldn't help but sigh, this fish is quite big. You can catch it and grill it in a few days, as well as the big octopus and the sizzling squid are also good. Riel chirped a few times, closed his eyes and fell asleep in a good mood. What, he should be so excited that he can't sleep? It's so funny, as long as he doesn't feel excited, then he's not the one who's excited, go to sleep. Hogwarts, Dark Forest. The Forbidden Forest is very dark during the day, and even more so at night. Occasionally, there are a few tiny rays of moonlight, which shine through the leaves and add a little light to the forest. But this environment is a paradise for magical animals. Haven't you found those wizards yet? Chief. All our warriors from the Centaur tribe have scattered out to search the surroundings, but still haven't found anything. After hearing the report, the hand holding the bow and arrow, the leader of the Centaur tribe, Kuror, had veins. Are those wizards crazy for actually daring to hunt and kill unicorns? Those are holy unicorns. Aren't they afraid of being cursed? 
The unicorn is a symbol of holiness, and its horns, blood and hair all have strong magical effects. The horns can detoxify, the tail hairs can be used to make magic wands, and unicorn blood can bring people back to life. But those who drink its blood only have half of their lives, and half of their lives are cursed from drinking its blood. This rare magical animal is almost extinct, and only places like the Forbidden Forest at Hogwarts still exist. But now the unicorn has been hunted, and it's still on the territory of their centaurs. Captain, it must have been done by those hateful wizards. We should ask the old man at Hogwarts. Ask a question, I think we can't defeat them. They even dare to kill unicorns. These wizards are already crazy. Yes, we should fight over there and teach those greedy wizards a lesson. Guys calm down, I think we should tell Hagrid about this first, he will help us. Kuros waved his hand to interrupt the centaur's words, and said coldly, the holy unicorn died in our territory, killed by the greedy wizard killer. We should avenge it, bury the unicorn's body first, and then discuss how to take revenge. As soon as these words came out, nearly a hundred soldiers immediately shouted loudly, revenge. Revenge. Kill all those greedy wizards and avenge the holy unicorn. The shouts pierced the silent night sky, frightening the magical animals in the forest. By the lake, Quirrell, who was wearing a black robe, heard the shouts and his face became increasingly ugly. Master, these groups of people are going to find Dumbledore, will they expose us? The centaur tribe is quite large, and it is a middle to upper class force outside the Forbidden Forest. What can be compared with it is the tribe of giant monsters and Acromantula. If the centaurs really went to attack Hogwarts, it would definitely alarm Dumbledore, and even the entire wizarding world. When the time comes to investigate, they will be exposed. Idiot, if the centaur tribe attacks Hogwarts, it will definitely attract Dumbledore's attention. Wouldn't you just be able to find the Philosopher's Stone? As long as I find the Magic Stone and resurrect me successfully, do I still need to care about being exposed? A hoarse and harsh voice came from the back of Quirrell's head, and the words frightened Quirrell's face turned pale. That's right, I'm sorry, master, I thought, it's too one-sided. Stop talking nonsense, after absorbing the unicorn's blood, my soul has solidified a lot, and now I can return to Hogwarts. Don't let me down, otherwise you will experience the pain that goes deep into your soul. After speaking in a hoarse voice, he stopped talking, but those two short sentences frightened Quirrell to the ground. When he came back to his senses, the black robe on his body was already wet with cold sweat, and his whole body looked like he had just been fished out of the water. Quirrell stood up with difficulty and looked resentfully at the brightly lit Hogwarts castle not far away. It's all Hogwarts and Dumbledore's fault that he's in this situation, they both deserve to die. And Harry Potter and that rebellious little fanboy, they should also die without a burial place. Quirrell clenched his fists and murmured with a sinister expression, Just wait, I will make your life worse than death. He wiped the remaining unicorn blood from the corner of his mouth and staggered toward Hogwarts Castle. After the centaurs on the other side buried the unicorn's body, they gathered hundreds of elite centaurs from the tribe and began to discuss how to attack Hogwarts. They know they can't beat Hogwarts, but they still have to attack. This is not a war, but an attitude. They must use their attitude to warn those greedy wizards and make them pay the price for their greed. The noise caused by the centaur tribe alarmed all the creatures on the periphery of the Forbidden Forest, making them all start to become restless. Tonight is destined to be a sleepless night. The vertical sun, early morning. Riel's finished his breakfast beautifully under the service, of Pansy and Cassandra as usual. On the way to the herbal medicine class, Riels touched his growing belly, chirped a few times and said, how are you going to be responsible? You two worked together to make me pregnant. If you are irresponsible, I will tell Hermione about it and you can figure it out. Question mark question mark question mark. Pansy and Cassandra stopped and stared blankly at Riels, who was stroking his belly. What do you mean they made him pregnant? How come they don't know they still have this ability? Pansy is confused plus one one, embarrassed and annoyed plus one four, Cassandra is confused plus nine, embarrassed and annoyed plus one two, funny plus nine. Another forty mood points were recorded, and Riel's narrowed his eyes in comfort. Today is another day full of energy. You can eat whatever you want. Don't talk nonsense. If you say that, then you can get the chicken legs and pumpkin juice by yourself from now on. 
if you have the ability, just go complain to Hermione, hum. Cassandra, let's go. The embarrassed pansy snorted coldly, grabbed Cassandra's little hand and walked forward. Cassandra also followed very obediently, her emerald eyes filled with a smile that couldn't be hidden. The two women said they wanted to get rid of Riel's, but in fact they were not very fast, it could even be said to be slow. Obviously, they were waiting for Riel's to catch up with him. Riel's, who knew this well, raised his eyebrows in a funny way and quickly caught up with the two women. Regardless of the two women pretending to be angry, they would say two shocking words from time to time, which made them feel embarrassed, angry, and funny at the same time. It was a short walk to the herbal medicine classroom, which lasted less than 20 minutes, but he got more than a hundred emotional points from the two women. What is this if not an angel? They are definitely little angels with wings, coming down to give him emotional value. The herbology class is not in the teaching building, but in a greenhouse behind Hogwarts. To be precise, the class is held here. There are many greenhouses like this behind Hogwarts, and each greenhouse contains different herbs. These herbs are taken care of by Professor Pomona Sprout, who is in charge of herbal medicine. She is also the Dean of Hufflepuff, a very kind lady. At least when Riel saw her for the first time, he felt that she was as kind as Mrs. Aina. For a moment, he didn't know how to boost her mood. Professor Sprout was holding a pot of emerald green plants and explaining to the little badgers and snakes. Bai Xi'an is a plant with magical properties that can be used to make potions and also has a strong healing effect. In addition to using white essence, direct use of this plant can also help the healing of superficial wounds. Of course, using white essence will have a better effect. This is mandrake, a very commonly used plant. Professor Sprout explained most of the herbs in the greenhouse, and the little badgers and snakes were confused. Among the courses that are the most difficult to learn and the least interesting, Potions ranks first, Herbology ranks second, and Divination Stars ranks third. Herbalism, like potions, requires you to remember the functions of various herbs, how to cultivate them, and what you need to pay attention to. In a sense, herbal medicine is more boring than potions, because in addition to memorizing herbal medicine, it is all about planting. Riels rubbed his chin and inspected the herbs in the greenhouse. He has completed the first grade of herbalism and has a talent for high-grade herbalism, so he is still very interested in herbalism. Professor Sprout, I think this pot of bubble pod has a little too much moon stupid excrement. It is, much bigger than other bubble pods. Bubble pod is a magical plant that grows chubby pink pods with shiny beans inside. These beans will bloom as soon as they come into contact with a solid object. After hearing this, Sprout walked to Riel's and looked at the bubble pod he pointed at. The little snakes and little badgers also looked sideways, and soon they all gathered around. You are right, this bubble pod is indeed caused by too much moon kai beast feces. Although moon kai beast feces can speed up the growth of herbs, too much won't do it. Professor McGonagall asked me to help plant these bubble pods. She was in a hurry to use them, so I used the moon chicken dung. I probably put too much in there accidentally. I hereby announce that Mr. Thomas has won 10 points for Slytherin. As soon as Sprout finished speaking, the little snakes cheered and the little badgers also clapped. Sprout is happy plus 1-2, Pansy is surprised plus 1-0, Cassandra is amused plus 1-0, Malfoy is jealous plus 1-1, others are excited plus 13 and happy plus 7-7. Riels didn't care about anything else. He just looked at the applauding little badgers a few more times. I have to say, Hufflepuff is really a magical academy. The little badgers are friendly people and don't like to fight. Even though Gryffindor sometimes becomes introverted, Slytherin and Ravenclaw never stop involuntarily. Only Hufflepuff, they are still peaceful, as if there is no struggle and ambition, the peace is unbelievable. Riels touched his nose and turned to look at the bubble bean sprouts. Professor McGonagall asked for these bubble bean sprouts. Did she say what they are used for? In fact, he has already guessed some of its uses, Professor Snape, don't you think so? I just don't know if Professor Snape is willing to teach him how to make shampoo. It does belong to Minerva, but what exactly it is used for? I don't know. Professor Sprout's eyes flickered when she said this. Could she say that these bubble pods were going to Professor Snape to make shampoo? She also hoped that the shampoo would be divided a little bit, but she couldn't say it out loud, 
lest Professor Snape would get angry and stop making the shampoo. How regrettable would that be? Sprout guilty conscience plus one one. Riels raised his eyebrows, feeling guilty. The family members solved the case, and his guess was right. This bubble pod was definitely grown for Professor Snape, a free-roaming bat, to brew shampoo. In this regard, he just wanted to say, Professor Sprout, can I have some seeds from the bubble pod? Of course, it would be better if I also have some moon-crazy beast excrement. As you know, Slytherin's dormitory is very dark. Planting some bubble pods should be a good decoration for the dormitory. Well, order a variety of bubble pods, and then go to Professor Snape to learn how to make shampoo, so that you can produce and sell it yourself, be safe and environmentally friendly. As for whether Professor Snape would teach him. Regarding this point, he could only say that he thought about it. As a good student who is diligent and studious, it is normal to ask a professor for advice when you encounter a problem, right? Although this question is a bit unseemly. But let's just ask you if the shampoo is made of potions ingredients. What's wrong with asking the potions master? Absolutely not. Sprout surprise plus one two. Of course, Mr. Thomas, you can just choose a few pots from the bubble pods here and take them back. If you need, you can also choose a few pots of other herbs, but I don't recommend mandrake. You should know the power of that thing. I recommend you to raise by Sean. Professor Sprout enthusiastically recommended herbal medicine to Riel's. It's rare to find a little wizard who is interested in herbal medicine. Although he just wants to use it to decorate his bedroom, it's at least a good start, right? She is sure to trick Riel's and teach her into a good boy who likes herbalism. Thank you Professor Sprout, I just want some bubble pods, they are very strange and I like them very much. Riel's thanked him very sincerely and began to select bubble pods under the guidance of Professor Sprout. As a professor of herbology, Professor Sprout's knowledge of herbology is extremely profound, no less than Snape's knowledge of potions. Each of the herbs she cultivated was so good that it was impossible to fault them. In the end, Riel's didn't ask for much and only chose six pots of bubble pods of similar sizes. This thing can't see the sun, so it's still a question of whether it can be fed. Moreover, he mainly wanted to make shampoo. There is no point in asking for too much. They all look good, don't they? Mr. Thomas, I think you must be very talented in herbal medicine and you will definitely become a herbal master in the future. If you don't understand anything about herbal medicine, you can come to me. I think I can help you answer some questions. I will ask the house elf to deliver the bubble pods to your dormitory, and of course some moon crazy beast feces, but you must be careful not to encourage the situation. After Professor Sprout finished his instructions and received Riel's thanks, he happily turned around to see the other little wizards. It's rare to meet a young wizard who is interested in herbal medicine. This is really an eye-opener for Merlin. Sprout pleasure plus one three. Well, he understands how to increase Professor Sprout's emotional value. Sure enough, Sanhau students can eat well wherever they go. Riels shook his head and turned to check other herbs. These unique herbs were very rare to him. An herbal medicine class ended in the process of turning soil, fertilizing, and learning about herbal medicines. Throughout the whole class, Riels didn't get much emotional value. Most of it was contributed by the little snakes and the two little angels. Occasionally the little badgers and Professor Sprout will explode a little, but it's really better than nothing. Hufflepuff's little badger was so emotionally stable that he actually cried to death. This was the lowest level of emotion he had ever had since entering Hogwarts. Riel's, who suffered a terrible defeat, was completely absent-minded. He couldn't even feel the chicken drumstick in his mouth. Seeing his appearance, Pansy and Cassandra looked at each other a few times, and both shook their heads in confusion. Pansy was half puzzled and half joking, what's wrong with you? Are the chicken legs not delicious today? Or is the pumpkin juice not sweet? Cassandra also tilted her head, looking straight at Riel's with her emerald eyes. With Riel's heartless character, they really didn't know what else could make him look like this. Say it quickly and let them follow, be happy. Pansy is happy plus eight, worried plus nine, curious plus one one, Cassandra is amused plus 10, oh, curious plus 9. Well, the mood value is close to 50 points. It's very good. The chicken legs are now sweet again. Riel's narrowed his eyes happily. Nothing, just thinking about the afternoon class. 
I remember taking transfiguration class with Gryffindor, right? Professor McGonagall, head of Gryffindor, is the professor of transfiguration, and Professor Flitwick of Ravenclaw is the professor of charms. Professor Sprout from Hufflepuff is the professor of herbology, and Professor Snape from Slytherin is the professor of potions. Among them, the ones he looked forward to the most were the charms class and the transfiguration class. The former could learn magic spells, while the latter could learn a lot about the use of transfiguration spells. He has not forgotten that he has a high-grade talent for transformation. It would be a pity not to make good use of it. Pansy swallowed the food in her mouth and replied, it's transfiguration class. If I remember correctly, this should be Gryffindor's second transfiguration class. I thought this transfiguration class would be with Ravenclaw, but I didn't expect it would be with Gryffindor. Gryffindor and Slytherin have always been opposed to each other, and they look down upon each other. The little lions think that the little snakes are not good wizards, they are all old silver coins who will do anything to achieve their goals. The little snakes think that the bravery of the little lions is stupid, and think that they are all a group of foolish and foolhardy lions. So Riels can also guess why these two branches are arranged to take classes together. Only disputes can make them think about comparing themselves with each other and make them scramble to learn. Riels couldn't help but click his tongue, this is really a vicious conspiracy, but I like it. Among the four major houses, only the little lions of Gryffindor and the little snakes of Slytherin have the best emotional value. The former has a straightforward personality and is prone to mood swings, while the latter has a deep resentment towards him and his emotional value is very considerable. In a daze, he seemed to hear, a lot of emotional values are coming, please pay attention to receive them. I'm just telling you, whose child cries every day? Listening to Riel's incomprehensible words, the two little Lolita tacitly agreed not to answer, as if they didn't hear them. After spending the past two days together, they have become accustomed to Riel's making these inexplicable remarks from time to time. At first they would be curious and ask questions, but every time they asked, he would take the opportunity to tease him, making them feel embarrassed and angry. After many times, they stopped asking and just pretended not to hear. As for whether they are curious or not, in Riel's words, as long as they don't say they are curious, others will not know they are curious. Pansy is curious plus nine, Cassandra is doubtful plus one oh. Listening to the system prompts and looking at the two little girls who were eating calmly, Riel's became unusually silent. Did these two little Lolita adapt too quickly? Can they resist asking? Riel shook his head and continued to show off the chicken legs. The world is huge and eating is the biggest. Pansy and Cassandra glanced at him secretly, and then looked at each other a few more times, and both showed their apathy. Sure enough, as long as you don't respond to Riel's, you won't be teased by him. The two little Lolita enjoyed the food happily, feeling that today's bread was particularly sweet. The meal was spent with the two women enjoying themselves and Riel's concentrating on cooking. After the meal, the three of them went to the transfiguration classroom together as usual. As soon as she sat in the seat specially reserved by Hermione, Professor McGonagall, a young cat girl, followed her into the classroom. Hermione spread her hands. Professor McGonagall has always been like this, just get used to it. Not every professor is like Snape who enters the classroom with a click and leaves the classroom with a bell. Riel's nodded very clearly, yes, this is very much like the style of an older cat lady. Walking back Professor Snape, do you have anything to say about this? As soon as Professor McGonagall entered the door, he saw four small conspicuous bags, so he walked up to the four of them on a catwalk. Riel's, Hermione, Miss Parkinson, Miss Worley, it seems you have a good relationship. Professor McGonagall, the four conspicuous bags quickly stood up and greeted politely. Riel's has a very good impression of Professor McGonagall, an older cat lady with a kind heart and a kind heart. Most of her emotions are sympathy or pity, which are emotions from her heart. He had been in the orphanage for so long, and he had never met anyone as pure and kind as Professor McGonagall. Professor McGonagall responded with a smile, I guess I'm not that scary, right? Why did you all stand up when I came over, Ada? Riel's, remember what I said. You will make many friends here. This is your world. She didn't notice Riel sitting with three little Lolita. Even if Hermione and the three of them were not in the same college, she didn't think it was a big deal. 
She knew what happened to Riel's in the past and felt very happy that he could become friends with the three little Lolita. Professor McGonagall is happy plus 13, gratified plus 11, Hermione is happy plus 10, Pansy is happy plus 9, Cassandra is happy plus 9, Curious plus 7. Well, Cassandra is indeed Cassandra, she is always, so unexpected. Before, I only thought she was a good eater, but now it seems that she is still a curious baby. As for what he is curious about, you can guess it without even thinking. He must be curious about his previous experiences. Riels touched his nose and said sincerely, Professor McGonagall, you were right, it is indeed much better here than in the orphanage. I can't say it's much better, I should say it's, a huge difference. He worked hard in the orphanage for two and a half years and barely gained more than 2,000 emotional points. But he had only been at Hogwarts for a few days, and the emotional points and rewards he had received were two or three times the previous total. If he continues at this rate, it won't be long before he can really hold Voldemort with one hand, no, rub Voldemort with one foot. Voldemort, my lawyer, send him to Azkaban for rehabilitation and medical treatment. Professor McGonagall suddenly frowned and said, Hermione told me that you and Mr. Malfoy are going to duel. Riels, I think you shouldn't be so impulsive. You should tell Professor Snape, or other professors, including me. She didn't know about Riels's great achievements in Slytherin, she just thought he was an ordinary little wizard of muggle origin. Malfoy's parents are both very powerful wizards. Under their guidance, Malfoy can learn many spells in advance. Riels was only born as a muggle, and the only spells he had access to were those elementary spells in the spell book. The gap could only be described as a huge gap. Although I don't want to say it, being a pure blood mixed blood person is indeed not on the same starting line as a muggle born wizard. Of course, this is just a different starting line. The track is still the same. Whether you can overtake or not depends entirely on your own ability. Professor McGonagall is worried plus one two, Hermione is worried plus one one, Pansy is funny plus nine, Cassandra is amused plus nine. Very good. It's back to the familiar taste again, this is very hot. Riels glanced at Cassandra, who looked calm, and then turned to look at Hermione, who looked worried. Just as he was about to say something, Pansy on the side spoke before him. Professor McGonagall, Hermione, I don't think you need to worry, Riels is now the hidden prefect of the first year of Slytherin. He defeated all the first year snakes, including Malfoy. Hermione and Professor McGonagall both looked at him in surprise when they heard this. Although Hermione didn't know what a hidden prefect was, she could tell that Riels became a hidden prefect after defeating many people, and one of them must be Malfoy. Professor McGonagall knew the Slytherin system very well, so she was not only surprised, but also became very curious. Does Riels know any special spells? How else could he defeat a group of pure blood and half blood hidden prefects? Riels touched his nose and smiled incredulously. Everyone has seen it, this is not what he was pretending to do. But there are some cases where you have to pretend even if you don't, like this one now. Professor McGonagall was surprised and revealed the reward, transformation spell. Hermione is surprised plus 13, Pansy is happy plus 11, Cassandra is happy plus 11. Pleasure is good, surprise is good, happiness is good, and surprise is even better. Riel smiled as he accepted the information about the transformation spell in his mind, and his smile became even bigger after receiving it. Very good, I have obtained another very practical magic spell. The most important thing is that this magic spell is for free. Riel's was in a happy mood, with an unmistakable smile on his face. Now he just wants to shout something and pretend to be innocent. No, this is not called showing off, this is called showing off to others. Professor McGonagall looked surprised, you. Just when she wanted to ask, the bell for class happened to ring, and a group of little wizards rushed outside the classroom. Most were Gryffindor lion cubs, with the occasional Slytherin cub, including the Malfoy trio. Malfoy had a long lost smile on his face. When he walked in and saw Riel's, his smile froze and then grew bigger. He subconsciously wanted to go up and say something. As a result, before he even took a step forward, he saw Professor McGonagall. In an instant, he changed from a high-spirited little rooster to a discouraged little quail. He didn't say anything he wanted to say, 
he didn't even dare to look at Riel's, he just looked for a place to sit down. He didn't want to be targeted by Professor McGonagall again. Last time, he was severely reprimanded. They even deducted a month's pocket money from him, so that when he asked that person to help teach Riel's a lesson, he could only use his own small coffers. When he thought of the strong foreign aid he had hired, Malfoy suddenly beamed, his eyes filled with anticipation. Well, I look forward to it coming soon so that Riel's can know what will happen if he offends the noble Malfoy. Malfoy's resentment plus one two, expectation plus one four, excitement plus one one, Professor McGonagall's regret plus one two, Hermione's regret plus one one. It's so hot. The white-haired young master Malfoy is so hot. Riel's, who was already in a good mood, was even more happy at this moment. As for why Malfoy exploded, he knew it without guessing. It's just that Malfoy thought of a way to prepare to carry out cruel revenge on him. It is very likely that he found a little wizard from a senior year. It was a very normal school bullying sequence. He couldn't beat it and found someone to avenge him. But he didn't panic at all, and even wanted to laugh a little. As soon as he got a new spell, a sandbag came to his door. Who is happy if he is not happy? The white-haired young master Malfoy. Well, the white-haired young master is indeed very happy. So this is, a win-win. Riel smiled and shook his head, no longer thinking too much and started to concentrate on the lecture. Although he possesses the talent of high-grade transfiguration and also possesses the transfiguration spell, he still benefited a lot from what Professor McGonagall taught. Although he is a little arrogant, he is not mindlessly arrogant. That kind of pride is not pride, it is a pure fool. The transformation spell can not only be used in daily life, but can also be used in duels. Now I will teach you. The level of the transformation spell is not high, but its functions are very complex and wide-ranging. The fact that it can be taught in a separate class at Hogwarts shows that it is special. The transformation spell can transform objects into daily necessities such as water cups and silver needles, which can be used in daily life. You can also change any object into a creature and use it in battle. Although they are still not alive, they will have the characteristics of those creatures. For example, if the silver needle is turned into a cheetah, it will have the explosive power of a cheetah, and if it is turned into a crocodile, it will have the bite force of a crocodile. Moreover, the transformation spell also has a higher level curse, the animagus, which allows the caster to obtain an animal form. The scariest thing about Animagus is that after transforming, you can actually obtain the abilities and characteristics of the transformed animal. If you become a cat, you can gain the flexibility of a cat, if you become a dog, you can gain the sense of smell of a dog, if you become a mouse, you can dig holes. Although they are all in the form of ordinary animals rather than magical animals, it is undeniable that Animagus forms are indeed magical and sometimes very useful. But compared to these ordinary animal forms, Riel's is more interested in magical animals. If this spell can be improved and allow people to take the form of magical animals, like a dragon or something, then wouldn't I become a dragon? Think about it, when you are fighting with an enemy, and the opponent uses Expelliarmus to surrender your wand, what will you do? Casting spells without a wand. No, 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 that thing is awesome, but it's not tall enough or awesome enough. If your opponent means that he is sure of victory and taunts you with cruel words, you can turn into a giant dragon directly in front of him. Then, under his stunned gaze, he pinched him up like a little kunzi, leaving his exposed little coon to kick around but unable to do anything. I could only be pinched to death by you in an understatement. Didn't that force rise immediately? Even if you are very strong, I may not be your opponent, but if I transform into a dragon, how should you respond? An adult giant dragon requires the cooperation of several elite wizards, 330, to deal with it. Fighting alone is absolutely invincible. Of course, the premise is that you don't encounter a wizard like Old B who is as powerful as the sky. Riel's rubbed his chin and looked thoughtful. It's true that I can do it, but I don't know if there is anything in the system mall that can help me. As long as Animagus can really advance as he wants, his strength will definitely become geometrically stronger in a short period of time. Riel shook his head and stopped thinking about it. It was too early to think about it now. He didn't even learn the Animagus, didn't even know its principles and spells, let alone advanced it. But once he said it, 
he felt that his idea was absolutely feasible and he could try it out in the future. Why is Mr. Thomas shaking his head? Is there something wrong? Or is there something wrong with what I said? Professor McGonagall's words made the little lions and snakes in the classroom look askance. In these looks, there is doubt, displeasure, ridicule and disgust, as well as schadenfreude. Well, without even thinking about it, I knew it was you two, Malfoy and Ronald. Professor McGonagall is displeased plus one one, Hermione is puzzled plus one oh, Pansy is confused plus nine, Cassandra is curious plus nine, others are displeased plus sixty four, disgusted plus three one, gloating plus two two. Very good, he just said that the little lion and the little snake are in the same classroom, so this classroom is a paradise for improving the emotional value, right? After gaining another 200 mood points, Riel said cheerfully, I'm sorry, Professor McGonagall, I was a little distracted just now. I was wondering when I would learn the animagus, you know, that's a great and fun charm. He didn't mean to avoid it, or he said it on purpose. If there is a place at Hogwarts where you have the opportunity to learn about the animagus, it's definitely Professor McGonagall. Learning animagus involves certain risks. It is very likely that after learning it, you will not be able to change back to human form, and you will only be able to maintain animal form for your whole life. Therefore, there are very few wizards who know this magic spell, and few wizards are willing to learn it. There are currently only seven legal animagus recorded in the wizarding world, and one of them is the elderly cat lady Professor McGonagall. Of course, there must be unregistered animagus, but the number will not be very large, and it will not exceed the number of dry fingers. As soon as Riel's words came out, there was a moment of silence in the classroom. Everyone looked at him with strange eyes, especially the little snakes, who all had weird smiles on their faces. The animagus is indeed magical, but the risk of learning it is too great. I didn't expect Riel's to actually want to learn it. Isn't this a proper attempt to commit suicide? The little lion didn't realize that the little snakes were born pure blood and knew a lot of things, but most of them were mixed blood and had heard of animagus. There were only a few young wizards of muggle origin, and they didn't know what an animagus was. After listening to the introduction next to them, the eyes they looked at Riel's also changed. This Slytherin is so cruel, I want to learn this kind of spell. Professor McGonagall is surprised plus one nine, happy plus one two, others are worried plus three four, shocked plus seven eight, sarcastic plus four one. He didn't need to think too much if he was worried, it must be the three little Lolita, and he didn't need to think too much if he was sarcastic, it must be Malfoy and the others, this was all within his expectation. The only thing that he didn't expect was Professor McGonagall's reaction, which unexpectedly showed an emotion score of 19 points. According to his speculation, if a single emotion value exceeds 20, a reward will be released, which means that what he just said almost made the older cat girl receive a reward. Riel's then thought about it and understood why she was so excited. The reason was that it was so rare for people who wanted to learn animagus. After all, there are not many people who would not be able to think of becoming an animal instead of being a good wizard, even though they can obtain the animagus form after success. But the risk is too great. Rather than betting on the probability of animagus's success, it would be better to learn other spells. That would be a better choice, wouldn't it? Animagus, do you want to learn from the animagus? After asking, Professor McGonagall realized that this was the Transfiguration classroom, and there were a group of students waiting for her to start class. Helplessly, she could only endure the excitement in her heart, first casting apologetic looks at the little wizards and then looking at Riel's. Riel's, if you have time, you can go to the Gryffindor headmaster's office to find me. I will be happy to tell you about the Animagus. Of course, it's up to you to decide whether you want to learn Animagus or not. After Professor McGonagall finished speaking, he turned back to the podium and continued to explain the transformation spell. When the little lions and little snakes saw this, they stopped paying attention to Riel's and began to listen carefully. The transfiguration textbook is very interesting, and Professor McGonagall's teaching style is also very lively, so it is very popular among young wizards. Professor McGonagall's surprise period Hermione is worried plus one four, Pansy is worried plus thirteen, Della is interesting plus one one, others are looking forward to plus two four. Riel's frowned, and then he realized who it was that everyone else was looking forward to. Malfoy and Ronald, 
could you please tell me what you are expecting? And Cassandra. Dot why does she act in a unique way every time? Is Cassandra's brain circuit really different from that of ordinary people? The corners of Riel's lips twitched slightly, and after glancing sideways at the expressionless Cassandra, he shook his head and began to listen carefully. Sister Ka's acting skills are really natural. If there were no system prompts, he would have been deceived. True Cassandra Queen of Movies Melon Eating People Curious Baby Worry A class on transfiguration ended in a hurry, and when the bell rang, the little lions and little snakes were still a little unfinished. Not only because the transfiguration spell is interesting, but also because Professor McGonagall's lectures are lively enough. But it is a pity that Hogwarts does not have the traditional virtue of dragging the hall. No matter how much they wanted to do, they had no choice but to get up and walk out of the classroom. Riels, you can learn more about the Animagus. Although this spell is interesting, the risk is too high. Even I can't guarantee that you will be able to succeed in cultivation. Although I don't want to say this, I think you should think about it carefully. Professor McGonagall held the textbook and said regretfully, If you have thought clearly, you can go to the Gryffindor Dean's office to find me. It's rare for a little wizard to be interested in Animagus, and she really doesn't want to give up. But as a professor at Hogwarts, she knew that she couldn't be so selfish and should be responsible for the little wizards. Although Animagus is good, the risk is too great. No matter from which point of view, not learning this spell is the right choice. However, if Riels really wants to learn, she will guide him to learn, from the basic transformation spell to the later Animagus. Try your best to ensure that he can learn it successfully and there will be no accidents. Riel said very firmly, I think I will go to Professor McGonagall. If I have time, I will definitely go there. He must learn the Animagus, but he is not ready to learn it yet. What he wants to learn is to be able to transform into the magical animal Animagus, instead of the current Animagus which is extremely risky and can only transform into ordinary animals. So he won't learn it now, of course, it is necessary to obtain the spell. After all, if you want to improve the Animagus later, you also need to know its spells and magic paths and principles. He has no ability to improve or create magic spells out of thin air, especially when he only knows the name of the spell and doesn't even know the principle of the spell. Everything requires accumulation, especially improving or creating magic spells. It is absolutely impossible without a little bit of background. If someone really did it without any knowledge, why would he be considered a wizard? Just go to Hemerlin and learn how to do it. He didn't have the ability to fight with Merlin. All he could do was study this curse and then think of ways to improve it. Then I will wait for your arrival. Professor McGonagall finished speaking with a smile, nodded politely to Hermione and the others, turned around and walked out of the Transfiguration classroom. Rielsa's answer made her very satisfied, and she became more determined. As long as he wanted to learn, she would do her best to guide him in the correct cultivation of Animagus. Although she can't guarantee success, as someone who has been through it, she still has a lot of experience, not to mention that Dumbledore is here. Professor McGonagall thought of this, suddenly stopped, turned around and walked in the opposite direction to Headmaster Gryffindor's office, which was the Headmaster's office where Dumbledore was staying. Professor McGonagall was extremely happy and revealed the reward, Top Grade Transfiguration Talent. Hermione worries plus 1-2, Pansy worries plus 1-1, one one, Cassandra hesitates plus 9. Ha, huh, listening to the system prompts, Riel's was a little stunned. If he remembers correctly, he should already have a talent for high-grade transformation, right? What does it mean to reveal another one? Riel's face darkened, and he was just about to question the system in his mind whether it had swallowed his reward, when he heard the mechanical sound of the system again. It is detected that the host already possesses the high-grade transformation talent, which meets the talent upgrade conditions. The top-grade transformation talent has been integrated and upgraded to the top-grade transformation talent. Hiss, you've unlocked new postures, family. This thing can actually be upgraded. Riel suddenly felt a bit of toothache, this system is very good, very. Deserve a beating. If there are any functions that the host needs to unlock by itself, it's a bad review. It must be a bad review. Riel silently wrote down another note for the system in his little notebook. He must retaliate against it severely in the future, no, several times. Banquet Hall. 
Riel's absentmindedly gnawed on the chicken legs and drank the semi-sweet pumpkin juice, focusing all his attention on the light curtain that only he could see. He was checking the system mall to see if there were any methods or props to improve Animagus. It is very difficult to improve high-level magic spells like Animagus, and the hope is even slim. Even if you master this magic spell, there is still little hope. But unfortunately, he was cheating. Sir, times have changed. Do you really want to learn Animagus? The benefits of that spell are out of proportion to the risks. There are many magic spells. You don't need to take the risk to learn Animagus. Once you fail, you will never change again. Pansy was silent for a long time. Seeing that Riel's had been in a daze without saying a word, Pansy finally couldn't help but speak. Upon hearing this, Cassandra also turned her head to look at Riel's, her red lips slightly opened and she wanted to say something but didn't. Although she doesn't think Riel's is a person who takes risks, but what if? What if he becomes impulsive when his head gets hot? Pansy is worried plus 13, angry plus 9, Cassandra is hesitant plus 1 1, worried plus 1 0. Oh. Hearing the system's beep and Pansy's words, Riel's closed the system mall and came back to his senses to look at the two little Lolita. Seeing the deep worry in their eyes, Riel's was both touched and amused for a moment. I just said that I wanted to learn the Animagus, but I didn't mean to learn it right away. Even if I wanted to learn it right away, Professor McGonagall wouldn't agree, right? Don't worry, I won't do anything risky until I'm absolutely sure. Well, except for provoking Voldemort and Quirrell, this is Hogwarts, and as long as they don't make them anxious, they won't dare to fight to the death. But it's a pity that Quirrell hasn't been seen since he entered Hogwarts, otherwise he would definitely have gotten a lot of good stuff. When Pansy and Cassandra heard this, their tense nerves relaxed. They didn't think Riel's was lying, and there was no need for him to lie, right? They understand that Riel's will only do things he is sure of. This can be seen from the fact that he is still alive and well despite his crazy attempts to die. Pansy is happy plus one one, relaxed plus nine, Cassandra is relaxed plus one two, happy plus nine, Malfoy is disdainful plus thirteen, others are ridiculing plus two two. Riel's paused while chewing on the chicken leg, then turned around to see the Malfoy trio standing not far away, with their arms folded and mocking expressions on their faces. Pansy and Cassandra saw this, turned around and saw the trio, and subconsciously moved closer to Riel's. They are not afraid, they just want to give Riel's more confidence, which is a subconscious behavior. Boyle, Crab, did you just hear that? It's not dark yet, and our hidden prefect is dreaming. For how many years, no one in the wizarding world dares to say that they can learn the Animagus with absolute certainty, not even Professor Dumbledore can guarantee it. Malfoy deliberately raised his voice. Do you think you are stronger than Professor Dumbledore? Albus Dumbledore, currently recognized as the strongest wizard in the wizarding world, bar none. Moreover, Dumbledore is also the principal of Hogwarts and is the idol of all young wizards. So as soon as Malfoy said these words, the banquet hall fell into silence. The little wizards from the four major branches all turned their heads to look at Riel's, with a little evil in their eyes. Harry, do you know the biggest joke I've ever heard? A first-year Slytherin actually competed with Professor Dumbledore. There's nothing funnier than that. You know, Professor Dumbledore is the greatest white wizard. No one can compare with him, no one. Dumbledore is a Gryffindor, which has always been something Ronald is proud of. Dumbledore was born in Gryffindor, and he is also in Gryffindor, which means that he will definitely become as great a wizard as Dumbledore in the future. Ronald, Riel's is not that kind of person, he will not say such things. After Harry Potter said this, he didn't speak again, but looked at the white-haired young master not far away with complicated eyes. He was debating whether to go up and ask Malfoy. After all, the characteristics described in that book matched those of Malfoy. That means, Malfoy must be related to his fiance. Hey, what is that Slytherin talking about? Did I hear you right? He said he was stronger than Professor Dumbledore. Man, I think you heard it right, I heard that sentence too. That's the young master of the Malfoy family. Who is that next to him? How dare you say such a thing? This is really unpleasant. Can't you see? It's obvious that the little wizard offended Malfoy, and Malfoy said this out of deliberate revenge. I say so. No one should be stupid enough to say such a thing. This is not an interesting thing. 
The little wizards were talking a lot, and many of them had already guessed that Malfoy had said this deliberately, for the purpose of creating a contradiction. But there are still many young wizards who feel very angry. If someone hadn't stopped them, they would have gone up to Riel's for a duel. Most of them are Gryffindor lion cubs. Dumbledore is from Gryffindor. They can't let Dumbledore be humiliated. Malfoy's gloating plus one nine, excitement plus one eight, others anger plus three six one, sympathy plus two six four, worry plus three six. Woohoo! This wave is directly comparable to his harvest in one day, awesome. Riel's narrowed his eyes happily and looked at Malfoy much softer. He was worthy of being his emotional tool. This assist was good. However, although his assists are good, he is very special and can hold grudges. Malfoy provoked him repeatedly. If he didn't teach Malfoy a profound lesson, wouldn't others think he was easy to bully? Again, what should I do if the tool is disobedient? It's okay, just smoke three times a day for seven years and it'll be fine. Just as Riel's was about to speak to let Malfoy feel the dangers of society, Pansy on the side couldn't help but speak. She glared at Malfoy and said in two voices, Malfoy, what are you talking about? When did Riel say this? Malfoy and she had grown up together until now. The Parkinson family was in great decline and could only rely on the Malfoy family. From that time on, she became Malfoy's little follower, helping him bully other people. However, she always felt that Malfoy was measured and his intentions were not bad, even after entering Hogwarts and after they broke up. But now Malfoy actually uses Professor Dumbledore to stir up hatred and let the little wizards target Riel's. Doesn't he know what 03 Professor Dumbledore means to the little wizards? This is no longer targeting Riel's, it is pushing Riel's towards a dead end. If someone really believed Malfoy and could start targeting Riel's, especially the senior wizards, then one can imagine Riel's situation. Moreover, Hogwarts brings together young wizards from the entire British wizarding world, which is equivalent to a small wizarding society. Once the news gets out, Riel's may not be able to gain a foothold in the wizarding world. The news may even spread abroad, and the consequences will be unimaginably bad. You must know that Dumbledore is not only famous in the British wizarding community, but also respected in wizarding communities in other countries. Cassandra also said with a rare cold face, Malfoy, you have indeed gone too far. Everything Pansy can think of, she can definitely think of, plus the Woolly family is already in the wizarding world of the beautiful country. So she knows better than Pansy how bad the consequences will be once this matter gets passed. Pansy worry plus 17, Cassandra worry plus 18, Hermione worry plus 18, Malfoy jealousy plus 19, hatred plus 11, sympathy from others plus 131, guilt plus 166, plus 13. Well, I declare now, Malfoy, you can now kiss your groom, Ronald. You two really have the same chemistry, a match made in heaven. Riel's complained a few words, then took a step forward and blocked the two little Lolita behind him. Although he was very touched, he didn't like to be given free reign, and if Malfoy gave such a big gift, he would definitely have to reciprocate it in person. When Pansy and Cassandra saw this, they tacitly agreed not to speak any more, turned around and retreated to the back, blocking the angry-looking Hermione. Riel's is not someone who suffers losses. This is the conclusion they have drawn from the past few days of getting along. Hermione also understood this, so after a brief hesitation, she still did not step forward. She believed that Riel's could handle this. Friends have to trust each other, right? Hermione is determined plus one two, worried plus one nine, Malfoy angry plus one eight, others worried plus 33, gloating plus 41. Riel's ignored the system prompts, but looked at Malfoy with sharp eyes, scaring him so much that he took several steps back. After all, Riel's had a record of defeating more than a dozen little snakes alone. He didn't think he could beat Riel's. Otherwise, he wouldn't have spent so many gold galleons to find someone who wasn't. Dot. When he thought of that person, Malfoy straightened his back and looked at Riel's with disdain. It seems that you don't just dare to hide behind women and tremble. I came here to tell you that we will have a duel here at noon tomorrow. You don't have to think about telling the professors. I have already told Professor Dumbledore about this, and he only agreed to it. I hope you can come to the appointment by then. Of course, if you are afraid, no one can stop you from begging for mercy. 
After Malfoy sneered, he turned around and brought two little followers with him. After saying the cruel words, he left. Now he felt that he was the most handsome little wizard in the entire banquet hall, no, the most handsome little wizard in Hogwarts. It seemed that all the little wizards were looking at him with admiration and admiration for him. Malfoy straightened his chest again and raised his head again, almost showing his arrogance on his face. Seeing this, Royal and Crab also raised their heads in the same manner. Sure enough, whether they are pure blood, mixed blood, or those little wizards of muggle origin, they will eventually be impressed by Malfoy's nobility. Only people like Riels would think Malfoy was not noble. But soon, Riels will pay the price for his stupid idea and will understand how noble Malfoy is. Malfoy is proud plus one nine, excited plus one nine, Hermione is worried plus one nine, Pansy is worried plus seventeen, Cassandra is confused plus one four, others are sympathetic plus one five five, gloating plus one seven. Is Malfoy extremely happy? This emotion level is almost reaching the limit. Look at the head tilted up, almost stretching out the neck, and the back of the head wanting to be pressed against the back. It's hard to tell that Malfoy has a talent for acrobatics. In the future, he can be allowed to perform juggling as a clown. Young Master Malfoy, who considers himself noble, would be happy to become a clown, right? Seeing that Malfoy and the other two were about to leave, Riels pulled out his wand and spoke with a half-smile. Noble, Master Malfoy, why do we have to wait until tomorrow for our duel? Why not do it now? I don't think Master Malfoy will refuse, right? I know that the honor of the Malfoy family will not allow Master Malfoy to refuse a duel, so I am ready. Riels took out his wand and continued with a smile. Of course, according to the agreement, we can have another match tomorrow. Who will not abide by the agreement? I'm laughing so hard, I want to run away after pretending to compete. How can there be such a beautiful thing? If he can't handle Malfoy, then he should find a place to retire as soon as possible. This wave is called the other's way, and the other's body is repaid. Malfoy used family honor to force Pansy to fight to the death, and now he uses family honor to threaten Malfoy to accept a duel. The former's troubles were easily eliminated by him, but who was going to eliminate the latter's troubles? The so-called, strong foreign aid. What, why don't you wait until the duel tomorrow at noon to teach Malfoy a lesson? First of all, he doesn't like to take revenge overnight. It's best to take revenge on the spot. Secondly, it won't be Malfoy who will duel tomorrow. As for who it is, he doesn't know yet, but it is definitely not Malfoy himself. So now Malfoy is invited to duel because Malfoy himself knows why the flowers are so red. Malfoy was so frightened and furious that he revealed the reward, all petrified. Hermione hesitates plus 17, Pansy is surprised plus 14, Cassandra is amused plus 18, others are interesting plus 144, worried plus 81 disdainful plus 13. Oh ho, the white-haired young master has unleashed a curse again. After receiving all the information about petrification in his mind, Riels raised his eyebrows happily. This was really an unexpected surprise. He thought that Malfoy had no more magic to explode, and only those gold galleons were left, but now it seems that he is superficial. This pure blood is indeed a pure blood. He has so many curses as soon as he enters school. Is this the third or fourth one that has been revealed? Although they are all low-level magic spells and not of much use, prostitution is always delicious, isn't it? Riels was in a good mood, but Malfoy was just the opposite. He was in an indescribably bad mood. Now he finally realized the feeling Pansy had when he was riding a tiger. His current situation cannot be said to be exactly the same as what Pansy encountered back then, it can only be said to be extremely similar. If Riel's duel is not agreed to, the glory of the Malfoy family will be tarnished and even fall apart. But if he agrees to a duel, he will definitely not be Riel's opponent, and he may not even be able to sustain a few spells, and he will be humiliated by then. You must know that it is dinner time, and more than 70% of the little wizards in Hogwarts are gathered in the banquet hall. If he loses to Riel's in front of so many people, then Draco Malfoy will definitely become the laughing stock of the entire Hogwarts. Feeling the eyes of the little wizards in the banquet hall, he seemed to feel a strong sense of ridicule, as if everyone was waiting to see his joke. These gazes made him feel uncomfortable. They were two extremes from the comfortable, admiration, gazes before. 
how much he enjoyed those gazes before, but now they hurt him so much that he wanted to turn around and run away. But now, besides accepting the challenge, does he have any other choice? The glory of the Malfoy family must not be destroyed in his hands. Malfoy clenched his fists, gritted his teeth, turned around and waited for Riel's with a stiff face, and said hoarsely, Okay, I agree to the duel. But I hope our duel can continue tomorrow. I, Draco Malfoy, am not a man of bad faith. All the humiliation Riel's brought him tonight will be repaid a hundred times tomorrow. Although Riel's is strong, that person is stronger and he can definitely let Riel's know the consequences of provoking him. Malfoy's hatred plus one four, expectation plus one nine, other people's amusement plus three one, worry plus two seven, gloating plus one two, spectatorship plus one hundred thirty three. Seeing the surge and emotion balance again, the corners of Riel's lips unconsciously rose. Very good, I also earned a junior ten consecutive draws today. Master Malfoy, who thinks you are noble, are you still in a daze? I haven't finished chewing the chicken legs yet. It's shameful to waste food. Hurry up, I think my chicken drumsticks should still be hot after the duel. You know this thing won't taste good when it's cold. Hot chicken legs and chop Malfoy. It will definitely be recorded in the history of Hogwarts in the future, making Malfoy immortal. As soon as Riel said this, the little wizard screamed in surprise, except for the little snakes who knew his strength. The other young wizards thought he was telling lies. He was the young master of the Malfoy family, one of the 28 pure blood families. It's as if he can defeat Malfoy with just one spell. It's really funny. Ronald crossed his arms and looked at Riel's mockingly. He didn't like Riel's, not just because of that annoying Hermione who always said how nice Riel's was. It was also because Harry Potter trusted Riel's more than his good friend who was in the same dormitory. This made him very jealous, especially when Riel's was a muggle but went to Slytherin. In his opinion, this is self-destruction and a born dark wizard. Ronald, you know Riel's is my friend. I don't want you to say that about him again. He is not that kind of person. Harry Potter finished speaking unhappily, and did not pay attention to Ronald's face as dark as the bottom of a pot. He just stared blankly at Master Bai's conspicuous platinum blonde hair. I don't know what he thought of, but his face suddenly turned red, and his green pupils were full of shyness. He planned to wait until Riel's and Malfoy finished their duel before going up to ask Malfoy about his fiancé. If nothing else happens, he should soon know the whereabouts of his fiancé, and may meet him soon. Harry Potter, who was so lost in his thoughts, didn't even notice Ronald's eyes that were about to burst into flames. Seeing that Harry Potter had been staring in Riel's direction, he was so angry that he was beyond recognition. Harry Potter must have been deceived by that Slytherin dark wizard, that's for sure. As expected, he is a bad breed of Slytherin, always using these despicable methods. Ronald clenched his fists and was determined to save Harry Potter. After all, he and Harry Potter were best friends. He knew that he couldn't save Harry Potter on his own, he needed strong foreign aid, such as, dot his two brothers. Ronald's jealousy plus 17, Malfoy's hatred plus 15, other people's expectations plus 67, sympathy plus 111, worry plus 33, funny plus 42. What a wonderful day. Riel's looked at the livid Malfoy across from him and raised the wand in his hand with a smile. Mr. Malfoy, don't disappoint. Malfoy did not answer, but glared angrily at Riel's, making a mental note for him. Malfoy holds a grudge plus one eight. Riel's smiled a little deeper, and then under the gaze of the young wizards, he and Malfoy bowed to each other, then turned around and distanced themselves. After arriving at a similar position, Riel's just turned around and heard Malfoy's roar. Everything is petrified. Gray-white light struck, and Riel's just wanted to say one thing. He is really as stupid as Malfoy. Control spells have a common problem, that is, the spells are slow and it will be very difficult to hit the enemy. After all, no one will stand there and hit you. When wizards are dueling, even if it is a very low-level spell, the duel may be over if it is hit. Malfoy was obviously so angry that he turned everything to stone with the first spell he cast. Riel's moved to the side and passed by all the petrified objects. The gray light passed over him and fell on the long loaf of bread, petrifying the entire basket of bread. And then, there was no more. Riel's shook his head. 
Mr. Malfoy, I said that wasting food is a shameful thing, why didn't you listen to that? As the hidden prefect of the first year of Slytherin, I am very sad about your behavior. This is really not a fun thing. Before the blue-faced Malfoy could say anything, Riels waved his wand gently, here comes the curse. This unfamiliar name of the spell attracted the little wizards to look at each other, and they saw three baguettes that had turned into stone floating behind Riels. Like a sharp arrow, it is aimed at Malfoy and will be shot at any time. Is this the floating curse? Why haven't I heard of the live floating curse? This name, why is it so foreign? Before the little wizards could think of the answer, they saw the three baguettes shooting out quickly, heading straight towards Malfoy's forehead, almost leaving an afterimage. This scene made Malfoy turn pale with fright, and the little wizards screamed, and the people in the dark drew out their wands and prepared to prevent the tragedy from happening. That's not bread, it's solid stone. If he rushes over at this speed, if he hits, Malfoy will be disabled or even dead. Malfoy was horrified and revealed the reward, 1,000 gold galleons. Hermione worries plus 1,9, Cassandra is solemn plus 17, Pansy worries plus 1,9, Snape panics plus 17, others panic plus 1,3,6, fear plus 1,1,1. Snape, the walking bat. He has been hiding in the shadows to observe Harry Potter. Riels frowned and thought for a moment. If he couldn't find the answer, he simply stopped thinking about it. He then flicked his wand and took the initiative to stop the stone bread that had rushed towards Malfoy before Professor Snape took action. No matter what Snape is here to do, he can't be allowed to interfere, otherwise it will be boring. Snape, who had just taken out his wand from the darkness, frowned and wanted to step forward, but remembered what Dumbledore had said and silently put down his wand. He took back the steps he took and continued to hide in the dark and watch. He should really try to believe Riel's. If he doesn't believe Riel's, how can he guide this child? Riel's is very unique and different from ordinary people in his maturity. He should do things in a measured way. Thinking of this, Snape took back his wand completely, and the coldness on his face hardly disappeared. Snape is firm plus 17, Malfoy is fearful plus 1 8, relaxed plus 1 4, others relaxed plus 2 2 1. Great harvest, super great harvest. Riel's whistled twice happily and if he exploded again, the emotional value of the second basic 10 consecutive draws would be enough. But he is not greedy either. He has to eat his meals one bite at a time, live his life day by day, and just slowly increase his mood points. As long as there are people, he will never be able to finish the mood points. You, Malfoy glared at Riel's and wanted to say something, but the three stone loaves spinning around his head prevented him from saying a word. Riel's obviously did this on purpose, the purpose was to scare him and make him look embarrassed in front of everyone. Oh, I almost forgot, my duel with Mr. Malfoy has not ended yet. In order to respect the honor of the Malfoy family, Mr. Malfoy must stand and lose instead of admitting defeat, right? Mr. Malfoy, take over. Riel's finished speaking with a smile, and under the watchful eyes of the little wizards, he moved his wand a few times at Malfoy, who had a frightened face. The next moment, the three stone loaves that were circling Malfoy's head dispersed, and two of them flew to Malfoy's knees and knocked him hard on the knees. Even if Malfoy wanted to cast a spell to resist, it was too late and he could only kneel down in humiliation. Boom, the sound of his knees colliding with the ground echoed in the banquet hall. At this moment, the entire banquet hall was silent. Everyone was staring at this scene blankly, even Snape in the dark. He was regretting it at the moment. Why didn't he stop it just now? Why did he listen to Dumbledore and agree to this nonsense duel? Things have really gotten into trouble this time, and Lucius and the others will definitely not give up. After all, for a pure blood family, the family's glory is more important than anything else. What Riel's is doing now is no less than stepping on and rubbing the proud glory of the Malfoy family under his feet in public, and even spitting after rubbing it. In this case, it is impossible for the Malfoy family to not react, unless they abandon the glory of pure blood, but is this possible? Snape rubbed his temples with a headache, as if he had already seen the scene of Lucius bringing people to cause trouble. Malfoy was so angry that he revealed the reward, 1,000 gold galleons. Snape was helpless plus 1,8, Hermione was shocked plus 1,2, Pansy was worried plus 17, Cassandra was amused plus 1-5, and the others were shocked plus 2-5-6.
It's still a familiar taste, it's still a familiar person, Miss Ka, the melon eater, is back. Riels turned his head and glanced at Cassandra, who had her arms folded and could not tell whether she was happy or angry. If there was no system, who would have guessed that Cassandra, who seemed emotionless, was actually a melon-eating girl worthy of the name? Riel's, Malfoy's somewhat broken roar broke the silence of the banquet hall. When the young wizards saw this, they all frowned and took a few steps back. Now even the young wizards who were born as muggles knew that this matter was serious. Malfoy was so humiliated in public, and Riel's mentioned the glory of the Malfoy family three or four times. Isn't this murderous? In this regard, Riel's just wanted to say, well, it was a showdown, he did it on purpose, and the purpose was to eat shrimp and pig heart. To deal with Malfoy, whether you give him a good beating or just twist his head off and use it as a ball to kick, it is far less practical than trampling on the honor of the Malfoy family. What's more, even though a beating would relieve his anger, it would only hurt Malfoy's body and would not affect his mind. It was even more impossible to twist his head off and use it as a ball. At least this was Hogwarts, not Nocturne Alley. Just when the little wizards were discussing and hesitating whether to go to the professor, Riel's moved again. Under the watchful eyes of the little wizards, Riel's raised his wand again with a harmless smile on his face, the duel is about to end. I still have half a chicken leg left to chew. You know, Pansy brought those chicken legs to me. It's her wish, I can't live up to it. Besides, it won't taste good when it's cold. Mr. Malfoy, take a good rest and don't affect tomorrow's duel. Hearing what he said, no matter it was Malfoy who knelt on the ground, the young wizards who were watching, or even Snape who was hiding in the dark. Without exception, they all felt that Riel's was no longer prepared to take action and the duel was almost over. In the entire banquet hall, only the three women who were friends with Riel's and knew him to a certain extent felt that something was wrong. Riel's is not someone who gives up so easily. As they expected, Riel's waved the wand again under the watchful eyes of everyone. At the same time, he smiled brightly at Malfoy, it's good to be young, just fall asleep. Before anyone could understand the meaning of these words, a piece of stone bread fell directly on Malfoy's head. Bang! After a slight collision, Malfoy rolled his eyes and fainted directly to the ground. It wasn't over yet, whether it was intentional or accidental. When the stone bread fell from the sky, it happened to hit Malfoy on the back of the head. This time, Malfoy, who had been able to twitch a few times just now, was completely motionless, as if he had lost his life. Everyone in the banquet hall stared at this scene dumbfounded, and for a moment they didn't know how to react. Riel's put away his wand and said with a smile, The strength is just right, it makes me confused and doesn't hurt my brain. Don't call Malfoy a fool. He is the tool man with the best performance today. He also hoped that this would ferment today's events, and then Malfoy would be ridiculed by everyone, and his proud pride would be trampled to the ground. If the emotional value is squeezed bit by bit for a long time, it will definitely be squeezed more and more. At that time, as long as he is a little bit, the squeezed emotional value will explode. At this moment, Riel seemed to see a large wave of gold galleons mixed with emotional values, as well as several magic spells attacking him. For this, he just wanted to open his arms and shout to the sky, come on, let the storm come more violently. Snape's anger plus 19, others worry plus 54, fear plus 138, curiosity plus 94, jealousy plus 15. Without Malfoy, Ronald's jealousy would be less than 20 years old. A negative review must be given. Riel's nod on the still warm chicken legs, not caring about the looks of the little wizards on him. Laughing to death, what can he gain by caring about these people's eyes? With this in mind, it would be better to eat two more chicken drumsticks or tease three little Lolita. The former can make him feel happy, and the latter can not only make him feel happy, but also gain a lot of emotional value. Let Malfoy lie here like this. Why don't we send him back to his dormitory first? I also think this is not good. It won't be easy to explain when the professor comes later. Pansy and Hermione looked at Malfoy who was lying on the ground, and then at Goyle and Crab who wanted to take Malfoy away but didn't dare. Pansy's expression was a little complicated, except for a little bit of unbearability. After all, they grew up together, and although Malfoy did too much, they could still be considered friends after all. 
and just letting Malfoy lie here without letting anyone carry him away is likely to cause dissatisfaction among the professors. There was no need to cause such a big trouble just because of a moment of fun, at least that was what she felt as a Slytherin. Hermione didn't think much about it, she just couldn't bear it, but there was still a little pleasure in her eyes. Although she is not as vindictive as Riel's, she is very dissatisfied with Malfoy because of the trouble he caused Riel's over and over again. But it wasn't any deep grudge, and she didn't want Riel's to get into trouble, so she seconded the proposal. After all, fighting Malfoy was a serious duel, as everyone here can prove. But now the duel is over, Riel's has won, and Malfoy has lost miserably. At this time, if you stop anyone from taking the unconscious Malfoy down for treatment, it will inevitably lead to gossip and dissatisfaction from everyone. Hermione is worried plus one four, Pansy is worried plus one two, Cassandra is interesting plus nine, Snape is dissatisfied plus one five, others are dissatisfied plus seven eight. Listening to the system beep, Riel's closed the system mall in confusion and looked down at the chicken drumstick in his hand, his eyes full of confusion. He can gnaw on a chicken leg and feel dissatisfied. Did these people discover his identity as Xiao Haizi? His chicken feet were exposed. No way. Cough. Riel's coughed twice and stopped thinking about it. He put down the chicken leg that he had finished eating, wiped the oil stains from the corners of his mouth, and turned around to see Malfoy still lying there. Wow, why is Mr. Malfoy still lying here? Has no one taken him back to his dormitory or to find Madame Pomfrey? Riel spread his hands and said innocently, look what I did. I haven't finished dinner yet. You should understand this feeling, right? For Merlin's sake, please send someone back to Mr. Malfoy, okay? At this moment, no matter it was the little wizards watching, the three little Lolita, or even Snape in the dark. The corners of their mouths all twitched in unison, and they couldn't stop it, they couldn't stop it at all. Snape looked deeply at Riel's, turned around and left without stopping. He was going to talk to Dumbledore now. Okay, chat, chat. How many red wine flavored beans did Dumbledore have to eat before he agreed to Malfoy's ridiculous request to duel Riel's in the banquet hall? It was also called to let him take this opportunity to get to know Riel's well and see if Riel's needs the right guidance. He really believed Dumbledore's lies. Snape is displeased plus 17, others are speechless plus 124, shocked plus 48. What's so shocking? What he said was obviously the truth, right? He has never heard of anyone asking the winner to carry the loser back to the dormitory after a duel. Is this a trophy? No need to be. Riel secretly complained, turned around and saw Goyle and Crab carrying the unconscious Malfoy, turning back and walking out of the banquet hall. Already nervous, Goyle and Crab, who were tense, froze in fear when they saw Riel's noticing their actions, and they all smiled uglier than crying. Riel's was completely unaware of this and just smiled approvingly at the two of them. Take a look, there is true love in the world. If others don't look up to them, how can Malfoy, the two little followers, not look up to them? Just when Riel's wanted to praise the two of them as a hidden prefect, the two people's faces changed wildly, and they threw the unconscious Malfoy to the ground with a tacit understanding. Then they gave him a flattering smile and took a few steps back to show that they were not familiar with Malfoy. Goyle fear plus 1 1, Crab fear plus 13, others fear plus 51, Funny plus 4 2, Despise plus 1 4. Riel's was silent for a rare moment. He was so emotional that he was not happy at all. He is not a scourge, so why are all of them so scared? This is a suffocating place, so don't wait. A bunch of guys with flawed aesthetics. Backquote I have something else to do, so I'm going back to the dormitory first. You guys can eat and drink well. You don't have to be polite to me. You're welcome. Riel's waved his hands to the confused little wizards, nodded to the three little Lolita, and then left the banquet hall under the watchful eyes of everyone. This, the little wizards in the banquet hall looked at each other, and for a moment no one knew what to say. This Riel's is really unexpected, unique. You'd better take him to Madame Pomfrey's to have a look. Riel's is very measured, but what you did just now, tisk tisk. Without waiting for Goyle and Crab to answer, Cassandra turned and walked towards the banquet hall. When the little wizards heard this, they all looked sympathetically at Malfoy, who had just used his face as a buffer. With these two lackeys on the stall, really, they didn't even dare to think how, 
lucky, Malfoy was. Goyle and Crab awkwardly picked up Malfoy and ran out of the banquet hall without looking back. Seeing this, the others returned to their seats and discussed what had just happened. Only Hermione and Pansy were left, the two little Lolita looked at each other, their eyes were half happy and half worried at the same time. Fortunately, Riel's is very powerful. It won't take long for this matter to spread throughout Hogwarts, and he will be a celebrity by then. What worries me is what happened just now. If the professors find out about it, they might have a bad impression of Riel's. Hermione is worried Nanos plus 17, Pansy is worried plus 15, others are shocked plus 52, curious plus 81. Just after returning to the dormitory and checking on Garfield who was evolving towards Garfield, Riel's heard a prompt from the system before he sat down. I also said that it was only close to 2000. I can only draw 10 consecutive draws tonight. Now it's better. The mood value has been sent by myself. It seems that these 10 consecutive draws will become 20 consecutive draws. Looking at his emotional balance of 2038, Riel's shook his head with emotion. Once upon a time, he was still thinking up pranks in his head just for those 10 or 20 emotional points. But now, the emotional value he earns in one day is more than what he earned in two years. There is really no comparison, there is no gap. Orphanage, are you talking about me or the group of orphans with crazy hobbies? The latter, it must be the latter, right? Well, it's indeed the latter. Hogwarts headmaster's office. Dumbledore continued to sell strange flavored beans to Professor McGonagall, but when he was rejected again, he just shook his head regretfully. He murmured, superficial, too superficial. Is this candy he is eating? What he is eating is obviously life. Professor McGonagall rolled his eyes and went straight to the point. Professor Dumbledore, Riels wants to learn Animagus transformation. You know how risky that curse is. I'm not completely sure that he can learn it. Have you ever? The reason why she wanted to teach Riels the Animagus was not only because she couldn't think of it, there were too few wizards who wanted to learn it. It was also because she could feel Riel's desire for Animagus, and she didn't want to disappoint Riel's. The child's past experience was enough to make people pity. Riel's, if my desire for a modified version of the Animagus is considered a desire, then it is. After listening to Professor McGonagall's story, Dumbledore was silent for a moment, and even stopped chewing the strange flavored beans. Professor McGonagall did not interrupt, but silently took out his wand with a kind smile on his face. She could guarantee that if Dumbledore said that he was like this because he ate some weird-tasting beans, she would really take action, really. Dumbledore couldn't help but shudder when he saw Professor McGonagall's kind smile. The words I just wanted to say were swallowed back into my stomach, along with the strange-smelling beans that had a bitter taste. The unknown bitter taste spread all the way, directly putting a mask of pain on Dumbledore. He already regrets it now. Every time he eats strange-flavored beans, he wants the freshest ones. If the strange-flavored beans had been left out for two more days, they wouldn't have become so painful that even he couldn't stand it. Professor McGonagall waited for a while and then asked with a half-smile, What happened when Professor Dumbledore picked you up? Why do you look so ugly? Let this old naughty boy eat strange-flavored beans every time we meet, and even recommend strange-flavored beans to others like crazy. Is he okay now? Let's see if he dares to do this again in the future. In response, Dumbledore answered Professor McGonagall with practical actions. He first waved his hand to indicate that he was fine. Then under Professor McGonagall's gloomy gaze, he grabbed another strange-flavored bean and stuffed it into his mouth. In an instant, Dumbledore's wrinkled face relaxed, and he said with a smile, the fresh grape smell always makes people happy all day long. He was about to take this opportunity to recommend strange-flavored beans to Professor McGonagall, when he saw that her eyes were getting colder and colder, and veins appeared on the hand holding the wand. Dumbledore coughed very well and changed the subject, the Animagus spell is too special. In a sense, it is a curse left over from the ancient wizarding world, or it is a changed ancient curse. Animagus is an ancient curse that has been altered. When Professor McGonagall heard this, his expression became serious, with deep doubts and curiosity in his brows. As a senior Animagus, she thought she knew enough about this curse, but this was the first time she heard it. Not daring to be distracted any longer, Professor McGonagall began to listen to Dumbledore's story with rapt attention. 
I read in an ancient book that Animagus in ancient times could transform into magical creatures. Later, I also studied it and probably knew some things. The reason why current Animagus cannot transform into magical creatures is that there is an essential difference in the operation of wizard magic and magic of magical creatures. I thought about changing this, but I was helpless. The reason why ancient curses are called ancient is because they are too ancient and many things cannot be checked. After Dumbledore finished speaking, there was still a little regret on the old face. If there is something that wizards are most interested in, then spells are definitely number one, especially these powerful and unknown spells. Unfortunately, most of the ancient magic spells have been lost, and the few that have been passed down occasionally have been reduced and part of them has been lost. For example, Animagus lost the most critical part, which directly reduced it to what it is today. You mean to say that Animagus in ancient times could not only transform into magical creatures, but also had no restriction on transforming into only one kind of animal. But this, is incredible. Professor McGonagall was silent for a while and could only say this. Is this more than incredible? If this were true, how terrifying would the Animagus be in ancient times? Powerful magical creatures are like the stars in the sky, too numerous to count. If only someone could transform into them and gain their abilities. How terrifying would that be? According to the records in those ancient books, it is true, but it is a pity. Minerva, there is nothing I can do about the question you just asked me. The reason Animagus has this flaw is because a part is missing. Unless that part is found to complete it, there is no way. In fact, there were still some things that Dumbledore didn't say out loud, otherwise he was afraid of having too much impact on his old friend. Animagus is designed to transform into magical creatures, so it will naturally conflict with ordinary animals. Wizards have magic power, but ordinary animals do not. Those animal forms cannot withstand magic power, and the wizard's magic power cannot be exerted. If it fails, there will be a side effect of never returning to human form. Occasionally, a few lucky people successfully transformed back into human form, and the magic power in their bodies remembered how to operate, and they created the current Animagus. But there are very few lucky ones like this. This is why the wizarding world is so big and there are only 10 registered Animagus. Even if there are unregistered Animagus, there are still very few. Professor McGonagall murmured in a daze, even you can't do anything. Is there still hope to complete the Animagus? Seeing this, Dumbledore was about to say a few words of comfort when he heard the door to the principal's office being slammed open with a bump. The wooden door of the principal's office died heroically at the age of. I don't know how old it is, but it is very old. As for why it is old, the violent sound of the door opening also woke up the absent-minded Professor McGonagall, and both of them turned to look at the person. Severus, it's not good for you to be in a bad mood, but I guess my door didn't make you unhappy, right? If it makes you unhappy, I think you should tell me and let me teach you a lesson. Dumbledore joked a few words, flicked the wand in his hand, and threw out a repair as before. The wooden door that was still lying on the ground returned to the door frame, and everything was as if it had never happened. Well, that's why it's ancient. Professor McGonagall stood up and asked politely, Professor Snape. You guys talk first, I have something to do and I'll go back first. Although she wanted to see what Dumbledore had done to make Snape so angry. But she is so confused now that she has no time to understand this. It's Dumbledore's problem anyway, let him and Snape talk things over slowly. Now it's time for her to think about how to dissuade Riels. Although it was a pity, she must not let her students take risks until there was a complete solution. As soon as Professor McGonagall left, the atmosphere in the principal's office suddenly became depressing. Snape's angry eyes met Dumbledore's guilty eyes. What was Dumbledore guilty of? In fact, he himself wanted to know what he was guilty of, but when he met Snape's gaze, guilt seemed to be his instinctive reaction. Snape said coldly, Professor Dumbledore, let's talk about your promise to Malfoy to let him and Riel's duel in the banquet hall. Dumbledore finally knew what he was feeling guilty about. Well, in a sense, there was nothing wrong with being guilty. The moon was shining in the sky, and the principal was screaming, bah, the principal was trying to trick the dean into believing his explanation. In this regard, Snape's voice, which was colder than the last, showed that he still didn't believe it. For some people, tonight is destined to be a sleepless night. 
Slytherin dormitory. After washing, Riel sat cross-legged on the bed. She subconsciously wanted to press Garfield a few times, but then she remembered that she was evolving into Garfield. Helpless, Riel stood up again and took out two pieces of ultra-soft toilet paper to wipe away the water stains on his hands. After doing this, he sat back on the bed, rubbed his hands and said, System, elementary 10 consecutive strokes. Consumption of 1,000 emotional points, exchange for 10 consecutive elementary draws successfully. Thank you for your patronage times 6. Super soft toilet paper times 2. Magic. Orchids bloom. Guardian bow super cotton soft pack in a box. Good news, Tianlian is pumping out goods. The bad news is that orchids are in full bloom, and as the name suggests, it's the magic spell that makes orchids bloom. But it was the last one that really left Riel speechless. Seeing the extra box on the bed, Riel silently stretched out his foot and kicked it under the bed. There are gains and there are losses, not to mention that it has been shipped, right? And this protective treasure can also be used by Hermione and the others, well, if they can use it. Anyway, I will definitely use it in the future, what a ghost. System, did you make a mistake? Ten draws in a row, please give me six. Thank you for your patronage. I know the primary lottery is rubbish, but you can't do this, right? Don't talk about things from other worlds, I'll be satisfied with a normal spell. Faced with Riel's complaints, the system didn't respond at all, as if it didn't exist. Regarding Go systems pretending to be deaf and dumb, Riel's once again jotted it down in his notebook. At the same time, he also became more determined to retaliate against the system in the future. After venting to calm down, Riel's looked at the lottery page again. But this time, he did not stop at the primary lottery, but looked at the expensive intermediate lottery. You can draw 10 times in the intermediate lottery once for the intermediate lottery. At first glance, it seems that the latter is more cost-effective. In fact, this is not the case. The best rewards for the primary lottery are the flying curse, and this can only be drawn if you are very lucky. If you are not lucky, then the dry draw just now is the best explanation. On the other hand, in the mid-level lottery, there is no thank you for patronage, and the rewards will be better. How good it is, he doesn't know. But it's definitely better than the entry-level ones, otherwise the price wouldn't be so high. As the old saying goes, the disadvantage of expensive things is that they are always expensive. Riels, who had brainwashed himself again, gritted his teeth and said, System, let's do a mid-level lottery. Consume 1,000 emotional points to exchange for an intermediate lottery draw. Congratulations to the host for receiving the reward, Poke Ball. Elf Ball, special edition, can be used to collect magical animals, easy to carry around, does not limit the size and strength of magical animals. Note, when using the Elf Ball, the other party needs to be willing or have lost the ability to resist, otherwise there is a certain chance of failure, and the Elf Ball will be automatically discarded after failure. A Pokeball that can recover magical animals. You want me to be the Pokemon. Master of Fantastic Beasts at Hogwarts. Looking at the red and white ball in his hand, Riels didn't know how to describe his good mood. Do you think this thing is useful? It is. It is very useful. If you can recover a giant dragon, wouldn't it mean carrying a giant dragon with you as a bodyguard and mount? Then the question arises, where can we find giant dragons? Even if we don't want giant dragons, but other powerful magical animals, where can we find them? In the Forbidden Forest. He is living quite comfortably now, and has no thoughts of going to the Forbidden Forest to seek death for the time being, not to mention that there are no powerful magical animals outside the Forbidden Forest. As for entering the inner circle. According to his current strength, it would be a miracle to survive through the outer circle. He still has this self-awareness. It's really tasteless, and it's a pity to throw it away. It's a waste to use it to hold ordinary magical animals. What's more, it's a one-time use. If it fails, it will be scrapped. With the rewards in hand, he was speechless and could do nothing. Riel's frowned and thought about what to do to maximize the effect of the elf ball. There is no doubt that this is to recover powerful magical animals and control them to become one's own fighting power. But the problem is that no magical beast will ever be reclaimed voluntarily. He looks down on those weak magical animals, but his current strength no longer supports him to face those powerful magical animals. This is an endless cycle. No, 
I shouldn't think about this. I should determine the target first and then make a recovery plan, W. If you use this reward well, your strength will definitely increase in a short period of time, and you will be guaranteed to go to some places by then. Riels took a few deep breaths, closed his eyes and thought about the magical animals that met the requirements. First, strong enough, this is the most important point. Second, it can't be far from Hogwarts, otherwise he won't be able to get out. Third, what are the weaknesses, or what can be controlled, so that he can recover? The first thing he thought of was the fire dragon in Gringotts. There is no doubt about the power of the giant dragon, but it is still bound by iron chains. When the time comes, it might be possible to trick him, if he is careful and coaxed. But one thing is fatal. Although Diagon Alley belongs to Hogwarts, it is not within Hogwarts, which means he has to go out. Let's not talk about whether he can go out. Even if he does go out, Gringotts is not that easy to break into, otherwise it will not become the largest bank in the wizarding world. Riels dismissed the goal and continued to brood. Strong, preferably near Hogwarts, and some weaknesses. Riels stood up suddenly, don't tell me, don't tell me, there really are magical animals that meet these three conditions. Slytherin raised basilisk. It's not difficult to raise a basilisk. You just need to place the male egg laid by Sirius when it is in the sky and place it on the head of a toad to hatch it. What will hatch as a basilisk? The basilisk's fangs can destroy horcruxes, and creatures that look into it will turn into stone statues. Only the tears of the phoenix can remove the venom. There is no doubt about its power. The most important point is that the basilisk can be controlled by Parcelmouth, and its weakness is also obvious, it is afraid of the crowing of roosters. Riels got out of bed, pacing and thinking. Logically speaking, as long as I learn Parseltongue, I can try to control the basilisk. Even if it's just for a moment, it's enough for me to throw the elf ball. By then the overall situation has been decided, and it can't resist even if it wants to. And I can also take the rooster with me. If I can't do anything, I can just use the rooster to crow to kill it. Parcel tongue is easy to solve. You can either go to Harry Potter to brush it or go to the system store to buy it. It's easy to talk about a rooster. You can bring a live one with you when the time comes. To be on the safe side, you can also get a recording stone for the rooster's crowing. This is also available in the system mall. The only thing that dissatisfied him were two things. The first was that the basilisk's eyes could petrify creatures, which was not easy to deal with. The second is that the weakness of the basilisk is too obvious. When the rooster crows, it will not die but will be seriously injured. Riels frowned. The first point of attention can be avoided, but the last one is indeed a bit troublesome. At this stage, the most powerful magical animal that he can easily obtain is this basilisk, but the weakness of the basilisk is really. No matter what, there will be a road for the car to reach the mountain, and the boat will naturally sink, straight when it reaches the bridge. Riels lay back on the bed, unable to think of a solution and decided not to think about it. The basilisk hasn't been obtained yet, so it's too early to think that some of these are missing. It's just causing trouble for myself. And he still has the system. When the time comes, he can check the system mall and maybe he can find a solution. It would be best to have some kind of genetic fluid, which might allow the basilisk to evolve. If luck explodes and a dragon's blood or something is drawn, the basilisk transforms directly into a dragon, that would be really interesting. Riels chirped a few times, turned over and fell into a deep sleep. He was sleeping carefree here, but on the other side of the headmaster's office, Dumbledore was still having an intense relationship with Snape. Severus, I think I made the right decision to let Malfoy duel with Riels, otherwise it will be easier for you to observe Riels. You can also use this incident to encourage the little wizards of Slytherin to work hard to make progress and defend their glory. This is a good thing, isn't it? Snape narrowed his eyes. If he hadn't known the situation, he would have believed Dumbledore's words. Observing Riels, what can you observe? He is very popular with women. He likes to eat the chicken drumsticks served by Pansanella and drink the pumpkin juice served by Cassandra. What else is there besides these? As for pushing Slytherin's little wizards to progress and defend their glory, well, let's not mention it. He now has a premonition that a withdrawal application will appear on his desk in the near future. The reason for dropping out will definitely be, the pressure on Slytherin is too great, 
I want to return to the village to raise, well, I want to transfer to another college. Seeing this, Dumbledore could only continue to speak, Severus, you can't do this. However, before he finished speaking, he suddenly stopped, his expression changed a few times, he stood up and walked quickly to the window. Seeing this, Snape also frowned and walked to the window. After seeing the situation outside the window clearly, his face suddenly became cold. The hand holding the wand trembled slightly, not because of fear, but because of anger. What do these centaurs want to do? Do they want to start a war with Hogwarts? Looking out the window at the centaur warriors holding torches in the dark night, Dumbledore was surprisingly calm compared to Snape's anger. Severus, centaurs generally don't have contact with humans. They appear here. I think there must be a reason for them to come here. It's possible that something major happened in the dark forest. Not only are the centaurs proficient in archery, but they also have ancient magic spells passed down from generation to generation, which are unique to the centaurs and cannot be learned by humans. From the fact that the centaurs and horses can thrive outside the dark forest, it can be seen that the magic spell they inherited is definitely not weak. Even if Dumbledore wasn't afraid of them, he didn't dare to look down upon them in the slightest. The dark forest is a forbidden forest. No wizard from Hogwarts will enter there. Even if something happens there, they shouldn't come to us. What's more, if you look at them like this, they clearly want to start a war with us, Professor Dumbledore, you. Before Snape could finish his words, Dumbledore raised his hand to stop him. Facing Snape's questioning look, Dumbledore just shook his head, wait, wait and see. Hagrid has passed, if nothing else happens, the centaurs will retreat soon. You know that Hagrid has always been friends with them. If it is not necessary, he does not want to conflict with the centaurs. It is not that he is afraid, but he does not want to cause casualties. Hogwarts is protected by a barrier, so the centaurs can't get in. Of course, they don't feel the need to start a fight. After all, what Hogwarts lacks most is powerful wizards. The little wizards in 5th and 6th grade are already able to stand alone in the wizarding world, not to mention that the professors in each class are also top wizards. Professor Dumbledore, I hope your kindness can bring about the results we want to see. It was unclear whether Snape's words were sarcastic or sincere, but Dumbledore didn't care. He knew Snape's past experiences and knew that Snape had this character. Dumbledore smiled and said, Severus, you should go back to Slytherin now and wake those children up from their sleep, although this is better. But this is a rare teaching, isn't it? I think Minerva and the others are already doing this. The teaching at Hogwarts has always been unique, and other schools may organize students to avoid it when encountering this situation. But Hogwarts won't do it. Not only will they not let students avoid it, but they will also organize students to go to the front to watch. In Dumbledore's words, it means gaining more knowledge and broadening one's horizons. After all, what you can learn by staying at Hogwarts is limited. Snape didn't refuse, but turned around and left with a cold face. He knew what Dumbledore's motivation was for doing this, not only because the professors in each class were powerful enough to protect the young wizards. What's more, Hogwarts Castle itself is a magical prop, which will shelter all the little wizards of Hogwarts. When new students enter Hogwarts from the Black Lake, it is for them to gain recognition and protection from Hogwarts Castle. Hey, I hope this trouble won't be what I thought it would be, otherwise. After Snape left, Dumbledore showed a little sadness. He looked out the window at the centaur warriors holding torches high. Then he turned to look at the Daily Prophet on his desk. What was reported there was exactly what worried him most. Gringotts in Diagon Alley was stolen. The goblins claimed that nothing was lost, and the stolen vault was removed on the same day. Looking at this report, Dumbledore's face became a little more sad. Is it really what I think? Or is it all a coincidence? After murmuring this sentence, Dumbledore stopped speaking, and just stood in front of the window and stared at the dark forest in the distance. Fox had woken up at some point, flapped his wings and flew onto Dumbledore's shoulder, nuzzling Dumbledore gently and giving him some comfort. Dumbledore smiled and stroked Fox feathers a few times, but didn't say a word. They just stood in front of the window. Slytherin Dormitory. Riels looked at Snape with a strong feeling of getting out of bed. The other little snakes also woke up very angry, but they didn't have the courage to glare at Snape, 
so they could only lower their heads and make circles with their toes to express their dissatisfaction. Little snakes, draw a circle and curse you, you will be woken up when you sleep in the future. Who can be in a good mood if they are sleeping soundly and are suddenly called up to attend class? The centaurs from the dark forest came to Hogwarts for some unknown reason, but I can guarantee that they are not here to drink tea. You know what I mean. Take your wands and gather in the square outside the banquet hall. I don't want to wait for you too long. After Snape finished speaking, he turned around and walked out of the common room. However, what he said made the little snakes boil, and all the grievances and grievances about getting up were forgotten. Did I hear correctly? What Professor Snape means is that the centaurs in the dark forest are coming. Oh, Merlin's beard, I must not be awake yet, otherwise how could such a ridiculous thing happen? Guys, don't waste your time, I don't want to see Professor Snape angry. The last words were spoken by the sixth grade prefect Yin. As soon as these words came out, the little snakes who were still talking about it also reacted. In an instant, all the discussion disappeared, leaving only the footsteps of the little snakes running towards their dormitory. Riel stretched out boredly and walked lazily to the two little Lolita who were frowning and thinking. Why did the centaurs come here? Riel's, did you do something behind our backs? As soon as Pansy said this, Cassandra also looked sideways, with the same suspicion in their eyes. This kind of thing, no matter from which angle you look at it, looks like Riel's handiwork. Although they knew it wasn't Riel's who did it, this didn't stop them from taking the opportunity to cause trouble for Riel's. Pansy is suspicious plus 6, funny plus 1 1, Cassandra is amused plus 9, doubtful plus 4. Listening to the system prompts, Riel's rolled his eyes speechlessly, as the sky falling. You all suspected that I did it first. Who knows why these centaurs are so crazy in the middle of the night? Just attack Hogwarts, can you at least choose a time in the world? Riel's just watched it, and it's just past one in the morning, which is the time of day when people are most sleepy. This made him seriously suspect that the centaurs chose this time just to catch them off guard. A surprise attack is indeed no problem, but this is the wizarding world, not to mention that the surprise attack is Hogwarts. Riel silently wrote this down in a small notebook, preparing to brutally retaliate against the centaur who came up with the surprise attack plan after finding him. First break one of his horse legs, and then kick his other three good legs. The method is so cruel that even a noseless person would be scared to tears. Cruel, too cruel, that depends on your ability. If you are really that capable, then we will definitely be the first to doubt you. Pansy and Cassandra smiled at each other and joked a few words to Riel's. In response, Riel's just rolled his eyes again and continued to think about how to retaliate against the culprit of this incident. As I said before, he is a bit special and can hold grudges. The two little Lolita didn't feel angry when they saw this, but they laughed even happier. Once upon a time, they were the ones who chose to remain silent. It all seemed like it happened yesterday, oh, it did happen yesterday. The two little Lolita were in a happy mood and once again gave Riel's more than 30 points of emotional value, but he still didn't care much. It's so funny, I'm so rich no matter what, how could I care about this guy who spends a lot of money? Of course, if you get a little more explosive, he won't be able to take notice. But it's a pity that until the little snakes came out with their magic wands, neither of the two angel Lolita showed new emotional values. Be careful not to get separated. The hidden prefects of each grade are very optimistic about the people in their own grade. After the sixth grade Yin prefect finished his instructions, he took the little snakes and set off in a mighty manner. I don't know whether it was because he was deliberately protecting the first-year students or for other reasons, but the first-year snake happened to be in the middle of the team. In front are sixth grade and third grade, and in the back are second grade, fourth and fifth grade. Well, it seems that the distribution is very even, and the weak ones are in the middle. Riel's led the two little Lolita and followed the crowd outside, not forgetting to warn, if there is a fight, don't be afraid, just follow me and run back. Even if the sky really collapses, there will still be someone tall to hold it up, so we just need to protect ourselves. As soon as he finished speaking these words of advice, he received the eyes of the two women again. We should be the ones saying this to you, right? Don't get too excited and rush to the front when the time comes. This is the first time I've seen someone talk about escaping in such a fresh and refined way. 
As expected, it has to be you. Even so, Pansy and Cassandra were still very moved. Pansy is touched plus one five, Cassandra is touched plus one four. Tisk, you don't mean what you say, little Loli. She resists on the outside, but she is shouting in her heart. Ahem, she doesn't mean what she says. Riel shook his head and didn't continue, as long as he knew. Outside Hogwarts Castle, hundreds of centaurs and horse warriors were ready to go, and their fully drawn bowstrings were like their determination. As soon as the leader gives the order, you will rush straight towards Hogwarts. Kroll, have you really thought about it? I know that the tragic death of the Holy Unicorn makes you very angry, but this was not done by us at Hogwarts. We can help you find who broke into the Dark Forest and hunted the Holy Unicorn. You don't have to do this. You know that the Dark Forest is the Forbidden Forest of Hogwarts. Neither professors nor students will set foot there easily. You. Hagrid racked his brains to come up with persuasive words, but it did not waver Carole and the centaurs at all. Seeing that Hagrid wanted to continue talking, Carole finally couldn't help but said, Hagrid, my friend. The holy unicorn died in the hands of greedy wizards. We not only want to avenge it this time, but we also want to warn those greedy wizards. If they continue to destroy wantonly, they will receive backlash, and the entire wizarding world will bear the wrath of magical animals. Although magical animals are animals, a large part of them are not weaker than humans in intelligence, such as centaurs, dragons, giants, elves, mermaids. Once these magical animals unite, the explosive strength will definitely easily destroy the entire wizarding world. This is also the case in recent years. The reason why the Ministry of Magic strictly controls the hunting of magical animals, and even raising them privately, is because they are afraid of the magical animals retaliating. Hearing this, Hagrid opened his mouth to say something more, but no words came out. As a fan of magical animals, he is very aware of the current situation of magical animals, and he also knows that what Carole said is true. Rabbits can bite people when they are anxious, not to mention they are powerful magical animals. You should also know what is in the Dark Forest. The Dark Forest is already the last pure land for magical animals. But now that the Holy Unicorn is hunted by wizards, do I need to tell you what this means? Let Professor Dumbledore come out and I will talk to him. Hagrid's expression changed. Some people think that the Dark Forest is the back garden of Hogwarts, but this is not the case. The reason why the Dark Forest is the Forbidden Forest of Hogwarts is not only because there are very dangerous magical animals in it, but also because there are unknown things deep in the forest. Even Dumbledore didn't know if those things were still there, and he had no idea of going in to investigate. In this regard, Dumbledore just wanted to say, are the strange flavored beans not delicious, or the chocolate frogs are no longer fragrant? Why did he go to the dark forest to die if he didn't enjoy life? Point zero. You may have had this idea when you were young, but your strength didn't allow it. When you get older, your strength allows it, and you know more, this idea will naturally be given up. The only thing I am sure of is that it is very dangerous in the dark forest. How dangerous it is is unknown. That's why the dark forest has become a forbidden forest that is strictly prohibited from entering without permission. As the gamekeeper of Hogwarts, Hagrid naturally heard some secrets about the depths of the forbidden forest from Dumbledore. If Cooler's words are true, then the consequences will be really big trouble. Sorry my friend. I will convey your words to Professor Dumbledore, but I hope you will not be impulsive. After Hagrid finished speaking, he did not dare to waste time and took out his beloved motorcycle from the pocket where the traceless telescopic spell had been cast. In this way, under the gaze of the centaur warriors, he flew staggeringly towards Hogwarts Castle. Hum, it's hard to comment. I can only say that this small motorcycle bears a weight that it shouldn't bear at its age. Carol raised his hand and said loudly, remove the arrows first. The castle of Hogwarts is a magic prop, and our arrows cannot penetrate it. If a fight really breaks out, don't be afraid, and don't flinch. We have to tell these greedy wizards that magical animals are not easy to mess with either. Don't worry, leader, we are all willing to die. The centaurs neatly put down their fully drawn bows and arrows, moving skillfully without any pause. Centaur warrior, born to be the best archer. Elf, I'm not convinced, but I won't tell you, I'll let you guess for yourself. Hogwarts Square, it's said to be a square, but it's actually a place where flying lessons are held. 
It's not a small venue. When the Slytherin snakes arrived, the young wizards from the other three colleges were already standing there. The location of this square is very clever, you can just see the centaurs holding torches outside the castle. This made the little wizards who saw the centaur for the first time exclaim in surprise. Are they centaurs? The bows and arrows in their hands are said to be able to kill prey from a hundred meters away. A hundred meters away. The place where we are standing should be less than a hundred meters away from them, right? Doesn't that mean they can shoot us at will? Then aren't we very dangerous? Are you stupid? Have you forgotten that we are wizards? We have never learned about armor protection. What's more, the dean and professors are here, what danger do you think there will be? Even Riels couldn't help but said, they, they, are really ugly. Pansy and Cassandra, who thought he wanted to say something, very good, this is very Riels. Pansy is speechless plus nine, funny plus six, Cassandra is funny plus seven. Ha, huh, isn't the card sister today very awesome because she didn't wake up? Riels curled his lips and continued to ask. What position do you think a centaur should use to sleep? Sleep lying down or on your stomach? If they lie down, can they turn over? Or do they have their own bed for centaurs? To be honest, he was really curious about this question, after all, centaurs were such creatures. His upper body was that of a human and his lower body was that of a horse. He really couldn't figure out what position to sleep in. Ordinary horses can still sleep on their stomachs, but can centaurs? Obviously not, unless they learn yoga. As soon as Riel's question came up, Pansy and Cassandra fell silent. Well, this is indeed a good question. Don't ask it again next time. Pansy is speechless plus one six, funny plus one one, Cassandra is speechless plus one five, confused plus one two. This feels right. The two little angels must have been unconscious before and were still in a state of confusion. Riel's nodded with great satisfaction and just as he was about to open his mouth to say something, he heard bursts of shouts from the little wizards. That's a phoenix, Professor Dumbledore's phoenix. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. It's worthy of the name phoenix. I heard that a phoenix can be reborn from the ashes and will not die even if it is seriously injured. Is this true? I don't know this, but I know that the phoenix is full of treasures. Its feathers can be used to make wands and potions. Even its tears can heal wounds. Compared to the surprise of the little wizards, Riels looked at the flaming phoenix in the night sky strangely. He subconsciously touched the pokeball in his trouser pocket. Do you think that if he captures Fox, will Dumbledore kill him with a wand? Well, there's a high probability that he won't die. At most, he'll be taught a lesson, and maybe he'll be able to get a lot of good things out of him. You can give him a hammer. Catching a phoenix is much more difficult than catching a basilisk, not to mention that this phoenix is a fox. He might not even be able to deal with a basilisk, let alone fox. So he decisively cut off the bad relationship between himself and fox. Professor Dumbledore's phoenix appears here, so does Professor Dumbledore also. Before Pansy finished speaking, she saw a phoenix flying in the sky falling downwards, landing directly on the shoulders of a man in a nightgown. Although the dark night affected the sight of the little wizards, many people still recognized this person's identity at a glance. Albus Dumbledore, the headmaster of Hogwarts and the strongest white wizard in the wizarding world. In this regard, Riels just wants to say, it's really a good show. The phoenix can take people to apparate, but Dumbledore let Fox, 967, fly in swaggeringly, which was obviously intentional. However, he also guessed the meaning of Dumbledore's actions. After all, centaurs are magical animals, and phoenixes are advanced magical animals, and can even be said to be mythical beasts. Letting fox fly out in a big way can intimidate the centaurs very well, so that they will not get angry and take action without even talking. Riel silently gave a thumbs up in his heart, whether he should say it or not, it had to be the old B. Dumbledore. There is no loophole in this way of doing things. It can be said that everything has been taken into consideration. But this nightgown, is really a bit of a show. It is estimated that after tonight, Dumbledore will have a new title. Professor Dumbledore, God of War in Nightgown. Compared to the excitement of the little wizards, Dumbledore was in some trouble. To be precise, his mood was a bit messy, well, very messy and bad, otherwise he wouldn't have come out wearing pajamas. Kroll, 
my friend, you should know that the death of the unicorn has nothing to do with us, and we did not do this. Back then, the Dark Forest made a deal with those four, and Hogwarts was able to be built here. After so many years, we have always abided by the agreement. Are you doing this now to break the agreement between Hogwarts and the Dark Forest? When Hogwarts was first established, this place was chosen, but it belonged to the Dark Forest. Four great wizards made a deal with those in the forest so that Hogwarts could be established here. In a sense, the Forbidden Forest does not belong to Hogwarts, but Hogwarts does. As soon as Dumbledore said this, Snape and others drew out their wands and looked at the centaur seriously. They were not surprised by what Dumbledore said. As the deans of the four major colleges, these were no secrets to them. It is precisely because they know that they are so serious, even dignified. We, the Centaur tribe, have no intention of breaking the agreement, and we are not qualified to break the agreement. We are just representing ourselves to seek justice for the unicorns. Professor Dumbledore, you should know that the unicorn is special. It died at the hands of wizards who tried to live forever. Carol's voice was normal but the volume behind him suddenly increased, as if a spell similar to the loud curse had been cast on him. His words pierced the night sky and reached the ears of the young wizards extremely clearly. The little wizards who were still in a state of excitement and thought they could see Dumbledore take action were stunned, as if they had been poured cold water on them. In this cold night, my heart is really chilled and my heart is soaring. Compared to the little wizards who fell silent and doubted whether this was right or wrong, Riels keenly grasped the key points. The centaur came here because of the death of the unicorn. If I remember correctly, the unicorn died at the hands of No-Nose. Noseless and Quirrell went to steal Gringotts and had a fight with the fire dragon guarding the gate. Noseless's remnant soul was damaged, so they absorbed the unicorn's blood to stabilize the remnant soul. Riels rubbed his chin and made a rough calculation based on the original work and what happened tonight. Suddenly, he turned his head and looked at Hogwarts Castle, trying the tiger away from the mountain. This person has no nose and is still playing the art of war. If he guessed correctly, Quirrell and Noseless should be frantically looking for the Philosopher's Stone right now. But he didn't care about this. It was just a remnant soul, and with the presence of Dumbledore, the god of war in nightgown, he couldn't make any trouble at all. He only cares about how to get enough benefits from this matter. To be honest, if he had a choice, he would rather go back to sleep. The mood value can be increased slowly. He is not in a hurry. But now he's been called up to watch a big show, so it's not too much for him to get some benefits, right? Riels rolled his eyes a few times, lowered his voice and said to the two little Lolita, I have something to do and I have to go back to the dormitory. Garfield only ate one and a half kilograms of cat food this afternoon. I'm worried that she might be uncomfortable. I'll be back soon. You don't need to tell Professor Snape. Without waiting for the two little Lolita to respond, he took a few steps back, passed through the gaps in the crowd, and quickly headed towards Hogwarts Castle. Pansy and Cassandra looked at each other, their expressions were exactly the same, wonderful. Only one and a half kilograms of cat food. This Garfield, must be feeling unwell. Well, that's Garfield. She only ate one and a half kilograms of cat food in one meal. She must be feeling so bad that she can't eat. Two little Lolita brainwashed each other, I hope this ridiculous sounding reason can make them believe it. But unfortunately, they overestimated their brainwashing abilities, so, dot the two little Lolita chose not to continue this topic. Pansy and Cassandra looked at each other and continued to watch the, big show, ahead without changing their expressions. Although they cannot brainwash themselves, it does not prevent them from asking questions. After all, they didn't even know what Riels was doing. Dot dot dot, Pansy is speechless plus 17, curious plus 1 2, Cassandra is funny plus 1 6, helpless plus 1 4. Riels ignored the system, just held the wand tightly and whispered to the library door, open the Alaho hole. A beam of white fluorescence shot out from the top of the wand and penetrated into the door lock of the library door. The next moment, there was a crisp sound of, bang. Riels licked his lips. Thanks to the half month I spent in Diagon Alley, I learned the little spells in the spell book, otherwise it would be really difficult. But this door lock is really designed to protect against gentlemen, not villains, huh? Why does it make me the same as villains? Riels shook his head and stopped thinking about it. 
He opened the library door and got in. He didn't forget to close the door in the end. Just kidding, there are two mad dogs looking for something in Hogwarts Castle. If they bump into them, both bites will be minor. No nose Quirrell, mad dog. The most we want is your life, but you scold us. We really have no resin. Lawyer, we need to find a lawyer. Lumos flash. With the light of his wand, Riels quickly scanned the entire library. In the library of Hogwarts, there are not only spell analysis and magic books related to various subjects, but also story collections and various novels. So you can imagine how many bookcases there are in this library. Riels didn't hesitate much, just held the wand and started looking around with the help of fluorescent flashes. Soon, he found the rope in his memory that divided the ordinary book area and the forbidden book area. On one side of the rope are books open to little wizards, and on the other side, as the name suggests, are forbidden books that little wizards are forbidden to read. The forbidden book area not only contains all kinds of white magic and black magic that are powerful but not suitable for young wizards to learn, but also contains many special potion formulas. If there is a place in Hogwarts that is most attractive to Riel's, then it goes without saying that this is one of them. Looking at the row of bookshelves on the other side of the rope, Riel smiled almost crookedly. No nose is so good at inducing the tiger to leave the mountain. I don't know if he has harvested the magic stone, but I know that I will definitely gain a lot this time. I originally wanted to find an opportunity to go out at night while Dumbledore was away, but I didn't expect that I wouldn't have to wait any longer with no nose. Don't look at it. The restricted book section of the library is just blocked by an ordinary hemp rope. In fact, this place is very guarded. There are professors on duty every day, and Dumbledore comes to visit from time to time, so no one wants to take this place seriously. But this time was different from the past. The professor in charge of the library went to the front to help, and Dumbledore was also in front. This is equivalent to saying that the restricted book area is now only blocked by a rope. Riel strode across the rope, picked up a special potion-making recipe, and started reading. But within a few seconds of reading it, he slammed the book shut and his eyelids couldn't stop beating. It turns out that Vila's bodily fluids have this effect. I really don't know how perverted the person who developed this potion is. Snape, who was confronting the centaur, suddenly felt an itch in his nose and sneezed involuntarily. Seeing that everyone was looking at him, Snape remained calm, raised the wand in his hand and said coldly, continue talking. Everyone looked at him strangely, then stopped looking and continued talking. In the library, Riels, who had no idea that the criticism he had just made, which almost caused Snape's death, was still looking through various banned books. Torn to pieces, a good thing, torn apart, a good thing too. With his photographic memory, Riels memorized several effects, strange potion formulas in just a short while. At the same time, I also found two very powerful spells from the Black Magic book. Riel's was just about to stuff the finished book back into its place and look for the next book, but out of the corner of his eye he saw a flash of bright red through the gap. Riel's was stunned, reached out and opened the two books, and took out the red glowing object. This is a sharp-edged, bright red ruby. As soon as he took it, Riel's felt his body light up and all the fatigue on his body disappeared. Based on this alone, he knew what this thing was without having to guess. Riel's looks weird. Looking at the ruby, the corners of his lips couldn't stop twitching, the magic stone is in my hand, and the nose and quarrel are. Suddenly, there was a rush of footsteps outside the library, and it was obvious that the visitor was very anxious. Riel's expression changed. Are these two people from Sao Sao? Why did they come so quickly? Hogwarts Castle is so big that only two people can touch each other. Without any time to think, Riel's quickly stuffed the magic stone into his trouser pocket, stuffed the book back into place, and quickly hid behind the bookcase in the corner. Just as he removed the fluorescent flash, the door of the library was pushed open from the outside. The visitor was none other than the bird's nest above his head, and under the bird's nest lived the noseless and remnant quarrel. As for why you are so sure, well, you can't really see it, but you can hear it. Master, master, the things are not in the principal's office, and they shouldn't be in the library either, right? Could it, could it have been carried by Dumbledore? Quirrell's stammering voice echoed in the dark library. 
Maybe he was afraid of being discovered by Dumbledore outside or something else, but he didn't choose to use fluorescent lights and just stood in the dark in the library. Absolutely impossible, the matter in the dark forest is very troublesome, Dumbledore will not take the risk of taking that thing with him, the thing must still be in Hogwarts. Since it's not in the principal's office, then look for the restricted book area again. If you still can't find it, go to the principal's office of the four major colleges. Quote, Voldemort's hoarse voice echoed in the library, sounding as harsh as a cat's claws scratching glass. Riel's got goosebumps when he heard this, and almost couldn't help but jump out and kick Voldemort in the face. You two share the same body, can't you communicate mentally? How come you have a mouth when you are such a remnant soul? But he just thought about it. If he hits him head on, he may not be Voldemort's opponent. But, Riel's raised his lips slightly and relied on the sound of footsteps to determine Quirrell's current location. Then he carefully stretched out his hand to touch the broom in the corner, and at the same time listened carefully to the sound of Quirrell rummaging around. Soon, he touched the small broom used to clean the dust from books. Riel's did not choose to pick it up directly, but took out the wand and murmured in a very low voice, here comes the curse. The next moment, the little broom rose into the air and quickly flew out of where he was. Who, how did you do this, you idiot? You don't even know there are people here. No wonder the library door is not locked, it turns out a mouse got in. I don't know if Riel's murmuring voice was heard, or the sound of the broom alerted Voldemort, causing him to roar in anger. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, master, I will find this rat right away. Please, don't worry. As soon as Quirrell's stuttering voice fell, there was a sound of footsteps, and the footsteps were still approaching in his direction. In response, Riel's just narrowed his eyes slightly, without much panic, and waved the wand in his hand gently. Relying on his familiarity with the library environment and precise calculations, the small broom he controlled constantly shuttled between the bookcases. The bursts of sound that broke through the air caused Quirrell to panic, and he stopped walking toward Riel's, and instead anxiously walked back and forth between the books. The panicked steps almost made Riel's laugh. Fortunately, he has received professional training, that's weird. Riel's covered his mouth and tried not to laugh out loud. Silent ridicule was enough at this time, and laughing out loud would be rude. Well, just think of it as saving some face for the nose less dark lord, leaving a thin line today so that we can meet each other easily in the future. But as long as they can't find themselves and can't help their identity, then, there's no need to keep this thread, right? Riel suppressed his laughter, closed his eyes and concentrated on controlling the broom. He wants to know now that Voldemort and Quirrell share the same body. Does that mean that Voldemort can also feel Quirrell's feelings? Let him, research, it carefully. Master, no no, no, I, I, I can't see clearly. Do you want to light the candle? Or, or use fluorescent lights? You are such an idiot. Are you telling Dumbledore our location by lighting the candle? Just smear him and find this rat as soon as possible. We must not be exposed. I will help you listen. You must listen to my command. Voldemort's voice was still hoarse and unpleasant, but his tone was full of confidence. Chapter 71 Voldemort's confident words calmed down Quirrell, who was already a little anxious. He stammered and praised, Master is, worthy of being a master. In fact, the reason why he was so anxious was not because he couldn't catch the flying thing, but because he was afraid that Voldemort would be angry. But now that Voldemort has spoken, why should he be anxious? It's not his fault that he won't be caught by then. Idiot, concentrate, don't hold back and try to kill with one hit, but be careful not to damage this place. It's good that we can find that thing. If we can't find it, our identity will probably be exposed because of this place. After Voldemort finished speaking hoarsely, Quirrell immediately nodded and responded, Please don't worry, master, I will definitely pay attention. Very good, pay attention to my command, be sure to kill with one strike. Quirrell nodded quickly, then held the wand, waiting for Voldemort's command. No one spoke a word, and they just stood there quietly, waiting for the mouse to appear again. Riel's mouth twitched a few times after listening to the conversation between the two in the dark. Has no nose forgotten that he is just a remnant soul that can barely survive on the blood of unicorns? Do you think he is in his prime? If I were so powerful, he would have discovered me long ago. 
A mutilated soul means that the mental power is weak, even if one was once strong without a nose. But his remnant soul is very weak, which means that the mental power of this remnant soul is very weak. Weak mental power means that the perception ability is also weak. I'm afraid only Quirrell will believe this nonsense. No, Quirrell might be forced to believe it. Riel's narrowed his eyes in pleasure, but it doesn't matter, it's more fun this way. Then he stopped being distracted, closed his eyes, and began to concentrate on controlling the broom. He now controls the broom flying without vision, which means he has to calculate the broom's flying speed, the distance between each bookcase, and how many seconds it will take to turn. Without the assistance of photographic memory and the mental strength accumulated in his two lives, he would probably not be able to do this. The broom that was originally suspended in the air trembled a few times and began to fly around the bookcase again. As soon as it moved on one side, Voldemort's husky voice with a bit of excitement rang out from the other side. At six o'clock, no, it ran to your ten o'clock direction. No, it ran too fast, this is definitely not the speed that humans can achieve. Quirrell was directed to spin around several times. He calmed down and asked in a bitter voice, if it's not a human, what could it be? A magical animal. In fact, he really wanted Voldemort to stop giving random orders, otherwise he might have fainted to the ground before the enemy showed up. However, due to Voldemort's power, he only dared to think about these words in his mind and would never dare to say them out loud. It can't be a magical animal. It appears again. It will be at your 8 o'clock position in 3 seconds. Attack quickly. Voldemort is not stupid, on the contrary, he is very smart, a rare smart person. Seeing that he couldn't catch it, he decisively chose to predict. He was very confident in his prediction. In these three seconds, the thing in the dark will never have time to react, and it will hit the curse. Quirrell was very obedient and immediately raised his wand as soon as Voldemort's command came out. Avada Kedavra, dark green lightning-like light shot out, and then, nothing more. What Voldemort was talking about didn't appear at all, not even a shadow was seen. For a moment, this person fell into silence. The former was wondering whether to speak or not and took the initiative to stop the mistake, while the latter was doubting life. Could it be that because its remnant soul is too weak, people also become stupid? Everyone here is thinking in different ways, but Riel's in the dark is smiling so hard that his mouth is almost crooked. In fact, Voldemort's prediction was not wrong, and could even be called very accurate. If he hadn't stopped the broom after hearing Voldemort's words just now, this blow from Avada Kedavra would have definitely hit the target. But he was not deaf, he could hear what Voldemort said, which meant that Voldemort was commanding two people at once. It's just a pity that they don't know my identity, otherwise a lot of things would have been exposed, maybe even a big one. Thinking of the dark green lightning just now, Riel's became a little greedy. Do you think chewing a big melon is good? In fact, it is just average. Moreover, like the other two unforgivable curses, it will affect the mind of the caster. The more times it is used, the person who casts the spell will become more and more cruel, until the killing devours the mind and becomes a walking zombie. But there is a saying that is very good. I can use it, but I can't live without it. Others will not understand the world of collectors. Concentrate, and if the first blow fails, try again. You must not let the mouse in the dark escape. Master, don't worry, I understand clearly. After the conversation, the man returned to his previous appearance, quietly waiting for the thing in the dark to appear. In this regard, Riel's also graciously granted them permission and waved the magic wand in his hand again. The floating broom trembled a few times, and the next moment it turned into a sharp arrow and flew out, so fast that it even made a clanking sound through the air. The speed is too fast. You follow my command and make sure you don't make any mistakes. Those centaurs can't delay it for too long. We don't have much time. I missed this opportunity this time, and I don't know when it will happen next time. Quirrell nodded solemnly, holding the wand and waiting for Voldemort's command. Riel's in the dark raised the corners of his lips again when he heard this, and the broom that was about to emerge from the afterimage suddenly slowed down. Instead, he slowly approached Quirrell from behind, as if he was going to make a sneak attack. Voldemort, who sensed all this, smiled mockingly, but did not make a sound. It was not until the thing was almost close that he roared in a hoarse voice. If it wants to sneak up on you, just do it. 
Quirrell reacted instantly, holding the wand and turning around, Avada Kedavra. The familiar dark green lightning appeared again, a sure blow, at least in Voldemort's opinion. But the result surprised him a little. The slow black shadow seemed to be deliberately playing tricks on them. Suddenly speeding up, he missed Avada Kedavra, well, he missed again. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that they finally saw clearly what that thing was this time. A. Broom, Quirrell stared blankly at the little broom that was at eye level with him, his expression was weird. The majestic dark Lord Voldemort, and an elite wizard like him, were actually tricked around by a broomstick. This is simply, so embarrassing. Quirrell covered his face in shame, feeling that there was no point in living anymore. Idiot, what are you doing? Get away. Voldemort's angry roar brought Quirrell back to his senses. When he opened his eyes, he saw a black stream of light shooting towards him rapidly. The speed was so fast that he had no time to react, but the chill that rushed straight to Tianlingai still made him subconsciously want to reach out to block it. But how can his speed be compared with that of a chicken gun? Quirrell watched in horror as the cock shooting cannon used precise cock shooting on him, but he couldn't avoid it and was powerless to stop it. After a painful groan and the sound of chickens and eggs being beaten, the number of adult male wizards in the wizarding world was reduced by one. But this is not a regrettable thing, because one man is missing and a new gender is gained. That's the new gender between man and woman. Riel's in the dark covered his mouth and laughed, but he still admired Quirrell. Quirrell didn't even cry out in such extreme pain. He was a real man. Well, a real man in name only. I must write this down in the history of the community. He is the first person in the wizarding world to suffer a precision beating, and he is also the first, a real man in name only. Ha ha ha. Riel's covered his mouth with both hands and tried his best to suppress his laughter, but some small laughter still came out. But he doesn't care. There shouldn't be any man who can still fight after enduring the precise chicken shooting of the chicken cannon. Well, he has fighting strength in all aspects. In fact, just as Riel's thought, Quirrell did hear the sound, but the extreme pain made him unable to speak, let alone take action. As for Voldemort's remnant soul, he couldn't withstand the powerful power of the chicken cannon, and was almost blown away by the cannon. Now he has fallen into a deep sleep, but the pain on Quirrell's body has also been transmitted to his soul in real time, which makes him feel unbearable pain even in his deep sleep. Compared to Quirrell's physical pain, this can be considered a pain that goes deep into his soul. Riel's could no longer suppress his laughter, and his unrestrained laughter echoed throughout the library and even the corridors. Family members, who knows? He just came to peek at a forbidden book, and picking up the magic stone was outrageous enough. Now it's another time to give Quirrell a precise shot, or to kill two birds with one stone. One of them is Voldemort, even though it's a remnant soul. But the remnant soul is also the noseless Voldemort, the most failed villain in the legend. In a sense, while reading a forbidden book and harvesting the Philosopher's Stone, he also, solo killed, Voldemort. The more Riel's thought about it, the more he laughed wildly, until he couldn't stop laughing. Riel's laughed wildly, but Quirrell on the other side couldn't even cry. He didn't dare to check who that person was, lest he would be killed directly. Even though his heart was full of hatred, he could only swallow it in his stomach while the man in the dark was still laughing. He endured the pain that was several times more intense than the heart-breaking pain, and he gritted his teeth and pulled out the chicken-beating cannonball. Despite the severe pain and the constant flow of blood, Quirrell struggled to stand up while holding on to the chicken shells. He stuffed his mouth with clothes, suppressed the painful roars, and limped out of the library. After going out, he didn't forget to close the door of the library. It wasn't because he was used to it, but he just hoped to stop the person who was firing. In the library, Riel suppressed his smile and stood up weakly. Looking at the closed door of the library, he sincerely admired, no wonder Voldemort possessed him. This level of pain was taken away so lightly. Quirinus Quirrell can truly be called the number one werewolf in the wizarding world. After sighing, he did not dare to waste any more time. Just as No Nose said, the centaur could not delay Dumbledore for long. Even if this matter might involve other things, Dumbledore could still solve it easily. Tisk, I'm such a good person. 
We are all enemies of life and death, but I helped cover up their traces. I'm so kind. Riels covered his nose with his sleeve, waved his wand and used a cleaning spell to remove all the dirt on the ground. After doing this, he did not choose to read the banned books in the restricted book area again, but repeatedly confirmed that there were no particularly obvious ones. After leaving it behind, he turned around and walked out of the library. It didn't matter if he didn't know that the Sorcerer's Stone was in the Forbidden Book area before, but now that he knew, it would be fine if he was still reading the Forbidden Book there. Isn't that just waiting for Dumbledore to catch him? There are several banned books that I will have the opportunity to read again in the future, but the Philosopher's Stone is different. It is much more important than the banned books. The Magic Stone is the product of the highest alchemy. It can not only turn stone into gold, but also create the elixir of life. Well, it's the kind of elixir that only guarantees that you won't die of old age, but it doesn't guarantee that your body won't fail. The Philosopher's Stone is too important. Once it is lost, Dumbledore will definitely look for it to confirm whether the thing fell into Noseless's hands. It's almost impossible to hide things from Dumbledore at Hogwarts. Riels walked out thoughtfully and greeted the people in the portraits around him. This was one of the reasons why he said he couldn't hide it. It can be said that Dumbledore's spies are everywhere throughout Hogwarts. Even if he could avoid these portraits, Dumbledore could easily find out if he really wanted to. Especially if it's something related to the Philosopher's Stone, Dumbledore will definitely investigate it, and it won't take long for him to be found out. Thinking of this, Riels paused, frowned, and began to think about how to deal with it. He picked up the Magic Stone based on his ability. Even if he returns it, he has to wait for two days to play with it. Dumbledore doesn't covet the Philosopher's Stone. He just doesn't want the Philosopher's Stone to fall into Noseless's hands. No, he doesn't know that Noseless is back yet. At most, he is pregnant. This magic stone is a bait, testing whether No Nose comes back, then things will be much easier to handle. After figuring this out, Riels raised his eyebrows happily and continued walking towards Hogwarts Square. He was going to meet Dumbledore, the legendary white wizard and headmaster of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hogwarts Flying Lesson Field When Riels arrived, the young wizards were celebrating, no doubt celebrating the departure of the centaurs. Riels pretended to cheer a few times, and then walked through the crowd towards the place where the two little Lolita stood in his memory. Where has this guy gone? If he doesn't come back yet, he'll be in trouble if Professor Snape discovers him. Pansy frowned and looked around anxiously at the crowd, hoping to see that familiar figure. Cassandra seemed to be very open-minded about her anxiety and worries. You don't think you can hide this from Professor Snape, do you? Riels can't be invisible. Many people saw him when he left. Among them are some of his, unfriendly classmates. Have you forgotten how much he can make enemies? On the first day I entered Slytherin, I beat up the first-year snakes, and even taunted them afterward. This kind of behavior not only offended the group of first-grade snakes, but would also definitely cause displeasure among the other grade snakes. Ultimately, it is because of Riel's origin that as long as he is in Slytherin, he will always be criticized and ostracized by the little snakes. Now that Riel's has been caught, how can those little snakes let him go? Pansy also knew this, and her expression suddenly became solemn, Professor Snape doesn't know how to. I think Professor Snape can. He is a great master of potions. Is there any potion that can be difficult for him to get? Professor Snape, am I right? With a familiar voice and a familiar tone of wanting to be beaten, the two little Lolita knew who was coming without turning their heads. But the content of Riel's words. The two women quickly turned their heads, and what they saw was Riel's and Snape with a cold face. The two little Lolita nodded politely and said hello, Professor Snape. Snape did not respond, but looked at the smiling Riels with cold eyes, Mr. Thomas, I hope your explanation will not be bad. The hidden prefects of each grade will take the people back. Mr. Thomas, you come with me. After Snape finished speaking, without waiting for anyone to answer, the daily magic robe turned around and left. For a moment, the little snakes all looked at Riels with looks that were either gloating, proud, or sympathetic. Snape is angry plus one eight, Pansy is worried plus 17, Cassandra is funny plus 1-6, others are sympathetic plus 2-4-5, and gloating plus 1-1-1. Well, the little snakes are indeed little snakes, they are so, 
so considerate. He had some regrets before, having gained a lot but not having much emotional value, but now the regrets are gone. Riels narrowed his eyes happily, nodded to the two women, and quickly followed Snape. Head of Slytherin's room, Snape opened the door, ignored Riels who was following him, walked in and sat on the chair without looking back. Riels followed him into the dean's room and looked at the dean's room curiously. The area of the dean's room is much larger than that of the dormitory, almost closing the common room. The decoration of the headmaster's room is very consistent with Slytherin, well, it's all dark green, giving people a very dull feeling. The whole room is not small, but there are not many things on display. There are only a few bookcases, desks and chairs, and a set of crucibles. Riels looked at the crucible, touched his chin and pondered, this thing should be very authentic for making ground pot chicken, right? Mr. Thomas, if you have any objections to my crucible, then I advise you not to say it out loud, just keep it to yourself. Snape's cold voice echoed in the dean's room, making Riel's laugh a few times as he was thinking about where he could buy chicken. He bet that if Snape knew what he was thinking, he would definitely pull out his wand and fight him. If the wand is the wizard's best friend, then the crucible is the potion master's best friend, his true beloved relatives and friends, and our national football brothers. What's more, Snape is also a master of potions, so he is naturally more interested in the crucible. Riels was not embarrassed and changed the subject very naturally, Professor Snape, isn't there a chair for me to sit on? Although it's fine to stand, I was woken up in the middle of the night and I'm still sleepy. I really can't cheer up. As he talked, Riels yawned several times, as if he was really tired. What he said is indeed, false. It was indeed a bit sleepy at the beginning. I was woken up at around 1 in the morning, especially when I was half asleep and half awake. It is normal to have no energy. At least he was a little tired before he got the Sorcerer's Stone, but after he got the Sorcerer's Stone, well, the Sorcerer's Stone is really a good thing. Touch the Magic Stone and feel refreshed and reborn. If you touch the Magic Stone again, your waist will no longer hurt and your legs will no longer be sore. After touching the Magic Stone for the third time, even my breathing became much smoother, and I felt that my whole body was transparent. Snape is speechless plus one two, angry plus one five. Mr. Thomas, you know why I called you here, and you don't need to divert your attention. It's useless here. Snape's face became a little colder and he continued, let me hear what stupid excuse you can come up with. The previous duel was agreed to by Dumbledore and proposed by Malfoy, so he couldn't blame Riel's. Even if Malfoy is still unconscious, he will not hold Riel's accountable. After all, Riel's is not at fault. But Riel's sneaked back to Hogwarts just now, which made him very angry. Not only was he angry that Riel's was being rebellious and didn't listen to his instructions, but he was also because he guessed that Riel's would definitely not do anything good when he came back. He now wants to know, what did Riel's do when he came back? What trouble did he get into? Is it too late to make amends now? He even speculated at one point that Riel sneaked back to deal with the unconscious Malfoy to avoid further trouble. However, this idea was quickly rejected by him, because he felt that Riel's was definitely not such a, idiot. Professor Snape, as the hidden prefect of the first year of Slytherin, I am under a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. You also know that I am a muggle, and there is a huge gap between me and those purebloods and mixed bloods. I can only catch up with them by studying hard. Riel's wiped the non-existent tears from the corner of his eyes as if in sadness, and continued in a hoarse voice, just now, in order to learn more, I. I ran to read a book. Do you know what the library is like after one o'clock in the morning? I know it. What, he lied about not drafting? Are you kidding, what did he lie about? He did go to the library to read. Although he was reading banned books, are banned books not books? And he was really stressed out. He lay in bed every night and looked at the fish swimming outside the window. He will seriously ponder three questions. How many chicken legs will he eat tomorrow morning? How many chicken legs will he eat at lunch tomorrow? Can he not eat chicken legs tomorrow night? Do you know how stressful it is to eat dozens of chicken drumsticks a day? You have no idea. So he didn't lie. Everything he said was from the bottom of his heart. Snape doubts plus one five. Suspicion plus one four, relief plus six. Doubt, everything he said was true, but Snape actually doubted him. 
This is too much. Riel's pouted and silently wrote down something for Snape in a small notebook. This debt will be repaid by Snape. S. Crucible in the future. Crucible. Sometimes I miss Zisha a lot. Who are these people? You said you went to the library to read. Mr. Thomas, do you want to listen to what you are saying? I thought your reason would be bad, but I didn't expect it to be this bad. Do you think I would believe it? Snape's face turned a little dark, and he looked at Riel's with deep doubts in his eyes. He thought of countless bad reasons, such as suddenly needing to go to the toilet, forgetting to take the wand, or his pet suddenly getting sick, but he never thought it would be this. But for some reason, he felt a little bit relieved. If this is true, then Riel's is really a studious little wizard. Professor Snape, you can question my character, you can also suspect that Malfoy is a gay, you can even speculate that Professor Quirrell is not a man. But you should never suspect that I lied. I, Riel's Thomas, can swear to Merlin that I just went to the library to read. When he said this, Riel's was confident and his eyes were round, as if if you don't believe me, we will have a fight. Again, if he didn't lie, why was he guilty? He just went to the library to read. Although he was reading banned books, some incidents happened in the middle. But those are innocuous. They just picked up the magic stone and performed a precision chicken attack on Quirrell. With this little episode, can he be said to have lied? Obviously not, because he didn't say any of this at all. So Riel's is very confident now. Snape hesitates plus one four, doubts plus one one, anger plus nine. Snape frowned and said coldly, Mr. Thomas, I miss you. Oh, Professor Snape, I'm sorry to interrupt your conversation. Before Snape could finish his words, he was interrupted by someone suddenly appearing in the room. This person was none other than Dumbledore, the god of war in nightgown. At this time, Dumbledore's face was not very good, and his tightly furrowed brows showed that he was very irritable. Snape stood up and asked doubtfully, Professor Dumbledore, are you? I will explain this to you later. Now I need to talk to Mr. Thomas alone. Severus, please excuse me. Snape's expression changed. He looked deeply at Riel's, who was expressionless, and then at Dumbledore, who had a serious look on his face, before walking out of the headmaster's office. He could hear Dumbledore's subtext, which was not to drive him away, but to ask him to guard outside to prevent anyone from breaking in. What trouble did Riel's get into? To deserve such serious action from Dumbledore, after all, this is Hogwarts. Snape's doubts plus one nine, anger plus one five, Dumbledore's solemnity plus one eight, hesitation plus seventeen, anticipation plus one two. Oh, Lao Deng Tu is still awesome, the value of this explosion is almost five thousand. So much has been revealed before we even started talking. If Dumbledore knew that he had the Sorcerer's Stone, wouldn't he have revealed the reward directly? This is Dumbledore. The reward from the explosion will definitely not be bad. Riel's eyes flashed with anticipation, and he spoke first. Professor Dumbledore, are you here to see me because of my visit to the library? He knew that the matter of the Sorcerer's Stone could not be hidden. Now that Dumbledore appeared, he might have guessed that the Sorcerer's Stone was on him. This made Riel's a little bit speechless. Lao Dengtu is Lao Dengtu, and he is still hot in circles. According to his original plan, he had taken the initiative to find Dumbledore to admit his mistake, but now it was just Dumbledore who found him himself. Is he panic? He is not panic at all. He even wants to laugh a little. Dumbledore does not covet the power of the Sorcerer's Stone, he just wants to determine who took the Sorcerer's Stone and whose hands it is now. According to his understanding of old Dengtu, as long as he takes the initiative to explain the whereabouts of the magic stone, the magic stone will most likely be temporarily stored with him. After all, no matter how much Voldemort thought about it, he would never think that the philosopher's stone would be in the hands of a first-year wizard, so it was safe to store it with him. Even if you think about it, no, Voldemort is not that smart, especially since he is still just a remnant. If remnant soul was so smart, he wouldn't be unable to defeat every school. Dumbledore looks forward to plus 13, nervousness plus 6. Mr. Thomas, what I want to say is very important. I hope you will not tell anyone about our conversation, and I hope you can answer me truthfully. Dumbledore paused, and when Riel's nodded obediently, he continued, You went to the restricted area of the library tonight, right? Did you find anything in the forbidden book area? 
Did you meet anyone? Don't be afraid, I'm not here to scold you. Little wizards are curious about magic spells. This is normal, you just need to answer truthfully. When asking this question, Dumbledore's eyes became extremely sharp and he carefully observed the changes in Riel's expression. The magic stone is very important, especially this time it is related to that person, which makes him careless. Now he just hopes that Riel's took the magic stone, otherwise he will be in big trouble. Facing Dumbledore's gaze, Riel scratched his head without changing his expression, with a slightly, tangled, look on his face. Professor Dumbledore, you can answer the question, but you have to promise that after I finish answering, you can't tell Professor Snape. If possible, I hope you can ask him not to reprimand me. I have no choice but to do it because I am under too much pressure. I was so stressed that I couldn't sleep all night long. Professor Dumbledore, have you ever seen the library at one in the morning? I have. For several minutes after that, Riel spoke out all the pressure he had suppressed in his heart. The sad look, coupled with the trilling low roar, made Dumbledore's brows jump. He wanted to speak several times to bring the topic back on track, but was interrupted by Riel's before he could speak. Helpless, Dumbledore could only listen numbly as Riel's vented his emotions, from the rejection suffered by Muggles in Slytherin to how to improve himself and not want to be compared to others. It wasn't until Riel's was talking about three meals a day that Dumbledore finally couldn't bear it anymore. He raised his hand to signal Riel's to stop. Then he said with a little sympathy, Mr. Thomas, I deeply sympathize with your experience and applaud your diligent attitude. I promise that Professor Snape will not only not reprimand you, but I will also give Slytherin 30 points. This is what you deserve. Now can you answer the question I just asked? Dumbledore was extremely helpless and revealed a reward, the ultimate alchemy talent. Woohoo! Ship! Ship! Needless to say, Lao Dengtu's gold content is really good, and he has a top-notch talent once he gets started. Others, such as Professor McGonagall and others, only revealed that they were top grade. The gap can be imagined. Riel's raised his lips in pleasure and said, Professor Dumbledore, thank you for understanding me, and thank you for your recognition of me. I did go to the library to read, but I didn't know if what I was reading was a banned book. I saw a rope blocking the place, so I went in and read without paying attention. Seeing it accidentally and seeing it deliberately have completely different meanings. The former is easy to explain and convincing, while the latter is likely to arouse Dumbledore's suspicion. How does a new student know about the restricted area? How would he explain it then? He couldn't say that in fact, in his sleep, he dreamed of a white beard claiming to be Merlin's beard, and then guided him to the forbidden book area, right? Such a nonsense reason, can also be used to fool those not-so-smart people, such as Ronald and Malfoy. What, they won't be fooled either? No, 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 if they don't fall for it, it just means you're not fooling enough. For example, the entrance examination was such a ridiculous thing. Didn't Malfoy and the others still believe it? They even made them cry a lot. Dumbledore is excited plus one nine, looking forward to plus one eight. It's not your fault that the restricted book area was not protected. After all, you didn't know about it, right? Let's not talk about this for now. You just need to tell me, did you find anything there? Dumbledore knelt down and looked at Riel's with sharp eyes, his voice extremely serious, I hope you can tell me the truth. In fact, he could use legilimency to extract Riel's memories. But he didn't want to do it unless he had to, not to mention that Riel's was just a young wizard who had just entered Hogwarts. In fact, even some heinous dark wizards will not take in other people's memories casually. Only some very perverted people would casually ingest other people's memories. Well, I'm not talking about you, noseless Voldemort, you can sit down. Voldemort, what's wrong with my nose? There's no resin at all. I'm going to find a lawyer and send you all to Azkaban. Professor Dumbledore, Zhao Li Zhao, is this what you are talking about? Not only is it beautiful, it is also warm and comfortable to touch. I also want to take the dormitory back to warm my feet at night. As you know, Slytherin's dormitory is a bit too cool. Riel's held the philosopher's stone he took out from his trouser pocket, blinked his big eyes, and looked at Dumbledore innocently. What, are you pretending to be childish and disgusting? It's ridiculous. A man is born in heaven and earth. How can he, cough, he can only be called a man if he can stretch and bend. 
If you are not even a man, how can you have the chance to be depressed? And as long as he doesn't feel disgusted, he won't be the one who is disgusting. Of course, he was only 11 or 12 years old, and his appearance was very delicate, so normal people wouldn't feel sick after seeing him. Of course there are some abnormalities, Mr. Malfoy, don't you think so? Dumbledore is excited plus one nine, happy plus one six, speechless plus nine. Mr. Thomas, I think this thing is not suitable for warming your feet. I will ask the house elf to bring you two more quilts later. I promise you will be very warm. This thing is very precious and a rare treasure. You. At the end of his sentence, Dumbledore suddenly stopped. He looked at Riel's with some confusion and then at the magic stone in his hand that reflected bright red light. If his guess is true, that person will definitely not give up if he fails once. It was no longer safe for him to keep the magic stone here, and it would not be easy to destroy it. It would be better to hand it over to Riel's. As long as he takes good care of it, no one should find out that the philosopher's stone is on Riel's. After all, who could have imagined that such a precious magic stone would be in the hands of a first-year wizard? When the time comes, if he spreads the news again and makes that person mistakenly think that the thing is still with him, wouldn't it be perfect? But before that, he had one more thing to confirm. Dumbledore said seriously, Mr. Thomas, I have another question. Have you met anyone? From the time you returned to Hogwarts Castle to the time you left the castle, did you meet anyone along the way? Dumbledore is nervous plus 13, looking forward to plus 1-8. Tisk, it seems that this magic stone is really a bait. Old Dengtu is really suspecting that Voldemort is back. No, the cause of this incident was not Dumbledore's suspicion, it was just, coincidence. Master alchemist Nicholas Flamel lived too long and didn't want to live any longer, so he commissioned Dumbledore to destroy the Philosopher's Stone. But No Nose got the news from somewhere, so he chased him here, hoping to use the power of the magic stone to resurrect him. That's not right, this remnant soul without a nose must have just revived, and its target was the Sorcerer's Stone. As a result, the thing had already been sent to Hogwarts. In addition, he originally wanted to find a chance to take revenge, so he followed him to Hogwarts. Dumbledore only became suspicious because Noseless and Quirrell robbed Gringotts, and their target was very clearly the vault where the Sorcerer's Stone was stored. According to Dumbledore's intelligence, he must be able to detect something, and suspicion arises from this. Riel's rubbed his chin and went through the whole story, and came to the conclusion, it was so unlucky that he didn't have a nose. However, all of this is caused by oneself, and one cannot blame others. Professor Dumbledore, I did meet someone in the library, but I was so scared at the time that I thought it was the professor coming, so I hid. So I don't know who is coming. You also know that I am under too much pressure. I don't want to deduct points from Slytherin. As a hidden level of Slytherin. Riel's complaint had just begun when Dumbledore raised his hand expressionlessly to stop him. In this regard, Riel's could only shake his head regretfully. As expected, the same method did not work well on Dumbledore. However, today's harvest is very good, and it can even be called the most he has gained since he obtained the system. Riel's felt much better when he thought of this. Just when he was about to say something, he saw an old hand stretched out in front of him, with two jelly beans in the palm. Riel's raised his head in confusion and saw Dumbledore's kind smile. In response to this, Riel's became silent for a rare moment. Was old Deng treating him like a child? Strange flavored beans are a great snack. Each one has a different flavor. It all depends on your luck as to what flavor you get. Like many things in life, you don't know whether it will be good or bad until you do it, but if you don't do it, you will never know whether it is bitter or sweet. Try it. After all, you have picked up a very precious gem. I believe you must be very lucky. Dumbledore looked at Riel's with a smile and raised the strange flavored beans in his palm. It didn't matter whether Riel's lied or not. He believed that Riel's was a good wizard and that Riel's would make the right choice, just like Slytherin did. And what bad thoughts can a little wizard have? Dumbledore's pleasure plus one five, sympathy plus eight, helplessness plus one oh, trust plus one three. Very good and I feel a little sympathetic, but not much like this, right? Riel's complained silently, but felt warm in his heart, and consciously stretched out his hand to pick up a strange flavored bean. 
No matter where the world is, there is no shortage of good people or bad people, but the possibility of you encountering bad people is always greater than the possibility of meeting good people. In fact, it's not that there are fewer good people than bad people. It's just that you don't pay attention to what the good people do, so you feel that there are fewer good people. Starting from the first wizard he met, Professor McGonagall, when he came into contact with the wizarding world, almost all the net masters were very good. Of course there are some not-so-good ones, Ronald, Malfoy, don't you think so? Dumbledore took back his hand, swallowed the remaining strange-flavored bean, and said with some surprise, the purest butterbeer flavor from the leaky cauldron. Oh, you don't know, this is the first time I have tasted this flavor. You should try it too, maybe it will be a surprise. Looking at Dumbledore who looked like an old naughty boy, Riels felt both funny and warm in his heart. This is the Albus Dumbledore that everyone loves. Riels ate the purple strange flavored bean, and for a moment, a sweet but not greasy toffee taste bloomed on his tongue. He raised his eyebrows very strangely and chewed faster. Well, it was surprisingly good. Dumbledore looked at him expectantly. How is it? What does it taste like? It's very sweet and creamy. I like it very much. Thank you Professor Bladeau. Riels thanked him very sincerely. This thank you was not just to thank Dumbledore for giving him the strange flavored beans, but also to thank him for his trust, heartwarming actions, and those truths about, well, the strange flavored beans. Now he finally understood why Dumbledore liked strange flavored beans so much. Did Dumbledore eat strange flavored beans? The answer is obvious, yes, but they are not only strange flavored beans, but also a philosophy of life. No one can predict whether something will be good or bad before doing it, but if you don't do it, you will never know whether it is good or bad. Maybe this is why Dumbledore likes to recommend strange flavored beans to people. Dumbledore is pleased plus one nine. Mr. Thomas, I hope you will not tell anyone what we said today, including me, or Professor Snape, no one. This gem is called the Magic Stone, and it was something someone else entrusted me to keep. But I think you are destined to have it. I happen to be cleaning the place, so I would like to ask you to keep it for me. Dumbledore paused, then said extremely seriously, you must keep an eye on the Sorcerer's Stone, don't tell anyone, and don't take it out. Only you and I know that the Magic Stone is in your hand. You must not tell anyone. The Magic Stone is indeed very magical, but only a handful of people know how to use it. Of course, you only need to have the Midas Touch to turn gold into gold, but he wasn't going to tell Riel's, so he just let Riel's discover it on his own. Just like magic spells, you will feel heartfelt joy when you discover new ways to use them. The same is true for magic stones. Dumbledore pleasure plus 15. Riel's was not surprised by Dumbledore's decision, or rather it was what he had expected. Yes, Riel's said complicatedly. Professor Dumbledore, I think I should be paid some wages. I help you save things, so it should be normal for you to pay me some money, right? I don't want more, just two bags of fresh factory-made strange-flavored beans. I don't want anything stale. As soon as Riel said this, Dumbledore was stunned for a moment, then laughed out loud, and nodded repeatedly to indicate that he would bring the strange-flavored beans. The old man and the young boy looked at each other, and the two formed an invisible tacit understanding. Before Dumbledore left, he did not forget to abide by his agreement and asked Snape, who had been watching the wind for two hours, not to pursue Riel sneaking back. Snape didn't react much to this. He just looked at Dumbledore, took a deep look at Riel's, and nodded calmly. Mr. Thomas, I hope you will think about the consequences before doing something next time. It's getting late, you can go back and rest. Classes will be suspended tomorrow morning, so you can rest a little longer. Learning spells is very mentally draining, and not getting enough rest will seriously affect your state. So Riel's was not too surprised by this decision, but was very happy. As a student, is there anything more exciting than the holidays? Riel's nodded politely and said, I will convey it to others. Professor Snape should go to bed early. By the way, Professor Snape, this crucible of yours is, very good, I mean it's very good at holding it. I think I'll be here in a few days to ask for advice on how to hold it. His words were not deliberately provocative, but sincere. He was very curious about the special potion formulas obtained in the Forbidden Book area. Just thinking about those effects is exciting. 
As for who the things are going to be used on. Mr. Malfoy, it's time to drink the medicine. Snape is displeased plus 17, proud plus 6. Riel's paused and turned around to look. This old bat was famous for his duplicity. He is obviously a very affectionate person, but he always acts cold and heartless. Snape had been repenting for 22 years for that mudblood sentence back then, and so far he was able to summon Lily's patron saint. No one except Snape himself knows how deep this love is. What did Riel's do? What was Dumbledore doing? Watching Riel's disappear around the corner, Snape frowned in thought. He knew Dumbledore as well as Bumbledore knew him. Except for that person back then, he had never seen Dumbledore look so serious. Thinking of this, Snape was startled. He originally wanted to return to the dean's office but turned around and walked quickly towards the principal's office. The floating and swinging cloak looked like wings in the dim corridor. At first glance, it looked exactly like a bat flying close to the ground. Slytherin Dormitory ADFG Room When Riel's came back, the little snakes had already gone to rest. They didn't know that classes would be suspended for half a day tomorrow, and points would be deducted if they couldn't get up tomorrow. It might even attract ridicule from the other three academies little wizards. In response, the considerate Riels hesitated and decided to let them have a good rest. As for the suspension of classes, they should know when they get up tomorrow morning. Well, he is really a good person who cares about his classmates. He is clearly regarded as the hidden prefect. Riels showed a very satisfied smile, finished washing again, and sat on the bed to check on Garfield's condition. What? Why don't you sleep? Come on, classes will be suspended for half a day tomorrow. Is there anything that can be compared with lying in bed and sleeping during the day? That sentence is very good. If you want to think of something good, just sleep during the day, daydreaming will help you realize it. Garfield will have almost completed her evolution at noon tomorrow, right? I just don't know what she will look like. I hope she won't turn into Godzilla. This fat cat alone is enough for me to raise. If there's another Godzilla, the picture is so beautiful, I can't even imagine it. Is Godzilla strong? Super strong. I don't need it if he's strong. But relatively speaking, how much does a person with that body type need to eat in one meal? And that thing is also very picky about food. He thinks being a wizard is great, but he really doesn't want to change his job to become a monster breeder. If you are not careful, it is not impossible to be trampled to death by this thing. Just thinking of that scene made Riel shudder involuntarily, shook his head, stopped thinking, and started looking directly at tonight's harvest. Two powerful spells, torn apart and shattered to pieces. The former can cut objects, a bit like a low-end version of Shen Feng Wying. Broken to pieces is equivalent to a low-end thunderbolt explosion. It can only blow up a single target, while the thunderbolt explosion can blow up everything it touches. Wizards are just ordinary people who can cast spells. Their physical strength may be stronger than that of muggles, but they are not much stronger. This also means that the wizard is a very a squishy profession, strictly speaking, a somewhat powerful spell, even a wizard cannot withstand it. For example, how many wizards can withstand the raging flames and shattered bones? Obviously not. Of course, most wizards have legs. They know how to run when faced with spells, and they can use armor to protect themselves if they can't run away. So, blindly pursuing the power of magic spells is actually very important. Not only because I like to be powerful as a person, but also because only if your spell is powerful enough can you possibly break your opponent's defense. Except for some with extreme characteristics, such as Avada Kedavra. If you say that thing is really strong, you are right. Anyone who fails will die. But if you want to say how strong it really is, that's not true. In terms of power, it's at most about the same as Expelliarmus. This can be seen from the confrontation between Harry Potter and Nose in the original book. So the truly terrifying thing about Avada Kedavra is the fact that the one who wins is bound to die. Tisk, after reading two forbidden books, I have gained so much. The forbidden book area is really a treasure trove. I have to go for a night tour again if I have the chance. You said I'm not allowed to go out at night so I have to listen. If you come to Hogwarts to go to school, how dare you say that you are a Hogwarts student if you don't learn how to swim at night? Riel's curled his lips and picked up the biggest gain tonight, the magic stone that can refine the elixir of life. How useful would you say this thing is? 
It's not very useful. He doesn't need the low-end version of the elixir of life, nor is he particularly short of money. After all, the generous white-haired young master Malfoy would give him some galleons from time to time, so he really had no shortage. But if you want to say that the magic stone is useless, it is really useful. After all, it is the product of the most advanced alchemy, and its value can be imagined. Another thing that is tasteless to eat and a pity to throw away. Riels casually threw the magic stone onto the bed, hitting Garfield's bulging belly. This turn of events almost made him jump, but he felt relieved when he found Garfield unresponsive. He didn't bother with the discarded magic stone and just went shopping in the system mall. After checking what he needed, he closed the system mall directly. You ask him why he doesn't buy it if he wants it. Well, the answer is simple, because he can't afford it. He didn't gain much in emotional points tonight, and the remaining items from before were only less than 500, so the total of the things he needed would cost more than 1,000. I can't afford it, I can't afford it at all, so I can only go to Professor Snape's place to forage for food and barely make ends meet. The generous Professor Snape will be happy to share some potion ingredients with me, a diligent and studious little wizard, right? With good expectations, Riels chirped a few times, lay on the bed and fell asleep. Noon the next day, Hogwarts, Banquet Hall. Pansy and Cassandra looked at Riels, who was immersed in cooking, with dark circles under their eyes, as if they were looking at a dead person. Seeing that Riels had no intention of explaining after so long, Pansy finally couldn't help but speak. Aren't you going to give us an explanation? Mr. Thomas, don't you think you have gone too far? Cassandra also nodded in agreement. I think it's too much, too. Pansy is angry plus one five, depressed plus one six, Cassandra is angry plus seventeen, speechless plus thirteen, Malfoy hates plus one two, fears plus one five. Ha, huh, Riels, who was drinking a bowl of porridge, was startled. He raised his head and looked at the two little Lolita in confusion, and then at Malfoy, who was eating bread. He doesn't care about the latter, but the first two, this is the little angel Loli, the little god of wealth who came down to give him emotional points. I know I shouldn't eat alone. Do you believe me when I say I want to try it out for you? Ahem, mainly I'm afraid that you won't be used to plain porridge. As you know, there is no such thing in the wizarding world. Seeing the eyes of the two little girls getting colder and colder, Riels reluctantly pushed the porridge in his hand away. His reluctance was not a lie. The last time he drank white porridge was the last time, that is, before time travel. Somehow the house elf heard his wish and learned the advanced cooking skill of cooking porridge. He really only took two sips, and before he could taste the taste, he was almost scratched by the looks of two little Lolita. Pansy is speechless plus one nine, funny plus one five, Cassandra is helpless plus one six, joyful plus one three. Riels burst into tears, sure enough. They were just coveting my porridge. Panchi said coolly. You should know what we are asking. Would you believe me if I said I overslept this morning? Riel scratched the back of his head and chose a more credible reason. The two little Lolita didn't answer him, they just continued to look at him with, dead person, eyes. Obviously, Riel's reason was not enough to convince them, and of course he didn't believe it himself. Pansy is funny plus one six, Cassandra is funny, plus one three. Well, she is still the familiar card sister. Riels touched the tip of his nose. I did not lie, I did oversleep. You all went to bed when I went back last night. I thought I wouldn't disturb your dreams, so I didn't call you. I originally wanted to get up early in the morning and tell you about the half-day suspension of classes today, but I overslept, and then you will know. As soon as Riels said this, the Slytherin dining table was already there, and the little snakes all looked at him with dark circles under their eyes. The resentment in his eyes was about to overflow. Family members, who can understand? I got up early in the morning and hurried to the classroom, only to find that classes were suspended. This is nothing, but the young wizards in the other three colleges know about the suspension of classes, but they don't know what is going on. Because of this, the young wizards from the other three colleges laughed at them for a while. As a result, you now tell them that the reason for all this is that Riel's got up late. Very good, really good. Pansy's resentment plus one six, Cassandra's dissatisfaction plus seventeen, Malfoy's anger plus one nine, others' resentment plus two six six. 
Well, the little snakes are still in good spirits today. Riels nodded with satisfaction. This was the result he wanted. Was it a good start? Ignoring the looks of the little snakes wanting to eat people alive, I stretched out my hand to take two mouthfuls of rice porridge. Although this white porridge is light, it is indeed rare and delicious for him. It will not taste good when it is cold. However, before Riel's arm could even touch Bai porridge, he was grabbed by Bai Yan's little hand. Before he could react, another small white hand appeared and took away the bowl of white porridge. Riel's looked at Pansy, who was holding the porridge, with eyes splitting with excitement. I drank that, don't you think it's dirty? Little girl, can you be more hygienic? His anxious but helpless look made Pansy feel very happy. Are you saying that you are dirty? Don't worry, we don't dislike you. Didn't you say before that you would taste it for us? We don't need you to taste it, just do it yourself. In just a few words, it was hard for Riel's to refute. He never thought that Pansy would be so cruel and actually attack the poor and innocent Bai Ji with his mouth. The reason was the same one he mentioned casually before, which made him feel like he had shot himself in the foot. It is so cruel and inhumane. It is so cruel and outrageous. After all, this is the only bowl of white porridge. Riel's looked embarrassed and kept following the bowl of white porridge with his eyes, fearing that the little girl would accidentally spill it. Pansy is happy plus one nine, funny plus one eight, Cassandra is surprised plus seventeen, playful plus one eight. The system prompts made Riel's look even more embarrassed. He reached out several times to grab the porridge bowl, but Pansy dodged it deftly. It's not that he hasn't eaten before, nor is he deliberately using this method to boost his mood. It's just that the white porridge means a lot to him. This was the taste that he had missed for more than 10 years. Before entering Hogwarts, he had imagined learning Chinese food from the house elves here. This way he doesn't have to hold on to the dry bread and chew it. If he eats too much of that stuff, he won't be able to poop out the cake. You want it, but you said it was for us before. Are you lying to us? Pansy held the bowl of warm white porridge, and Chong Nose sniffed the aroma of the rice. Coupled with Rielza's current appearance, she was so happy that her eyebrows were bent. Unexpectedly, she would be able to hold Riel's one day. This feels really great. Seeing Riel's eyes following the bowl of white porridge, and the aroma of the white porridge was really tempting, Pansy lowered her head to take a sip. As soon as she took the porridge into her mouth, the smell that exploded in her mouth shocked her. This melt-in-your-mouth feeling is simply not on the same level as those hard dry breads. Now she finally understood why Riel's cared so much about this bowl of porridge. Should she say it or not, Riel's would still eat it. Pansy, who was in a good mood, started to eat happily, regardless of whether the bowl belonged to Riel's. After all, he had already drank it, so what should he be afraid of? Pansy, who had successfully brainwashed herself, became even more enthusiastic about showing off her food, and her face was almost covered by her bowl. Real Pansy, Little Angel Parkinson. She was feeling happy, but Riel's and Cassandra were about to burst. Riel's thought Pansy was just joking and would return the porridge to him after enough trouble, but she actually drank it, really drank it. And he still held the bowl and showed off vigorously, this is simply, so cool and spicy. Riel's looked at the bowl of white porridge that was about to bottom out with tears in his eyes. Cassandra was not much better, the expression on her face could not be described as wonderful. Sister, didn't you just say it was just for fun? Why are you still serious about it? In this way, Pansy and Riel's are not considered indirect. While Cassandra was shocked, she also became very curious about the bowl of white porridge. How fragrant is this food for Pansy to eat like this? You must know that Pansy is the eldest lady of a pure blood family. What delicious food has she not eaten? But this bowl of white porridge can make her lose her composure. What is the special magic power of this white porridge? Pansy was extremely happy and revealed the reward, 500 gold galleons. Cassandra doubts plus 1-8, doubts plus 1-6. A mere 500 gold galleons and an emotional value of more than 30 points, how can it be compared with that bowl of white porridge? This is incomparable at all. What is white porridge but not white porridge? Please don't come to me, I'm afraid that my gold galleons and emotional value will be misunderstood. Riel's has regained his composure now. It's just a bowl of white porridge. If you have it today, you will have it tomorrow. In comparison, 
the emotional value is more reliable. However, seeing Pansy devouring her food, Riels couldn't help but remind her, I think it would be better if you drink it slowly, and no one will compete with you. Oh, by the way, the temperature on top of this thing may be just right, but the bottom may burn, your mouth. Before he could finish his words of reminder, Pansy was already slandered so harshly that she almost threw the bowl away. Pansy had tears in her eyes and said with her tongue hanging out, isn't torture enough? Pansy is angry plus 17, feels wrong plus 15, and Cassandra is funny plus 16. In response, Riel's just blinked and silently broke out half of the dry bread and handed it over. Pansy quickly took it and stuffed it into her mouth to relieve her burnt tongue. After the identification, Pansy is still the same garden girl who is sometimes smart and sometimes not. While the three of them were having a warm interaction, an inappropriate voice suddenly sounded. Look, our hidden prefect is so mean-spirited that he makes us turn into clowns when we wake up early without feeling any guilt at all. Are you worthy of being our hidden prefect? You dirty. Malfoy originally wanted to scold the mudblood, but then he remembered Riel's atrocities yesterday, and the mudblood held it in his mouth for a long time, and in the end he only said, fool. After saying this, he took a very cautious step back, almost knocking down Boyle and Crab who were supporting him. Malfoy's fear plus 13, expectation plus 17, others gloating plus 51, funny plus 43, resentment plus 111. Well, another basic 10 consecutive lashes are coming soon. Needless to say, this little snake is awesome. Riel's was originally in a bad mood, but at this moment it became clear again. Life is always full of ups and downs. One second you are very sad, and the next second you are extremely excited. It seems that Mr. Malfoy's injury has recovered. I thought you would have to stay in bed today. Actually, I made a measured move. I originally guaranteed that you would recover today, but the way your two little followers threw you out was really not what I expected. Riels shook his head helplessly. Man is not as good as God, so you have to understand me. This was not said to deceive Malfoy. He had indeed calculated it when he took action yesterday afternoon. It would make sure that Malfoy was in a coma all night and could get up before noon the next day to complete the duel. Even if he couldn't get up, it didn't make any difference, as long as he wasn't the one doing the duel. But again, to bully a person like Malfoy, if you torture his body, it is far less effective than trampling on his mind and humiliating his soul. As long as Malfoy ignites the hope of revenge and then stamps out the fire of hope before his eyes, this is the real pain. Don't you want revenge? I gave you a chance to take revenge. Just when you thought the big revenge was avenged, I started a big fight with my backhand. I asked you how you felt. Heaven fell into hell, that's all. Malfoy is shocked plus one four, suspicious plus one one, resentment plus one six, others are funny plus three six, resentment plus two four. Malfoy glared at Goyle and Crab fiercely. Seeing that their eyes were evasive, how could he not know whether the matter was true or not? but he can still distinguish the priorities clearly. How can the small mistakes of these two idiots be compared with Riel's deep hatred? First avenge Riel's for insulting him, and then teach these two idiot followers a lesson later. Malfoy, who had figured this out clearly, raised his head and assumed a proud posture, Riel's, don't forget our agreement. I didn't eat enough yesterday afternoon. Today at noon I will let you know how big the gap between muggles and purebloods is. I'll give you a chance to eat a little full, so that you don't have to find excuses for losing. I happen to forget to take my wand. I'll go back and get it, so you can stop running away. After saying the cruel words, Malfoy walked out of the banquet hall with the support of two young followers. He seemed to mean to let others know what he said. He said it very loudly, so that all the little wizards could hear it clearly. There was silence in the banquet hall for a moment, and then the discussion among the young wizards erupted. Both the young wizards in that academy were very excited, even if they had guessed the result, it was likely that the scene from yesterday and next year would reappear. But I can't help but think that this melon is so delicious. Especially after a meal. Bread and the like are just to quell hunger, but eating melon is different, it is spiritual food. Malfoy's expectation plus 19, resentment plus 16, others curiosity plus 113, Doubt plus 154, resentment plus 99. Oh ho, I got the first elementary 10 consecutive draws today. 
Riels raised the corners of his lips, ignored the comments of the little wizards and the glances they cast from time to time, and gnawed on the chicken legs with relish. He had a hunch that today would definitely be the first time he had achieved success since entering the wizarding world. Have the most fulfilling day. Of course, this is after adding his gains in the early morning. Aren't you worried at all? Malfoy obviously has some trump cards. I don't think he is an idiot. Cassandra changed her words. Of course she's not smart either. The Malfoy in her eyes was not only arrogant but incompetent, but also impulsive and irritable. He really didn't look like a Slytherin. Not to mention that his arrogance is in line with the qualities of a Slytherin, this is complete nonsense. Slytherin has never respected pride from the beginning. This is a misunderstanding. The reason why people have this illusion is just because most of the little snakes are pure blood, and they have a natural sense of arrogance and feel that they are superior to others. Gradually, arrogance became synonymous with Slytherin snakes. In fact, it is not the case. Being ambitious, shrewd, paying attention to honor, sizing up the situation, protecting oneself wisely, and winning first, these are the qualities that Slytherin admires. Among these items, Malfoy is a person who is a bit ambitious and values honor, and none of the others are related. Della, Malfoy is actually not a bad person by nature. He was just led astray by Uncle Lucius, but I think you should be more careful. Malfoy probably found someone to use transfiguration to pretend to be him, and then dueled you. This person is probably a senior wizard. Pansy paused and continued. I know you are confident, but being too confident is not a good thing. If things exceed your expectations, it will be troublesome. The past few days of getting along with each other have allowed them to know who Riels is, a very confident person, well, it feels like he is a bit overconfident sometimes. This is not a good thing. People who are too confident will eventually be destroyed by their confidence. Pansy is worried plus one eight, Cassandra is helpless plus nine, worried plus one three. What are these two little girls thinking about? Riels looked at them a few times in confusion. What is overconfidence that is not a good thing? How did they see that he was too confident? Is it just because of Malfoy? He is indeed very confident. Riels is both angry and funny, but there is a warm current in his heart. He should say it or not, but the little angel is a little angel, and he can always strike people unexpectedly. This is a knife that is gentle and does not hurt, yet cuts deep into the skin and penetrates into the human world. Do you think I'm stupid? With Malfoy's bearish look, anyone can guess that he wants to find someone to fight for him, but why should he fight if he wants to fight instead? Riel smiled and took two bites of chicken legs, and said vaguely, whether you can beat it or not, you will know after you beat it. Isn't it easy for him to take care of Malfoy? So what if he hires for an aid? With the magic spells he knows now, and the magic power reserves in his body, it is not impossible to compete with some adult wizards. Not to mention a little wizard who hasn't graduated yet. Unless Malfoy could summon a dozen sixth grade wizards to beat him together, he really didn't think he would lose. However, his confidence is not blind confidence, but comes from his current strength. What is the purpose of trying to become stronger? To protect yourself, indeed, but this is only one of the reasons. Rather than pretending to be a pig and eating a tiger, he prefers to hit him with one punch to avoid hundreds of punches. You should feel good when you feel good, otherwise what's the point of becoming stronger? Being provoked by a flying dragon riding in the face, and then getting slapped in the face again. When the time comes, the little wizards will be frightened. If he casually hooks up with two people and invites them to a duel, he can get a lot of emotional value. Who will bother with the emotional value of ha 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 at that time? You can't use it up, you can't use up the emotional value at all. Gee. Just thinking about those days makes me feel that life is even more promising. Riel shook his head and stopped thinking about it. He was afraid that if he continued to think about it, his current life would be boring. Have you seen it a long time ago? No, you have known about this a long time ago. You had to duel with Malfoy yesterday afternoon because you expected that the person you were dueling with today would not be Malfoy. Pansy frowned and continued to speculate. So that duel was just because you wanted to teach Malfoy a lesson. But why do you want to continue today's duel? Does it mean anything? Cassandra could also think of things that Pansy could figure out, but she also couldn't figure out what Riel's purpose was in continuing today's duel. 
it couldn't possibly be that he was curious about who the powerful foreign aid Malfoy had invited, right? This, really seems like something Riels would do. Pansy was extremely shocked and revealed the reward, grinning and cheering. Cassandra was confused plus one one, surprised plus one eight, speechless plus nine. How many? In the corridor outside the banquet hall. Lunchtime has not yet passed, but the little wizards would rather stand on the corridor and chew on dry bread than go back to eat chicken legs. If you don't eat one meal, you won't die of hunger, but if you miss this spiritual food, you won't know when the next meal will be. Dumbledore is funny plus one two, Snape is displeased plus one one, others are excited plus 333, expect plus two nine, sympathize plus 55, worry plus four two. Old bees and old bats. Riels glanced around, but didn't find these two people. After a second thought, he understood. These two people either used the disillusionment curse, or they were hiding somewhere hard to find. Why don't you watch it openly? One of these two people is the principal and the other is the dean. Can they still fight in this duel? But from this point, he also keenly captured a piece of information. Malfoy didn't lie. Dumbledore nodded to the duel, but what was his purpose? According to Dumbledore's status, he will not be afraid of the Malfoy family, let alone compromise because of it. There must be a reason for him to do this. Riels rubbed his chin and lowered his eyes in thought. Judging from this, Dumbledore may have observed him already. But this is normal. After all, it would be strange for those things he did during the sorting ceremony not to be observed. But there was one thing he didn't quite understand. What was Dumbledore's purpose in doing this? Mr. Thomas, do you want to give up? A somewhat delicate but deliberately rough voice brought Riel's back to his thoughts, and he turned to look at the person who spoke. Then, he froze. He knew that Malfoy had found a goon to fight for him, and he also thought that the other party would use a transformation spell to look like Malfoy or dress up like him. But he really didn't expect that Malfoy would find a woman. The most important thing is that he still knows this person. Not only Riel's was stunned, but the other little wizards were also stunned. They all looked at this man who was more than 1.7 meters tall, wearing a Slytherin wizard robe and a platinum wig. Malfoy. At this moment, they suddenly felt that their intelligence was being insulted. You say this person with a curved front and back, a delicate appearance is a Malfoy. Do you really think they are blind? Even if you don't use the transformation spell, you should at least find a man to do it. Dumbledore and Snape, who were hiding in the dark, looked at each other. The former was grinning from ear to ear, while the latter's face was so cold it could freeze a popsicle. Gemma is ashamed plus one nine, helpless plus one eight, Dumbledore is funny plus one six, Snape is displeased plus one nine, others are helpless plus eight two, worried plus five six. That's right, the person here is Gemma. Gemma Farley, the hidden prefect of Slytherin's fifth year. That young lady with a good figure and a pretty face. Riel's was really speechless. It wasn't that he couldn't beat him, but he was just pretending not to notice. If he really does this, I'm afraid there will be news at Hogwarts tomorrow that he is so blind that he can no longer distinguish between men and women, right? Mr. Thomas, what's wrong? Are you scared? If you are scared, just admit defeat. Gemma pretended to be arrogant, folded her arms, and bullied two unstoppable conspicuous bags. In fact, she was helpless, but the situation forced her to have no other choice. Now she just hopes that Riel's can just admit defeat so that she doesn't have to be watched here anymore. Gemma expects plus one eight, shames plus one six, Malfoy gets excited plus one eight, expects plus one nine, others are funny plus one hundred twenty three, sympathy plus nine two. Where is Malfoy? Come out, I promise I won't beat you to death. Can't he find a suitable, thug? How can he pretend that he can't find it? Does he really think that everyone is blind and face blind? Even if you are really face blind, you can still see the problem with this figure, right? The corners of Riel's lips twitched a few times. Senior Gemma, I'm very happy that you are willing to duel with me and point out my shortcomings. Really, I'm so happy that I don't want to give it up. I originally thought that Malfoy would find someone, but I didn't expect that it would be Gemma Farley, and her outfit was so, explosive. When things got to this point, he simply stopped pretending. If he didn't even pretend, let's show off his cards. Anyway, it didn't make much difference to him whether he was pretending or not. 
he just wanted to dash Malfoy's hopes. Revealing the answer would also allow Malfoy to stamp out Malfoy's hopes. Gemma was so ashamed that she revealed the reward, restored as before. Dumbledore is happy plus one nine, Snape is angry plus one eight, Malfoy is panic plus one nine, others are funny plus one nine eight, curiosity plus six seven. Oh ho, has it been shipped? Riel's was still in an unhappy mood, but he suddenly felt better. Although it is just restored as before, the magic spell of free prostitution is always extra sweet and makes people feel relaxed and happy. You. Dot you. I. I. Dot him. Gemma was so ashamed that she almost cried. She stammered for a long time and couldn't say a complete sentence. Merlin's beard, why did she have to go through this? Just kill her. Really, she really doesn't want to live anymore, she can just die. Senior Gemma, what's wrong with you? Is it because this wig is too ugly? I also think it's unspeakably ugly. Riels waved his wand and whispered, levitation spell. Gemma was startled, thinking that Riels was not ethical and wanted to attack her. But just as she took out her wand and had time to fight back, Jingju's head suddenly cleared, and her short golden hair floated past her, falling straight into the trash can not far away. Gemma was stunned, then reached out and touched the top of her head, and found that the platinum blonde wig must have been, missing. Senior Gemma, please have a better aesthetic. This ugly hairstyle is only suitable for certain people and does not suit you. Senior Gemma, don't you want to teach me about magic spells? Come on, I also made an appointment with Malfoy for a duel. He went to get his wand and should be back soon. As soon as these words came out, Malfoy in the crowd suddenly widened his eyes in horror. Regardless of the support of the two young followers, he turned around and wanted to ask the question. Devil, Riel's is the devil. Run quickly, he will die if he doesn't run, he will really die. However, as soon as he turned around, he heard Riel speak again, and the words he said made him freeze in place. Although I don't want to duel with him, Malfoy must duel, and I can understand it, after all, it is for the glory of the family. Since we have agreed to a duel, Malfoy must keep the appointment. This is a clear representative of our Slytherin's emphasis on honor. It's really funny, do you really think that it will be over after just one beating? Originally, he didn't plan to hit Malfoy today. He wanted to give Malfoy a sick day, but Malfoy got into trouble. Okay, okay, this is just treating them as blind people, right? Great. Today's highs and lows are enough to make Malfoy see blood, so give him some time to remember. Malfoy was horrified and revealed the reward, 10,000 gold galleons. Gemma is sympathetic plus 8, happy plus 13, Dumbledore is funny plus 1 9, Snape is angry plus 1 9, others are funny plus 6 7, scared plus 3 5, unhappy plus 5 9. Gee, is this a reward? It seems like there is a chance to squeeze Malfoy dry today. But if he keeps going at this speed and does it a few more times, he will almost be able to draw the second 10 level elementary draw today, even though he doesn't know how to draw the elementary level. Riel's was in a good mood, but Malfoy couldn't even cry. He could only stand there stiffly, waiting for the execution. This is nothing like what he imagined. Shouldn't it be that Riel's couldn't beat Gemma, and then he was beaten until his nose was bruised and his face was swollen, and he knelt on the ground begging for mercy. Why did things develop like this? And Gemma was dressed so similar to him, how did Riel's recognize him at a glance? Was there a spell cast on this person's eyes? Malfoy doubts plus one six, fear nineteen, Gemma gratitude plus one eight, helplessness plus one two. Well, fear is right. Don't worry, Malfoy will remember what happened today for a long time. It scared him so much that he couldn't sleep at night. Riel's was thinking of ways to use Malfoy, but Gemma couldn't wait any longer. Although it has been exposed, whether it is the steps given to her by Riel's or the pressure from Malfoy, this duel has to go on. Of course, she just wants to go through the motions now, cast two magic spells and give some instructions before withdrawing. Junior Riel's, please use the magic spell first. I can give you some pointers. She really meant what she said. Riel's was kind to her, and she could repay part of the kindness by giving her some advice. The little wizards who were still discussing in low voices stopped talking when they heard this, and turned to look at the two of them expectantly. Although the taste of this melon has changed, it is okay to eat it. 
The twisted melon is not sweet, but it quenches thirst. They happen to be really thirsty. They have to show off this bowl of spiritual food. Senior Gemma, have you forgotten something? Although I don't care about this, the proper etiquette should still be in place. The etiquette before a duel not only shows respect for the opponent, but also shows that one will take this duel seriously. That's what he really meant. It was rare to meet a good little wizard. Not counting Nose and Quirrell, they had never had a head-to-head -head confrontation. It is still unknown whether the estimated strength is accurate or not. After all, there is a gap between paper talk and reality. Gemma Farley is the hidden prefect of Slytherin's fifth grade, which means that her strength is very good, just enough for him to test the level of his own strength. Gemma was surprised plus 17, hesitated plus 1 2, others were surprised plus 200, sarcastic plus 3 4, expected plus 3 5, displeased plus 13, helpless plus 5 2. As soon as Riel said this, there was a moment of silence in the corridor, and the little wizards could all hear what he meant. In a way, he is challenging Gemma and truly launching a duel. At this moment, not only the faces of the little wizards became serious, but also Dumbledore and Snape in the dark became serious. The freshmen who have just entered the first grade challenge the old students who are about to graduate from the fifth grade. This is something that has never happened since the founding of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. If Riel's wins, then this incident will be recorded in the history of Hogwarts. Compared to Dumbledore's optimistic mood, Snape's mood was not so good, it could be said to be very bad. Originally, Riel's, a little muggle-born wizard, pushed the entire first grade of snakes, which already put some of the little snakes under a lot of pressure. If he defeated the fifth grade Yin Prefect again in a duel, he couldn't imagine what those little snakes would be like under the pressure. Some pressure can promote them to compete with each other, but if the pressure is too much, it will easily crush them. Snape said with a cold face and a low voice, Professor Dumbledore, you should think about how to regulate the emotions of the little wizards now. I'm not good at comforting them. You can't blame me for forcing them to drop out of school one by one. Hearing this, Dumbledore shook his head disapprovingly. Severus, don't do anything bad. Do you think the result will be good? Riel's is a very smart kid. You can't treat him like a kid. I believe he can handle this. As he spoke, he took out two strange flavored beans and handed them to Snape, but Snape ignored them. Dumbledore shook his head and sighed softly. I just said don't treat him like a child, right? After saying these incomprehensible words, Dumbledore flicked his fingers, and the strange flavored beans flew into his mouth accurately. Well, you're lucky, it's strawberry flavored. Snape glanced at the old naughty boy and didn't ask any questions. He just turned to look at Riel's and Gemma who had already bowed to each other and were about to start a duel. I didn't think he could create new school history. In response, Dumbledore just smiled in disbelief and did not answer. Just like if you don't eat strange flavored beans, you won't know what they taste like. If the results are not available, who can say for sure who will lose and who will win in the end? Gemma is determined plus 13, Dumbledore expects plus 17, Snape questions plus 11, others expect plus 144, Nervous plus 51, Disdain plus 31. Riel's ignored the system prompts and just looked at Gemma seriously. Gemma is the most powerful opponent he has ever encountered in a true sense. Although he is very confident, he will not underestimate her in the slightest. Estimates are only estimates after all, and everything should be subject to reality. Junior Riel's. Gemma didn't say much, but Riel's knew what she meant. Without any hesitation, Riel's raised his wand and whispered, shattered to pieces. Pure black fluorescence flashed from the top of the wand, followed by a black light shooting out very quickly. Shattering into pieces is a relatively powerful spell. He wanted to tell Gemma with this blow that he would not hold back at all, and hoped that Gemma would also use her full strength. As for whether Gemma can block Slytherin's fifth-year hidden prefect, is it possible that she doesn't have armor to protect herself? She can avoid it even if she doesn't have armor to protect her. Don't underestimate the potential of Slytherin's fifth-year hidden prefect. What's more, there are Dumbledore and Snape in the dark, and they will definitely take action if it's not appropriate. Just as he thought, Gemma raised her wand after a moment of surprise, armor for protection. The white shield phantom appeared, and it easily blocked the body and shattered bones. 
This wonderful collision made the little wizards watching the battle exclaim. They were not only surprised that Riels could display such powerful power that he could be shattered to pieces, but they were also surprised by Gemma's calm response in the face of danger. Don't think it's just their fuss, the power of breaking one's body into pieces can kill people. Shattered to pieces. Did he learn this in the restricted book area yesterday? Impossible, he learned it in one night. Magic spells cannot be cast just by knowing the spells and principles. They require learning and continuous practice to explore the path of magic. Although the body shattering spell is not an advanced spell, it cannot be mastered overnight. Compared to Snape's disbelief, Dumbledore was only slightly surprised. Severus, calm down, there is nothing incredible about this. Some people are born with more talents than others, and Merlin seems to prefer them. What others take a long time to learn, they can master in a short time. Just like your talent for potions, Sprout's talent for herbs, Minerva's talent for transfiguration, Flitwick's talent for charms. Dumbledore's words made Snape fall into silence. It is true that some people are born with more talents than others. But he still couldn't accept that Riels had mastered shattering in just one night. How talented does Riels have to be at spells? Isn't he probably the only one who can compare to him? Flitwick. Snape is shocked plus one six, complicated plus one nine, Dumbledore is happy plus seventeen, Gemma is surprised plus one six, others are shocked plus one four one, confused plus six five. The second level of ten consecutive draws is about to be completed, so he said that he has gained a lot today. Riels raised the corner of his lips, stopped paying attention to the system, and focused all his attention on the duel. This duel has just begun. Raising the wand in his hand, Riels whispered, here comes the spell. The unfamiliar spell made Gemma frown. She did not choose to release the spell immediately, but calmly observed her surroundings. When faced with an unknown curse, it would be foolish to rush into it with a curse. Snape nodded with satisfaction upon seeing this, he was a qualified wizard. Gemma is vigilant plus one six, others are curious plus six two, and doubtful plus nine four. Riels ignored the system prompts, but looked at the alert Gemma with a half smile. Riels turned his wand and said, come on. Under the puzzled gazes of the little wizards, Gemma suddenly floated out of control and rushed straight towards him. This sudden change caused an uproar among the little wizards. Is this a floating spell? Or a flying spell? They don't look alike. The floating curse, isn't it a combination of the floating curse and the flying curse? Otherwise, why is it called this name? The effect is similar to the floating curse and the flying curse. Are you kidding? Even if these two spells can really be combined, the effect is not like this. I think this is an ordinary flying spell. It's impossible. Senior Gemma is very strong. There's no reason why she can't avoid the flying curse. It's not like she deliberately cast the curse in the water. Not only were the little wizards talking a lot, but the two people in the dark also looked at each other. They are all masters of magic spells, so they can naturally see the uniqueness of the floating spell, and they also know that this is not a flying spell or a floating spell, but it really looks like a combination of two magic spells. Severus, remember what I said. Riels is a genius, don't use our vision to define him. You are his teacher. What you have to do is not to explore his secrets, but to teach him what you think is right. Teach him what you think is right. Dumbledore's words made Snape deep in thought. He was indeed a master of potions and a powerful wizard, but he was not a very good professor, and he knew this very well. Otherwise, he wouldn't have asked Dumbledore in the first place. Professor Dumbledore, I think you are right, I hope this child will not disappoint us. Looking at Riel's, Snape smiled rarely, but this smile was very stiff and looked, ugly. If young wizards saw it, they would definitely think that the sky is falling and the wizarding world is going to be destroyed. Professor Snape actually smiled, and he smiled so ugly. Dumbledore silently looked away, took out two strange flavored beans, and handed them to Snape again. It was just a habit, and he didn't think Snape would pick it up, just like before. I thought it would be the same Dumbledore as before this time, but just as he was about to take his hand back, he felt that one of the strange flavored beans in his palm was missing. Dumbledore looked at Snape with some surprise, and said with a smile, it's a great thing, isn't it? Snape nodded expressionlessly. Yeah, it's just a little too sweet. Dumbledore smiled noncommittally and flicked another strange flavored bean accurately into his mouth, 
Yes, pure milk flavor. 21. Severus, sometimes you have to try new things. I think they might bring you some different surprises. Snape did not speak, but nodded calmly. Dumbledore was not annoyed, but smiled in a good mood. The two of them just ate strange flavored beans and watched the duel between Riel's and Gemma quietly. Dumbledore expects 16, surprise plus 13, Snape curiosity plus 13, kindness plus 15, others doubt plus 132, fear plus 35, curiosity plus 96, expectation plus 53. I got the second basic 10 consecutive draws. Riel smiled a little deeper, but did not lose sight at all. His eyes were still fixed on Gemma, who was struggling in the air. The wand in his hand kept being pulled back, but soon it was pulled back by an invisible force, as if it was struggling with something. The veins on the back of his hands showed how much strength he had used. After all, Gemma is the hidden prefect of Slytherin's fifth year, and her strength cannot be underestimated. The only reason she can control her is because she doesn't know the function of the floating curse. Otherwise, regardless of whether the floating curse can be hit, she can still break free even if it is hit. But from the beginning, he never thought about winning Gemma just by relying on the Lai Fu curse. After all, Lai Fu curse is not a spell used to control people, or it is not suitable for controlling living creatures. Living creatures will struggle and will not be controlled by you, which greatly increases the difficulty of control. What's more, Gemma is still a wizard, and the prerequisite for controlling her is not to let her release the curse, otherwise the control of the curse will be easily broken. But with the help of Lai Fu curse, he has gained a good advantage, which can be said to have laid the basic conditions for victory. The duel between wizards not only compares the number and proficiency of spells, as well as the power of spells, but also a very important point, which is the information gap. Your opponent doesn't know the magic spell you've released, so he will definitely be restrained in dealing with it and won't dare to act rashly, so you have a natural advantage. This is the case for him and Gemma now. The difference in information can determine which side the balance will tilt to win. Seeing that Gemma was struggling more and more and Riel's was finding it harder and harder to control, he simply waved his wand and lifted the curse. This distance is enough. Expelliarmus. As soon as she landed, Gemma reacted quickly, turned around and released a magic spell to fight back. Her reaction speed was also within Riel's expectations. If she could become a hidden prefect, she would definitely have high caliber. Oolong came out of the hole. The Black Viper was thrown out and hit Gemma's Expelliarmus head-on. Although it didn't last long before it was knocked away, Riel's had enough time to dodge. What, why not just release a powerful magic spell to deal with the waves? Are you kidding me? There is already a gap in strength between him and Gemma, so if he wants to fight her, isn't that just out of his mind? The fifth grade wizard is already in the middle of the wizarding world, not to mention the gap in spells and experience against enemies. In this case, it's hard to fight hard. The tradition of winning on the right side of the wave will take effect here, right? The black snake lying dead at Riel's feet, whoosh. So this is why you use me as a shield. Gemma was not surprised when she missed a hit, and turned the wand without hesitation, collapse. Torn apart, the two magic spells were issued at the same time, but they did not collide with each other, but passed by, and directly hit each other. Gemma's expression changed and she wanted to escape, but it was already too late. Now she finally wants to understand why Riel's put in so much effort to control her here. All this is foreshadowing, the purpose is to shorten the distance between them so that the magic spell can hit more easily. Thinking about it this way, the own goal just now may have been part of Riel's plan, otherwise his foreshadowing would not be of much significance. After all, the distance is shortened, which also means that her spell can hit better. Thinking of this, Gemma looked at Riel's with her peripheral vision while trying to avoid being torn apart. If her guess is true, then the result of this duel will be revealed. Gemma understands plus 1-6, shocks plus 17, others are surprised plus 6-7, expect plus 100, worry plus 6-3. Riel's ignored the system, but aimed at the black snake lying dead at his feet, exerted all his strength and kicked hard, brother snake, have a good sleep, let's go. The next moment, the lying black snake turned into a perfect parabola, and under the gaze of everyone, it happened to collide with the unconscious body. At this moment, 
The entire corridor fell into silence, and Gemma weakly lowered her hand holding the wand. It was torn apart and passed her by, but it also cut off a strand of her hair. It wasn't that she had dodged, it was just that Riel's held back and deliberately missed the target. She understood this, so in this duel, dot she lost. Riel's created a miracle worthy of being recorded in the history of the school. As a first-year freshman who had just entered school a few days ago, he defeated the senior fifth-year students. This old student is also the hidden prefect of Slytherin, and one of the strongest little wizards in the fifth grade. Pa, Papa, after a brief silence, applause burst out in the corridor, as well as cheers from the little wizards. Well, the cheers of the first and second grade wizards made the senior students almost turn green in the face, especially the fifth grade, who didn't even want to applaud. Gemma was filled with admiration and revealed a reward, armor protection. Dumbledore surprise plus one nine, Snape pleasure plus one six, displeasure plus one two, others excitement plus one eight nine, annoyance plus two hundred thirty one, jealousy plus eight five. Armor protection, this time there is something really good. The level of this spell is not too high, but it can resist many spells. It can be said to be one of the spells that must be learned, a real life saving spell. With this magic spell, he no longer has to ask Brother Snake to help block the gun. There is also this emotional value, if we continue at this pace, the third elementary 10 consecutive draw will be out soon. Riel's had an indescribable smile on his face. He was not only happy because of the reward, nor just because he won the duel. Compared with these, he enjoys the feeling of this kind of duel, or in other words, the feeling of controlling the overall situation and making a big difference with a little. This is really a wonderful feeling. Riel's, Pansy shouted excitedly, holding Cassandra in her hand who was also smiling. Seeing this, Hermione also squeezed out of the crowd and ran towards Riel's. The three little Lolita gathered around Riel's and happily circled around him. Watching this scene, the senior wizards were even more worried. Even if Riel's has such a perverted talent, why is he so good with women? This gap is really, they cried to death. Severus, look at this child, I think he will be a, very philanthropic wizard in the future. Dumbledore continued with a smile, but a little charity is a good thing, isn't it? Snape looked at him speechlessly, but he could understand what he meant. If you are more fraternal, you will be much less likely to lead the way in the future. But he didn't agree with the word fraternity. Riel's was only a teenager, so what kind of, messy thoughts could he have? At most, his friends are all girls, which is normal, after all, the little snakes exclude Riel's. Professor Dumbledore, sometimes you can't use adult thinking to guess the relationship between children, otherwise it will be easy to guess wrong. After saying these words, Snape turned around and left. Wu Fang's automatic magical robes clanked, making him even more vigorous and resolute. Dumbledore was not annoyed, he just smiled and glanced at Riel's who was comforting the three little Lolita, then turned and left. He needs to go back and rest for his old bones. Junior Riel's, it seems that you are the one who taught me the magic spell, not me. You are really great, not only are you strong, but you are also very thoughtful. You are a perfect Slytherin. Gemma's face didn't show much disappointment or reluctance, but only deep admiration. The little snakes of Slytherin all have the concept of victory first. They know how to assess the situation and worship the strong. Even if Gemma didn't lose in terms of hard power, she still wasn't too unwilling. If she loses, she loses. Isn't wisdom also a kind of strength? Gemma's admiration plus one six, helplessness plus nine, Hermione's joy plus one four, Pansy's excitement plus 13, Cassandra's joy plus 1 1, others. Amazement plus 7 2, Envy plus 8 6. After Riel's comforted the three little angels who had gathered around him, he turned to Gemma and said with a smile. Senior Gemma, if possible, I think you can just call me by my name. My friends all call me that. Gemma's eyes lit up and she nodded quickly. Of course, Riel's, you can also call me by my name. I mean, we are friends. She had a very good impression of Riel's and had helped her out several times before. Now that she could become friends with him, Gemma was very happy. Gemma's joy plus 1-8, others joy plus 5-3, curiosity plus 3-1. This emotion is explosive. If he keeps going at this pace, it won't be long before he shouts that he can't finish spending it, and he can't finish it at all. 
However, Riels was happy, but he did not forget the duel with Malfoy. Again, he is a very capable person who can hold grudges. There's less than half an hour before class. If you're not full, you can go back and continue. It's not a good thing to waste food. It just so happened that Mr. Malfoy and I had an appointment for a duel. You know how much he values this duel, just as he values the glory of his family. Riels continued with a harmless smile. In order to respect the honor of the Malfoy family, I have to go to the appointment. As soon as these words came out, the little wizards all shuddered and looked sympathetically at the gloomy Malfoy. Anyone can see that Malfoy hired someone to fight for him in today's 197-day duel, but it failed. Now Malfoy is about to face Riel's revenge. Seeing this, Gemma wanted to say something several times, but couldn't. As if sensing something strange about her, Pansy's IQ took over the high ground again, and she directly reached out and dragged her and Cassandra towards the banquet hall. At the end, he didn't forget to give Hermione a look and ask her to follow him. Senior Gemma, I recommend something super delicious to you. It's really great. Hermione also wants to try it. Cassandra, you don't mind that I'm dirty, do you? Just don't mind. The three of you, the four of us will share the rest of the porridge, and we can all still have several sips. Cassandra paused when she heard this, and almost pulled out her wand and struck Pansy twice. Who said she doesn't dislike it? And is this a matter of dislike? Hermione and Gemma may not know, but she does remember that Riels drank the bowl of porridge first, and then Pansy snatched it into her mouth. Now you tell me that I should share the drink with several of them. Tell the truth, what benefits did Riels give you that are worthy of you framing us like this? Sometimes she really couldn't see through Pansy. This girl was often stupid, but sometimes she was so smart that people couldn't understand her. Just like just now, and now, my IQ was online one second, and offline the next second, it's like two people. Although she was extremely reluctant, she didn't struggle much and was just silently dragged into the banquet hall by Pansy. Before entering, she didn't forget to take a look at Riel's, who was turning Malfoy like a human propeller. Cassandra frowned, Riel's method was a bit too cruel. Malfoy was injured yesterday afternoon, and now he is so injured that he will probably have to stay in bed for a while. Couldn't he just give Malfoy a stick in the head and end the duel? But it should be said that his life foo curse is indeed very interesting. You can learn it if you have a chance. Malfoy, living bodhisattva, you are really a living bodhisattva. I have no hatred or grudge against you. Are you like this? Asterisk 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 asterisk. Malfoy was desperate and revealed the reward. 3,000 gold galleons. Cassandra's displeasure plus 1,6, others shocked plus 1,2,2 fear plus 2,3,5. 3,000 gold galleons, this can be considered a small explosion, right? Riels held the wand in one hand and kept turning it in small circles, using it to float the spell and control Malfoy to act as a propeller in the air. The other one was rubbing its chin, thinking that 3,000 gold galleons would be enough to buy cat food for how long Garfield. Garfield would last. After all, he promised Garfield that he would let her show off the cat food. Before evolving, Garfield could eat six or seven kilograms of cat food in one meal, which once made him suspect that he had some magical animal ancestry. If this was combined with Godzilla's genes, the amount of food it would eat. I don't dare to think about it, I don't even dare to think about it. If she evolves any special abilities, we can throw her into the dark forest and let her do it by herself, so that she can have enough food and clothing. If you can't evolve any special abilities, you'll have to find a good person, to provide Garfield with six meals a day. Slytherin's afternoon class was Potion's class with Hufflepuff. After one class, Riel's only gained less than 200 emotion points, and it was all from the little snakes. Today, the little snakes in Hufflepuff are still surprisingly stable, as if they are old monks who have no desires or desires. But what made him happier was that Pansy and Cassandra were very courteous to him during dinner in order to learn the magic spell. He finally enjoyed the luxurious treatment. The porridge was blown to cool down before eating, the chicken legs came without reaching out, and the pumpkin juice had to be added with sugar. Especially when Cassandra has a stiff face and acts as a humanoid feeder, you can imagine the contrast of the scene. Really, it's so rare. If you have time tomorrow, teach Hermione the Lifeu charm. Don't forget this great angel. 
In the dormitory, Riels watched over Garfield who turned into an egg while recalling what happened today. Well, you heard it right, Garfield is perverted, turned into an egg. As soon as he returned to the dormitory, he saw Shanna standing on his bed, performing acrobatics on a dome that was nearly 10 centimeters high. At that time, he was enjoying the emperor's treatment, so he was in a very good mood. After seeing the juggler, he applauded a few times to save face. It wasn't until he discovered that the giant egg seemed to be Garfield that he came to his senses and, hurriedly, rescued the perverted dot egg Garfield from Shanna's clutches. After scolding Shanna, he asked the system again and was relieved when he learned that there was no problem. Then there was nothing more. After asking about the system, he kept staring at the dome until now. It wasn't that he felt guilty and wanted to make it up to Garfield, but that Garfield had grown so much after turning into an egg that he almost covered the bed. It wasn't like he hadn't thought about kicking this egg out of bed, but the huge conscience in his heart made him restrain this impulse. There was no way he was afraid that Garfield would really evolve into Garfield and seek revenge on him. With Garfield's weight, if he had a sudden impulse in the middle of the night and stood on the bed to call for diving, his life might not be saved. Don't think Garfield can't do it, because she has already done it, which is why she can only eat 3 kilograms of cat food in one meal. This thing is rebellious, she knows how to be king. System, how long will it take for this thing to hatch? Also, have you figured out how to explain to me that a cat is a mammal and how she turned into an egg? Riel's thought for a while and continued. Don't tell me that this is due to the absorption of Godzilla genes. This was one of the reasons why he didn't immediately recognize the dome as Garfield. After all, cats are mammals, so how come they have nothing to do with Danshang? There has been a change in evolution, the incubation time is unknown, the change in situation is not caused by the system, and the system cannot explain it. Host, please rest assured that the system has been tested, Garfield's vital signs are complete, and the genes in the body are constantly evolving towards a good place. Riels felt relieved after hearing this. Although he said he had a small conscience, he was not heartless. Garfield drank the genetic fluid only after he was sure it was not dangerous. If something happened, he would still feel very guilty. After all, it was hard enough for Garfield to follow him and not have enough food and clothing. It's okay, system, check my current mood value balance. Emotional value balance. 2,983 points. Riels looked at the balance with some pain. Well, it's not Garfield's egg, it's his. This emotion is worth. Dot you stuck with me. If it was still far short of 3,000, he might not care. But he only needed 13 points of emotional points to collect 3,000 and unlock the new achievement of earning 3,000 per day, so he felt uncomfortable. Sometimes obsessive compulsive disorder is forced out, just like what he is doing now. Riels bit his nails, preparing to start deceptive negotiations and serious negotiations with the system. Let's not talk about whether you are stuck or not and my emotional value is stuck. Regarding Garfield, you can just tell me whether there is anything wrong. Putting aside the facts, are you responsible for Garfield turning into a jerk? You don't have to pretend to be dead. You know what I mean. I don't ask you to give me many good things. Just give me these 17 points of emotional value. After Riels finished speaking, he didn't get a response from the system for a long time, which made him very helpless. I even started to think about whether I should go out and find two little snakes to cause trouble. Well, I just do it if I think of it. If I suffer for others, I can't suffer for myself. If others don't go to hell, who will? Riel stood up and said to Shanna, who was squatting in the corner and thinking about her faults, Santa, this is a Garfield egg, not a ball. You can't play with her anymore. I'll go out for a moment and I'll be back soon. Before he finished speaking, he turned around and opened the door and closed the door resolutely, with the whole set of movements flowing smoothly. When Shanna heard the door closing, she turned her head and took a look, then looked at the dome on the bed. She knew it was Garfield. If Garfield wasn't Garfield, she wouldn't play with it. Who would let this cat snatch her food when it wasn't full? After pausing for a few seconds and confirming that Riel's would not come back, Shanna tentatively turned around and was about to flap her wings and go to bed to continue her juggling career. But before she could take off, she heard a roar coming from outside.
She couldn't hear what it was about, but she was still moved back immediately. The next moment, the door to the dormitory was opened, and Riels walked in with a satisfied look on his face. It's true that Goyle and Crab are just going to see Malfoy's injury. Are they so excited? And Malfoy, why are ghosts yelling and screaming in the middle of the night? People who disturb people's dreams are the most annoying. Didn't I just break two of his ribs at noon and let him work as a human propeller for half an hour? Did he act like that as soon as he saw me? Riels complained, but he was still very satisfied with the harvest of this trip. Goyle and Crab contributed more than 20 emotion points to him, and Malfoy was a real person and directly gave him a thousand gold galleons. Now he felt that relying on Malfoy's speed of exploding gold coins, it was not impossible to feed Garfield who evolved into Garfield. Well, Shanna did a good job. You can't do this again next time. Go back to the nest and rest. Seeing the well-behaved and sensible Shanna, Riels was in a good mood and directly lifted her, thinking about the fault. After all, what bad thoughts can a little owl have? It's just that it can't help but roll when it sees its balls. Gah, Shanna's eyes widened in surprise. After receiving Riel's confirmation, she flew back to her bird's nest without much hesitation. Although I no longer bully the rotten cat, it is still a good thing to be able to go back to the nest and lie down. There is still a chance for revenge, not to mention that she has already, off, all afternoon, which is already considered revenge. Riel sat back on the bed and rubbed his hands expectantly. Tongzi Chan, give me an intermediate lottery. You've already done something wrong. I hope you won't let me down again. Consume 1000 emotional points and successfully exchange for an intermediate lottery draw. Congratulations to the host for getting an unknown Pokemon egg. The next moment, an egg only a quarter of the size of a Garfield egg with spotted patterns appeared out of thin air in Riel's hand. Feeling the coolness of the Pokemon egg in his arms, Riels no longer knew how to describe his mood. This system cannot be used anymore, it is counterintuitive. I still have two intermediate draws, do you want to draw them directly for me Arceus? No, 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 how about you just pull out Mew and let it create Arceus, and then create a complete Pokemon world? With a kind smile on his face, Riels rubbed the wand, gently, and said, you are so kind, really, I am so touched. You'd better hope you never lose shape, otherwise I will let you experience the power of a, nuclear-powered, propeller, and you will be that propeller. A total of two intermediate rewards were drawn. The first time was the poke ball, which was very good. Although it was useless, he had already planned how to use it. As a result, in this second lottery, an elf egg was directly created for him. What does this mean? Are you really going to force him to change his job to become a trainer? Faced with Riel's complaints, the system still chose to pretend to be deaf and dumb, with no intention of responding at all. Riel's curled his lips and looked at the two eggs, one large and one small, worriedly. If a few more eggs come here, my dormitory will really become a hatch. You don't know when a Garfield egg will hatch, and here comes an elf egg, and you don't know when it will hatch. The normal incubation time of elf eggs is seven days, please inform the host. Warm reminder. Using an incubation device can shorten the incubation time to three days. Well, very good, this system can also learn to last hits. Riel's face was calm, he silently recited the prayer mantra in his heart, and silently wrote down a note for the system in the upper area of his notebook. It's okay if the elf egg hatches good things. If he's not satisfied with what's hatched, haha. Ha. Even if he gives up his career as a dragon knight, he still has to spend all his money to give the entire system to the avatar, so that it can experience the same fun as Malfoy. Riel's calmed down and stuffed the elf egg in his arms into the quilt. In fact, it's not that he is dissatisfied with this reward, what if this thing hatches a mythical beast, right? Even if it doesn't work out, it's okay to hatch a wife beast. The reason why he was angry was entirely because this system had a sheep-headed sheep. It's obviously something that can be drawn from all over the world, but both times it turned out to be from the Pokemon world. And the effect of what was extracted is not particularly good. Whether it is an elf ball or an elf egg, the uncertainty is too high, and it may be useless or even become a burden. The elf ball is a one-time use and will be discarded if it fails. The elf egg is unknown and what will be hatched is completely random. This is exactly the same as in a lottery. 
Riels patted the elf egg on the bed and said softly, I hope you can give me some help and hatch some elf that will be more helpful to me. I'm too stressed. Have you ever seen a library at one o'clock in the morning? I have. After explaining all his difficult conditions, Riels got a gentle shake from the elf egg in response, and his mood became much happier again. It should be said or not, little life is always pleasant, but of course there are also some unpleasant things. Tongzi Chan, we have been in love with each other for two and a half years. You also know my temper. I decided to give you another chance. I hope you can cherish it. Riels narrowed his eyes slightly and continued. An intermediate lottery, just draw it. Consume 1000 emotional points and successfully redeem an intermediate lottery. Congratulations to the host for obtaining, Horse Talisman. Horse Talisman, eliminates all abnormal external forces in the body, can achieve the miraculous effect of curing all diseases and relieve abnormal conditions. Warm reminder, the horse talisman can be dissolved in the host's body, allowing the host to passively trigger the horse talisman's ability. Um, Riels jumped up from the bed. Tongzi Chan, from now on you will be my beloved family friend, brother and sister. Looking at the round stone with the image of a horse carved in his hand, God knows how excited he is now. This is a horse charm, a real artifact. It can not only dispel harmful symptoms such as mental illness, but also eliminate all pains and injuries. It can also restore damaged materials to their full quality and restore things to their perfect state. There is also the most perverted place to eliminate all negative states. This means that with it, he will be immune to curses such as sticking a stick in his front teeth, turning everything to stone, and falling unconscious. This directly opens an immunity buff, and you are directly immune, do you understand? A horse charm can directly bring you, super self-healing, immunity to negative effects, and, repair anything to perfection. You really, I will cry to death. This is the rhythm that makes me unleash the unforgivable curse. The reason why the unforgivable curses are unforgivable is not only because their effects are extremely extreme, but also because using them will corrode the wizard's mind. Now that he has the horse talisman, he doesn't have to worry about this. Although he doesn't feel very strongly about the three unforgivable curses, who wouldn't like the taste of a child? After the excitement, Riels lay back on the bed, still holding the horse charm tightly in his hand. He didn't lie down because he was tired. The horse charm had eliminated his fatigue. He just lay down to enjoy the wonderful future. With the horse talisman, he can do more things, and the first one to do it is the basilisk. The horse talisman can remove the petrification and poison of the most troublesome basilisk, and it also gives him the capital to make mistakes. The three strongest points of the basilisk are, first, if you look directly or indirectly at it, it will also turn to stone. The second is the snake venom of the basilisk, which is a poison that can only be relieved by the tears of the phoenix. The third is its terrifying size. Just swiping its tail is enough to seriously injure someone. The existence of Tama Talisman perfectly restrains these three points. The first two are bad states and will be directly immune. The third one is even better. As long as the basilisk doesn't kill him directly, he can instantly recover all injuries through the horse charm. This also gives him the capital to make mistakes and will not let him lose his life just because of one mistake. This way, I don't need to buy a sound stone because I can record the sound of a rooster crowing. Riels rubbed his chin. You only need to exchange for parcel tongue, and then you can try to catch the basilisk. The basilisk kept by Slytherin at Hogwarts is very strong, after all, it has lived for so many years. As long as he successfully regains it, his strength will usher in a qualitative improvement. What, what does recovering the snake monster have to do with his strength? Just kidding, he is Riel's Thomas. His main job as a wizard and his side job as a master of magical beasts. Who says pets can't be part of strength? Is there such a rule in the wizarding world? Obviously not. If he is willing, he can even release the basilisk during a duel to give his opponent a big surprise. The more Riel's thought about it, the more he thought it was feasible. He no longer hesitated and said directly, system, exchange for parcel tongue for me. After thinking about it, he added, exchange it directly for a high-end one. Consume 1000 emotional points, successfully redeem ability, parcel tongue, advanced. Seeing that the emotion value once again reached double digits, Riel's just felt distressed. 
If nothing unexpected happened, this thousand emotion value could buy him a powerful bodyguard. Feeling the coolness coming from his throat, Riels opened his mouth and began to try to make a sound. Parcel tongue is a special ability between a talent and a curse. It is neither a talent nor a curse, but it is divided into levels just like talents. It can barely be regarded as a branch of the talent category, but it is sold very cheaply. The advanced ones only have 1,000 emotion points. Some people are born with parcel tongue, like Voldemort. Harry Potter's parcel tongue came from Voldemort. It is very difficult to learn this thing, and there is no way to teach it, because it is a kind of pronunciation. People who have parcel tongue don't even know how they do it, let alone teach it to others. Hiss, this advanced parcel tongue is indeed good, I don't need to learn more. After Riel's tried it, he nodded with great satisfaction, but said regretfully. If I wasn't afraid that the low-level and mid-level ones wouldn't be able to control the basilisk, I wouldn't have to change to the high-level ones. After all, that basilisk was cultivated by Slytherin and had lived for at least eight or nine hundred years. After so many years, it has not only grown in size, but also in strength. What's more, the pokeball is a one-time use and will be scrapped if it fails. He doesn't dare to gamble, and there is no need to gamble. It's not like we can't afford it. I hope the old bat can take leave, otherwise. Early morning, Headmaster Slytherin's office. When Riel's arrived, Snape was frowning and looking at a letter with the Malfoy family logo on the envelope next to it. Obviously this letter was sent by Lucius Malfoy, and the reason was simply that Malfoy was temporarily unable to take care of himself. In this regard, Riel's chose to look at his nose with his eyes and his heart with his nose, pretending not to know anything, and went straight to his topic. Professor Snape, I hope I can take a day off today, or even half a day. Upon hearing this, Snape looked away from the letter and said calmly, Reason, I need to know why you asked for leave. If possible, he really wanted to be a good professor, but the things Riel's did really made it difficult for him to get better. He left for a while yesterday. Why did Malfoy wander around in the sky for half an hour? Forget about the duel. Dumbledore agreed and he didn't say much, but couldn't Riel's knock Malfoy down with a stick? Why torture him for more than half an hour? Malfoy. Bodhisattva. Just as the female Bodhisattva left, another male Bodhisattva came. You are really living Bodhisattvas. Snape is displeased plus one five. Riel's didn't bother with the system, he just started making up things on his own, telling the reasons. Professor Snape, you know that I am not welcomed in Slytherin because of my origin and because I am a hidden prefect, so I am under a lot of pressure. Have you ever seen a library at one o'clock in the morning? Do you know what it feels like to stay up late reading at night? I know. Riel's has said this to many people, so he said it with great emotion. After all, this was a real experience, so he sneaked in to read banned books, but he had indeed seen the library at one in the morning, right? Mr. Thomas, not only have I seen the library at one o'clock in the morning, I have also read in the library all night long. In fact, that is the norm for me. If you took leave just for this reason, you can go to class now and you should still be able to catch up. After Snape finished speaking indifferently, he lowered his head and continued with the letter in his hand. He was having a headache about this matter now. It's not that he is afraid of the power of the Malfoy family, it's just that Malfoy was hurt too badly this time. If it's not handled well, Riel's will be in big trouble, which is not what he wants to see. As for the seriously injured Malfoy, he didn't care too much, and he didn't treat him differently. He just felt that Malfoy brought it all on himself. The duel was proposed by Malfoy, and Malfoy should bear the consequences himself. But Riel's did go too far. He should have knocked Malfoy unconscious with a stick and ended the duel directly instead of playing tricks on him. Malfoy. Stop it, please stop it, besides, I want purple sand. Snape is displeased plus one six. Riel's has a toothache, is this forcing him to skip class? But he is a good student, how could he do such a thing as skipping classes? Try again, if it doesn't work, then skipping class might be a good idea. With this thought in mind, Riel spoke again, Professor Snape, today's two classes are charms and potions. I have learned everything I will learn in these two classes. In fact, I have learned almost all the first year courses. I am asking for leave because my waist is uncomfortable and I need to rest. 
I hope you can approve it. Well, this is one of the reasons why he took a day off. His waist, his waist was injured, or he was uncomfortable sleeping on the sofa. Although it only hurt for a moment and was cured by the horse charm, he really didn't lie, right? Isn't a waist pain also a waist pain? Is this reasonable? It's obviously very beaver. What? Why don't you sleep on the bed? It's really because he's afraid that Garfield, who has no martial ethics, will sneak attack on him in the middle of the night and crush him to death. After hearing this, Snape looked up at Riel's again, have you learned all the first year courses? Although it was a question, his voice was calm and he seemed not surprised at all. Only a hint of imperceptible surprise flashed across his eyes. The little wizard is looking forward to his upcoming life at Hogwarts. It is not unusual for him to finish reading the textbooks in advance. This was also the case for him in the past. But that's just reading it, not learning it. Reading it and learning it have two completely different meanings. Snape is surprised plus 13, doubtful plus 1 2. The corners of Riel's lips twitched a few times, and looking at Snape who still had an unfazed expression, he didn't know what to complain about. It can only be said that Snape is absolutely professional in emotional management. No wonder he can be a double agent. Yes, I know Professor Snape may not believe it. I am happy to let you test whether I have learned everything. But that's not right now. I'll come to you tonight or at noon. Then you can ask me any questions you want to test. It doesn't matter if you are above the first grade. Riel spread his hands. What do you think of Professor Snape? This is his last bargaining chip, or his last attempt. If it doesn't work, he will choose to skip class. Kai Zesheng changed. Now the plot has changed a lot. He needs to catch the basilisk as soon as possible to improve his strength. On the other hand, he was also afraid that after Nose Nose woke up, he would remember that there was a basilisk, so he used parcel tongue to control it in advance. Then he would have lost a powerful bodyguard he carried with him. Snape surprise plus six, displeasure plus one three. Hearing the system prompt, Riel's felt a little helpless. Sure enough, he shouldn't expect the old bat to agree. He should just skip class and avoid wasting so much time here. Mr. Thomas, you can leave. I still have to deal with the mess you left me. After Snape finished speaking, he lowered his head again and stopped looking at Riel's. Riel's curled his lips, turned around and left without thinking. If he couldn't get through, he wouldn't leave. This time he thought he was here to inform Snape that he was skipping class. I don't need your approval if I skip class, right? Riel's was thinking as he walked, and when he reached the door and was about to open it and go out, Snape's cold voice came from behind him. Don't cause any more trouble. I don't want to help you deal with these things anymore. Besides, I hope you really have the ability to be worthy of what you say, otherwise. The rest of the words were not said, but Riel's already knew what it was, deducting points, punishing, and announcing criticism to the whole school. Well, it was a very common routine. But none of that mattered, because he already understood what Snape meant. Riel's turned his head with a smile and said sincerely, Don't worry, Professor Snape, I will definitely not let you down. Snape didn't react at all to his words. He didn't nod or answer, as if he didn't hear him. Riel's wasn't annoyed, and instead smiled a little more. When he went out, he closed the door of the dean's office. It doesn't matter whether the attitude is cold or indifferent, he doesn't care about that, as long as the purpose is achieved. After all, Snape is not a fairy, nor is he a crook. If Snape is too enthusiastic about him, that will be a problem. With his goal accomplished, Riel's walked towards his dormitory contentedly. He needs to prepare some things now, and then go find the basilisk and perform algorithms with it. In Dean Slytherin's room, Snape put down the letter in his hand as he listened to the footsteps gradually disappearing, his eyes becoming a little complicated. Is it when he studied all the first grade courses in advance in Diagon Alley? But it was only half a month. How did he finish them all? Does he really have extraordinary talent, or is he lying? Snape pondered for a while, and if he couldn't think of an answer, he stopped thinking about it. No matter what the outcome was, he would know the answer by tonight. Compared with this, he still has a bigger headache about Malfoy. Professor Dumbledore agreed to the duel, so he should be the one to resolve it. Thinking of this, Snape directly picked up the letter, walked out of the dean's office, and went straight to the principal's office. 
It's not easy for him to solve this problem, so let's leave it to Dumbledore to have a headache. Snape doubts plus 13, surprise plus 9. Riels didn't even stop, ignoring the system prompts. Are you kidding me? We have seen the big world, how could we still be distracted by these three melons and dates? Even if the emotion value is doubled several times, he will not stop for a moment. It is only a few hundred emotion values. Can it be compared with the powerful bodyguard he is about to get? Obviously there is no comparison. Riels was in a good mood and looked at his surroundings while walking. The basilisk has been kept in a secret chamber, which was built before Slytherin was expelled. After he was expelled, the secret chamber was only used to keep the basilisk. If I remember correctly, the way to the secret room is a secret door or a series of pipes. But the pipelines in Hogwarts have been changed, and I don't want to climb the pipes, so the only way to enter the secret room is. Riels paused, turned and walked towards the Slytherin toilet. That's right, it's the toilet. Of course he is not a pervert, but the passage to the secret room is in the toilet. When the Hogwarts pipeline was rerouted, a student named Corvinus Gaunt used a spell to hide the passage. This Corvinus is not only a direct descendant of Slytherin, but also the ancestor of Nose. This is why Nose knows the secret chamber and can control the basilisk. Originally, when the pipeline was rerouted, it happened to pass through the secret room, which would definitely damage the passage. It is also because of the existence of Corvinus that the passage to the secret room has been preserved. Not long after, Riels arrived in the toilet. To be precise, he stood in front of the toilet and hesitated. The men's restroom is on the left and the women's restroom is on the right. Now, is the trap door leading to the secret room on the left or the right? I don't really want to enter the women's bathroom, do I? Is this fate? I tricked Harry Potter into entering the women's bathroom before, and now I have to follow him in. The corners of Riel's lips couldn't stop twitching, and his eyes kept scanning the doors on the left and right. After thinking for a while, he still chose the men's room. He was betting, not on his own luck. But I'm betting that Slytherin isn't a pervert. It's a magic academy after all, so there's no bad smell in the toilet, of course it's just not pleasant. The layout of Slytherin's toilet is very simple, just like a normal toilet. After Riel's entered, he didn't just look around from cubicle to cubicle, but looked around and recalled the records in his mind. When Slytherin was expelled, it was decided that only people who could speak snake pig accents or their own descendants would be allowed to enter and control the basilisk in the Chamber of Secrets. Later, the trap door was enchanted, and it can still be entered through Parseltongue. Of course, you can enter if you know the location of the passage. That would be much easier. After recalling and confirming the good method, Riel started to try it. His lips were slightly opened, and the sound of, hiss, his came out, like the hissing of thousands of snakes, which made the hairs of those who heard it stand on end. Riel's neighed while looking around at the changes in the toilet. Soon, he saw a light on the sink, dark green, and it looked like Slytherin's handiwork. Riels continued to neigh, took out his wand and walked slowly towards the light. As he continued to approach, the dark green light seemed to sense something. With a, boom, sound, the sink slowly sank into the wall, and the wall began to move to both sides, just like the one in Diagon Alley. Not long after, a dark passage for one person to enter appeared in front of Riels. He stopped neighing, and the ever-expanding passage also stopped, as if controlled by the neighing sound. Fluorescence. The tip of the wand lit up, illuminating the dark passage a little. Riels looked back cautiously, and after confirming that no one was there, he quickly walked into the passage without much hesitation. As he entered, the passage began to slowly recover, and soon it returned to its previous appearance as an ordinary sink. I don't have much time. I have to get out before the snakes come back, otherwise I might have to spend the night here. Riels covered his nose and endured the stench that came from him. It was not coming from something dirty. It's the smell of something rotten, coupled with the unique fishy smell of snakes, the combination of the two creates a super pungent fishy smell. It seems that if you catch it, you have to find a way to give it a bath. Otherwise, can you bear it? Just in time, I'll go back tonight and ask Professor Snape for the recipe for shampoo. I'll probably need it if I put down those pots of bubble pods. Plants can't survive without sunlight. Riels diverted his attention and quickly approached inside. 
Why distract instead of focus? Just kidding, if he had been paying attention, he would have turned around and run back by now. Really, this little taste is too good. I don't know how long they walked, but just when Riel's was about to lose his strength and run away before the victory was over, the narrow passage gradually changed. There was a chance of light coming from the front, and it was accompanied by a smell similar to the sea, well, fishy. I don't know if it's because Riel's got used to the pungent smell before, or because the smell has really dissipated a lot. At this moment, he actually felt that, it didn't smell so bad anymore. Of course, it didn't smell that good either. But this made him vigilant. This change could only mean that the secret room had arrived, which also meant that the basilisk was not far away from him. I hope I can get it, otherwise I will have to find a way to kill it, so that I don't have a nose to control it and do things. 17. His horse charm is not afraid of the petrification and poison of the basilisk, but the three little angels are not, although he can help remove it. But what if he doesn't have time? What about the three little angels? So when he came this time, he not only wanted to catch the basilisk, but also wanted to kill it if he couldn't catch it. If he doesn't get it, he will destroy it. That's how he behaves. The smell gets lighter as we go inside. There should be ventilation in the secret room. The smell is strong in the passage, maybe because the entrance is blocked and the smell is blocked. Riel's dispersed the fluorescent light and carefully observed the secret room. The space in the secret room is very large. It must have been casted by a traceless telescopic spell. The decoration is also very old. It seems that no one has been in for a long time. It is worth mentioning that above the secret room, Slytherin used some method to make a skylight to bring in the sunlight from outside. In the middle of the secret room, there is a large circular hole several meters high. It is pitch black inside and not a ray of light shines in. Obviously, the cave that had been enchanted was the nest where the basilisk was created. Although it is different from the secret room in my impression, it does not affect my transformation into a little paradise. Well, a little paradise for magical animals. He is the man who wants to become the master of fantastic beasts. Although it is just a side job, others will never understand the world of collecting. After he collects all kinds of magical animals, and then uses the traceless telescopic spell to expand the secret room, he can raise magical animals in Hogwarts, uprightly. When the three little angels grow up, you can bring them here to have fun together. Don't get me wrong, it's the kind of fun you think of. Of course, what he said will have to wait until he grows up, or at least until he reaches adulthood. He is a good wizard who abides by the law. After Riel's looked at the layout of the secret room, he had already figured out how to use the secret room. It's still daytime, the basilisk should be sleeping, and it won't wake up until night to hunt. This also means that the basilisk is still sleeping, no, that's not right. This basilisk is very powerful. I'm afraid it will have captured my information as soon as I come in, which means it has woken up. After thinking about this, Riel's expression changed, he quickly took out his wand and looked around with great vigilance. As if to respond to his guess, the entire secret room began to tremble, and a strong bloody smell spread. Hiss. Before the snake arrived, the sound came first, and its harsh roar echoed throughout the chamber. Riel's did not dare to neglect, and took a few steps back vigilantly, his eyes just staring at the dark hole where nothing could be seen clearly. The next moment, a pair of vertical pupils emitting red light appeared in the dark hole, the size of which was the same as two rubber balls. Just by looking at those scarlet vertical pupils, Riel's felt a thorn in his back, and the hairs all over his body stood on end. Just as he was about to take a few steps back to distance himself, he felt that his feet were extremely stiff. When he looked down, he realized that his feet had turned into stone. But it only took a moment for the effect of the horse charm to appear, and the petrified feet quickly returned to their original state. Riel's took a long breath and said secretly, what a risk. Without the horse talisman, he might have fallen here this time. He had calculated so much, but he had forgotten to calculate his reaction when facing such a behemoth. That is human nature and cannot be changed easily. Although he has lived two lives, there is still no way to avoid it. What's more, in his previous life, he was not a werewolf, just an ordinary social animal who could jump two meters high when seeing a snake. Now that he was rashly facing such a thick, big spicy stick, his eyes were full of violence and murderous intent.
It was only right that he should have this reaction. Hiss. The basilisk seems to understand that Riel's cannot be turned to stone, so it no longer hides, a huge snake head sticking out of the hole. The mouth full of fangs and the few small horns standing on top of its head make the already huge snake head look even more ferocious and terrifying. This body shape is indeed a bit beyond my expectations. Riel's held the wand and looked at the basilisk leaning out three-thirds of its body with great vigilance. Why is it three-quarters of a body? He doesn't know how long the basilisk is, but as of now, a large part of the basilisk's body has not yet come out. The reason is also very simple. The space here is too small. The bodies stretched out by the basilisk are four or five meters long, which already takes up a lot of space. Obviously this basilisk is also a smart person, knowing that leaning out more will affect its actions. Hiss. Seeing Riel's delay in moving, the basilisk seemed to be impatient with the weight, and roared again, spraying purple poisonous mist from its mouth. Well, with this pungent fishy smell, Riel seriously suspected that it was the bad breath of the basilisk. Man, what are you doing? And don't you know you have bad breath? Can you pay attention to your hygiene? Riel's complained, but was not afraid at all. He just covered his mouth and nose with his sleeves to block the pungent smell. With the horse talisman, he is not afraid of the petrification and venom of the basilisk. And what surprised him a little was that the size of the space here made it impossible for the basilisk to spread out. This also means that the only effective attack the basilisk can have on him is to bite him with its bloody mouth. But he wouldn't just stand here and let the basilisk eat him. Therefore, the basilisk's last effective attack did not pose a threat to him. Bad news, I miscalculated the basilisk's deterrence. If I rush in rashly, I will definitely fall here and die without a burial place. Good news, my horse charm perfectly restrains all the attacks of the basilisk. I am invincible by nature. Riel's murmured something half serious, half joking. What happened this time made him remember a lot. This is not a game, or a dungeon where you think you can pass the level perfectly with any equipment. This is reality. No matter how many factors are considered, accidents will still occur in actual operations. And these accidents may directly cost you your life. He who suffers a hardship may gain wisdom or die. It seems that I'm lucky. I gained wisdom instead of dying. If this is the case, then nothing will happen to you and you will become one of my trump cards. Riels took out the elf ball and looked into the basilisk's humanized and confused eyes without hesitation. His body would show signs of petrification from time to time, but they would disappear in an instant. Before the basilisk could figure out why Riels was immune to petrification and snake venom. Then he heard a neighing sound, and with that familiar tone, its uncontrollable ferocity gradually faded away, and its scarlet vertical pupils also turned to golden yellow. As Riels, Parcelmouth voice became louder and louder, the basilisk's huge head involuntarily fell to the ground and looked at him obediently, as if it was completely under control. But Riels didn't throw the elf ball, but kept raising his parcelmouth voice, and didn't move any further. He had just gained a memory, and he would not be so foolish as to act recklessly. And if you use parcel tongue for a while, it's just a waste of saliva, and you won't lose anything. There is only one elf ball. If it fails, then this perfect, bodyguard, will be missed. He even had to think of a way to kill this basilisk here. Hiss. The basilisk spit out the serpentine and looked at Riel's meekly. The scarlet in the vertical pupils had completely dissipated and was replaced by golden yellow. Owner. Ha. Wakao. Yaosho, I think I heard the basilisk speak. This time, master, he almost got by Riel's and his cerebellum shrank. After thinking about it, he understood what was going on. Parcel tongue can be understood as an accent that can speak words that snakes can understand, which means that humans can also hear what snakes say. With 1000 emotion points, he was given such an ability. This is really, very cool. But then I thought about it, what did he say when he spoke in parcel tongue for so long? If he said something, incomprehensible and the basilisk heard it, then he would feel it necessary to destroy the body and eliminate all traces. Just kidding, this basilisk is his, big treasure. How could he bear to hurt it? The neighing in Riel's mouth paused for a moment, and he tried to speak in snake language, I am your master, and you don't want to play with anything I do to you. Think about how long you have been here. 
how many people have come to see you? Apart from your master, who else would come in and want to take you away? You're just a little basilisk that's eight or nine hundred years old, and you're still a baby. Plus, you've always been a snake at home, so you have no idea how dangerous it is out there. Let me tell you, there are big roosters everywhere outside, the kind that can crow. They are very cruel. They will eat several little basilisks like you in one meal. Although it is his first time to poo the basilisk, he is confident that he will succeed. It's not that he is confident in his pua skills, it's just that he believes in the gold content of advanced parcel tongue. Sure enough, after hearing his words, the basilisk suddenly looked frightened. Subconsciously, I wanted to stick my head out and get closer to Riel's to seek shelter, but Riel's definitely refused. To tell you something, this basilisk hasn't had a bath yet, and he doesn't like the fishy smell. The rejected basilisk lay on the ground in grievance, its huge head turned to one side, as if it was unhappy and waiting for comfort. Looking at Riel's golden vertical pupils from time to time also proves these ten points. In this regard, Riel said very coldly and ruthlessly that if the children are disobedient, they are probably used to it, so just scare them more. So he started his pua business again, frightening this 800 to 900 year old baby basilisk to shrink back. If Riel's hadn't allowed it, it would have retreated into its nest. Seeing that it was almost done, the basilisk might be broken if the pua continued, Riel's changed his mind. Instead of telling the horrible fact that there are big cocks everywhere outside, he started to brag about himself. Your master, I have to eat eight chicken legs in one meal. A big rooster only has two chicken legs. This means that I have to kill four big roosters in one meal. I've eaten all the big cocks out there and they're almost extinct. I've gained a lot of weight for you. You must listen to me in the future to be worthy of my efforts. No problem, he can indeed eat eight chicken legs in one meal, but they are all small chicken legs. As for whether they are rooster legs, he is only responsible for eating them and does not know anything else. But there's nothing wrong with just treating those as rooster legs, right? So what he said was all the truth, and there was no falsehood at all. Hiss, master is so awesome, no wonder he can look at me and is immune to my snake venom. This must be the result of eating those cruel big cocks. Master, don't worry, if you let me dig a hole in the future, I will never make it big. I will feed you whatever I find to eat first. There is humanized worship in the basilisk's vertical pupils, as if it has seen a god. No, Riel's is a god. That is a terrifying big rooster the kind that can eat several basilisks in one meal, and can kill several basilisks with just one cry. But when these big roosters get to Riel's, they can only be turned into food. You have to kill four big roosters in one meal to be full. What is this if not the god who saves the basilisk? Well, I believe in your sincerity. If that's the case, then you can come with me. Don't worry, as long as I protect you, those big roosters are just ants. Don't resist me, otherwise I will be angry. Riel's eyes widened, as if he was really angry, really. The little basilisk, who is only eight or nine hundred years old has seen this battle before. He was immediately frightened and lay on the ground without daring to move, and made a submissive hissing sound from his mouth. Seeing this, Riel's threw the elf ball with great satisfaction. When the elf ball collided with the basilisk, although the basilisk was confused, it was obedient and did not move. The elf ball exploded, and a red light shot out, wrapping the basilisk's body. The next moment, the red light was taken back into the ball along with the basilisk's huge body. The elf ball also fell to the ground and began to flash continuously. The button lit up and went out, and the elf ball also kept shaking with the red light. Even though he had already succumbed to the basilisk, Riel's was still a little nervous. There is no way, the basilisk is too strong, and the elf ball will explode if you just struggle. When the time comes, he can only bear the pain and kill this little basilisk who is only eight or nine hundred years old. Fortunately, his pua and advanced parcel mouth skills were very powerful, and the pokeball only shook a few times and then stopped shaking. The flashing red light also suddenly went out, and only a crisp sound of, bang, echoed in the secret room. This is not the basilisk breaking away from the elf ball, but the sound of a successful recovery of the elf ball. 
Seeing this, Riels didn't even use the magic spell and ran forward quickly to pick up the elf ball. I recovered the basilisk. Well, it's just as I thought, this action is really, very cool. Anyway, there is no one else in the secret room. If he says this action is cool, then it is cool. Can anyone else refute it? But should I say it, it was really a fun and enjoyable pua. You may be wondering why he wanted to pua a basilisk. The reason is simple, he is not the only one who can speak Parseltongue, there is also Harry Potter and no nose. He must nip it in the bud and make the basilisk choose to listen to him without hesitation even if it is tempted by three people at the same time. Although it is not yet possible to make the basilisk absolutely loyal. But he believed that it wouldn't be long before the basilisk would be wiped out of Slytherin's mark and completely change into his shape. With the basilisk, I feel like I'm carrying the wind when I walk. I'm the brightest kid in Hogwarts. No wonder Professor Snape's cloak can automatically move without wind. I thought it was the power of farts that cast the spell, but now it seems that it's just too much power. He believed that if he put a magic robe on his back now, the magic robe would definitely fly higher than Snape's. There is no way, this is, hard power. Based on the time, I should be able to take a shower when I go back now, look at Garfield eggs and elf eggs, and then go have lunch. I won't go to class in the afternoon. The Garfield egg might hatch soon. If it hatches while I'm away, we'll be in trouble if something happens. Riel's had a poke ball hanging around his neck, covering his nose as he rushed out, while also using a diversionary technique. But he prefers to call it, plan ahead and be a prepared man. Soon, Riel's rushed out of the passage he came from, with the stench hitting his forehead. If we renovate the secret room in the future, we will have to build a new entrance. Every time we come out, it will be the toilet. Regardless of whether it is exposed or not, the diaphragm will be enough to bear. The secret room was built by Slytherin. It is well secret and safe, except that the entrance is difficult to find and there is an indescribable smell inside. Nothing else can be faulted. When he learns the traceless telescopic spell in the future, he can try to change this secret room and make it his secret base, well, his comfort zone. Of course, his original idea will not change. Using a secret room to raise magical animals is definitely a great idea. However, the invisible telescopic spell alone may not be enough. Hogwarts Castle itself is a magic prop, and every brick and tile of it has been enchanted. If you have time, you can fool, talk to Professor Dumbledore. I should be able to get him to help me transform the Chamber of Secrets. Hogwarts Castle, a magical building built by four powerful wizards. In the entire wizarding world, Dumbledore is probably the only one who can control Hogwarts Castle. It's not because of how powerful Dumbledore is, but because of his identity as the principal of Hogwarts. Only the principal of Hogwarts has the right to change the buildings of Hogwarts. This is the rule set by those four. Unless you are stronger than those four people combined and can break this rule, but the secret room was secretly built by Slytherin. This means that you only need to be stronger than Slytherin himself to use the traceless telescopic charm on the Chamber of Secrets. So, he chose to fool Dumbledore. It's so funny, the strength of those four people, individually, is stronger than Lao Jungtu. Not to mention that he can't even do a head-to-head -head move with Lao Jung now, so how can he compete? There's no comparison at all. Unless he is willing to wait, relying on the system, his strength is improving rapidly. If calculated at the normal speed. In another three or four years, he will be able to fight with Dumbledore. Then wait another two or three years, and by the time he is about to graduate, he should be able to easily defeat Slytherin. Well, that's pretty much it. When the time comes, he will go to the wizarding world to enjoy himself, will he still care about this secret room? Forget it, this matter can't be rushed. Let's wait until we find the opportunity. Let's take a shower first and go back to look at the Garfield eggs and elf eggs, so that Xana won't practice juggling secretly. He doesn't have a magical animal yet. Dot the basilisk is in the pokey ball, not counting the, lame child, who was fooled. Moreover, he and the three little angels are still young and cannot do those happy things, so the secret room is not in a hurry to be renovated. What's more, deceiving Dumbledore is not an easy thing. To sum up, he chose, to show off. As long as I don't think about it, I won't find it troublesome. As long as I'm not in a hurry, I won't be the one who is in a hurry. Riel's lay in the bathtub. 
Ah, so comfortable. This is life. Principal room. Snape sat calmly on the sofa, savoring the rich and fragrant black tea. Life is always like this. As long as you put the pressure on others, you will be very relaxed. So he put the pressure on Dumbledore. There was no way, who made it possible for Dumbledore to be the cause of this incident. He was just returning the trouble that originally belonged to Dumbledore. Snape thought this and felt that the black tea in his mouth became a little more mellow. Compared with his leisurely life, Dumbledore was a little unhappy. Looking at the letter in his hand, he said with a sullen look on his face, this Lucius is serious, why bother with a child? No wonder little Malfoy is a mudblood when he opens and shuts his mouth. It turns out that Lucius taught this. This is really, hey, those are my last two strange flavored beans. After hearing Dumbledore's words, Snape, who originally just picked up one strange flavored bean, instantly changed his mind and directly picked up the last two strange flavored beans and put them into his mouth. He's been tricked so many times, what's wrong with eating two strange flavored beans? Can't he still enjoy it? Oh, Severus, you should know that eating two strange flavored beans together is not a good habit. If you are not careful, it will make you cry. But it doesn't matter. Although the probability is not small, it does not count as marijuana. Dumbledore finished speaking with a smile, and pulled out a new bag of strange flavored beans from under the drawer, then tasted them with relish in front of Snape's face as black as the bottom of a cauldron. After eating, he did not forget to sigh. Strawberry flavor is still my favorite. Yesterday, my favorite was grape flavor. You know what it's like to eat slug flavor and then eat grape flavor. I think that's the best combination, I mean it's the antidote, it's like the counter curse. Snape swallowed the strange beans with an expressionless expression, and looked at Dumbledore quietly without saying a word. From now on, Dumbledore loses one of the only friends he can share strange beans with at Hogwarts, well, the other one is Riel's. Dumbledore also seemed to sense Snape's displeasure. He tentatively placed a bag of strange flavored beans on the table and pushed it toward Snape. But Snape still showed no reaction and just said coldly, Professor Dumbledore, Lucius said he will come to Hogwarts in two days. Don't you guess why he didn't come as soon as possible, but had to wait for two and a half days? This is not like Lucius's usual style. Lucius and Narcissa were both Death Eaters in the past and were Voldemort's loyal lackeys. After Voldemort's death, Death Eaters also became the targets of the Wizarding World's Purge. Most of the Death Eaters were captured in Azkaban and endured the torture of Dementors. Of course, a large number of them relied on their identities to avoid detection, or to avoid punishment, and erased everything they had as Death Eaters before. This group of people are pure blood family members like Lucius and Vanessa who have not yet declined. They had fought against the Death Eaters, and even after Voldemort failed, they were still alive and well, which was enough to show the power of the pure blood family. Many positions in the Ministry of Magic are held by purebloods, and even declining families like the Weasleys have a place in the Ministry of Magic. The Minister of Magic is the puppet of the pure blood family. It is not the minister who really controls the real power, but the people from the major families, as well as the Aurors. What's more, although the Malfoy family is somewhat in decline, it has not broken down. It is still the top three families among the 28 major families. Now that little Malfoy is beaten like this, Lucius and Vanessa didn't go directly to Hogwarts, are they beavers? Obviously not very beavers. So if they didn't kill them directly, there were only two possibilities. The first one was that they didn't care about little Malfoy's life or death. But little Malfoy is the only child of the Malfoy family and the biological son of Lucius and his wife. How could they not care about that? Then the only one left may be. Dumbledore rubbed his temples with a headache. Lucius wants to unite other pure blood families, or the Ministry of Magic, to put pressure on us. This time things are indeed a bit troublesome. After all, the Ministry of Magic is the department that manages the Wizarding World, which is equivalent to the government of the Wizarding World. Even though Dumbledore is the strongest white wizard, the headmaster of Hogwarts, and has multiple identities, he cannot blatantly resist the Ministry of Magic. It's not that he doesn't dare, it's just that he can't. If he resists the Ministry of Magic, the Ministry of Magic will lose its majesty. If it is serious, the wizards in the wizarding world will regard the Ministry of Magic as nothing, and there will be many wizards who are difficult to control. By then, the wizarding world will definitely be in chaos. 
Don't think that Dumbledore doesn't have this appeal. In fact, his appeal is far more than that. The wizards in the British wizarding world all graduated from Hogwarts, and they are all considered students of Dumbledore. This is also the reason why Lucius and Vanessa did not rush directly into Hogwarts, but joined others. They all knew that if they came directly, the final result would be to be coaxed back by Dumbledore with a few words. This was not the result they wanted. Malfoy was so seriously injured, how could they, as parents, not take revenge? Thinking of this, Dumbledore felt that the strange strawberry-flavored beans in his mouth didn't even taste good. This day goes by without stopping, and his old bones will fall apart sooner or later. Professor Dumbledore, I'm curious, why did you agree to Malfoy's duel with Riel's in the banquet hall? Stop saying you want me to observe Riel's. Do you think I will believe this reason? Snape continued expressionlessly. Yes, he would believe it and actually observe it. Every time he thought about this, Snape always wanted to punch himself twice. How could he believe such nonsense? Hey, Snape, you know I don't mean any harm. The duel is their own decision. Even if I don't agree, they will still continue, right? None of these two little guys are obedient and honest, but their intentions are not bad. I believe you can teach them well. Dumbledore paused, his eyes fell on the letter, and continued, since Lucius wants to come, let them come. It's been a few days since the little wizards started school, right? They're still little kids and they probably miss their families. Severus, what do you think? They are all little kids who miss their families. What does this have to do with Lucius and their troubles? But after thinking about it, he understood what Dumbledore meant, but this method. Snape sat up straight, put down the black tea, and looked at the smiling Dumbledore with some suspicion. Professor Dumbledore, are you sure you want to do this? Since the founding of Hogwarts, nothing like this has ever happened. This, I don't think it's a good idea. Dumbledore was not angry when he heard this, but instead smiled a little deeper. He grabbed two strange flavored beans, threw one to Snape and ate ten of them himself. Seeing Snape eating the strange flavored bean, he stopped smiling and answered the question, how is it? What flavor is it? The one I have is citrus, and it tastes great. Severus, you haven't tasted strange beans before, but that doesn't mean it's not delicious. Just like what I'm talking about, just because you haven't tried it doesn't mean it's not delicious. I think there are some places where we can really learn from muggles, just like pipelines, you know what I mean. If the effect this time is very good, then we can do it every year in the future. I believe it will be a great thing, and the little wizards will be looking forward to it. Snape swallowed the sweet and sour grape-flavored beans in his mouth, took a deep look at Dumbledore and stood up. I hope you make the right decision this time, Professor Dumbledore. Before he finished speaking, Snape turned around and walked towards the principal's room. Dumbledore smiled incredulously and reached out for the two strange-flavored beans. But before his hand touched the strange-flavored beans, the bag containing a large bag of strange-flavored beans flew away from under his nose. That's right, it just flew away. Severus, those are really my last bits of strange flavored beans. The new ones won't arrive until tomorrow. You can't take them away. Dumbledore stood up anxiously, reaching out to grab the strange flavored beans floating towards Snape. But unfortunately, his reaction was half a beat too slow, and his fingers just brushed against the bag of strange flavored beans. Dumbledore could only watch helplessly as Snape grabbed the bag full of strange flavored beans. Snape didn't know whether he was sincere or did it on purpose. Before leaving, he deliberately shook the full bag in his hand and said with a rare smile, Professor Dumbledore, you are right. You have to try new and novel things. What if there is a surprise? Also, thank you for the weird beans, I think I'll be in a good mood today. Before he finished speaking, Snape closed the door and left, leaving Dumbledore unable to react quickly. Well, if he had reacted, the strange flavored beans would not have left him now. This Severus has really changed a lot. It's not in vain that I let him observe Riel's and change him subtly. Dumbledore sighed with a smile, then picked up the letter on the table and looked at the various kind greetings on it with a headache. Halfway through seeing it, he subconsciously wanted to touch two strange flavored beans, but after touching for a long time, he didn't touch anything. Well, he didn't know whether Snape was happy today, but he was sure that he was very unhappy today. Dumbledore pouted and was no longer in the mood to read the letter. 
he put on the eye mask and began to fall into a deep sleep. As the saying goes, if you are extremely eager for something, then sleep during the day and daydreaming will help you realize your dream. He firmly believes in this sentence. The person who can say this sentence is definitely a very thorough person. What? He said this himself. So what? He lives a very thorough life, right? Slytherin's dormitory. It was less than two hours before noon. Riels didn't know what happened in the principal's office. At this time, he was wrapped in a bath towel and leaning on the Garfield egg very leisurely. He was also holding an elf egg in the forest. There's nothing I can do about it. The young man is very angry, especially after taking a shower. This elf egg is so cold and comfortable to hold. System, haven't you detected when Garfield will hatch? Your gene-breaking potion turns mammals into egg-laying ones. Now you can't even detect when she will break out of her shell, tell me what else you can do. The host please note that this accident was not caused by the system, but was detected to be the host's own fault. The Garfield hatching time system cannot accurately determine it, so we can only roughly estimate that it will be incubated in these two hours. Note, this speculation is based on the current situation. Any changes may affect the results of the speculation. Please inform the host. Garfield is perverted. Dot the egg is the reason for me. Riel's almost laughed out of anger. He just wanted to open his mouth and chat with the system. But before he could say anything, he suddenly remembered something in his expression. Yi Bian began to rummage on the bed. A moment later, Riel's was lying on the messy bed, looking like a salted fish who had lost hope. It's gone, it's really gone, it was robbed, no, it was robbed by the family. His moringa-sized piece of magic stone was just gone, and he didn't even think about using it to warm his feet in the future. Riel's caressed the Garfield eggs, his face full of helplessness, what's wrong with you? Why do you choose to eat the philosopher's stone? What can we do now? You might have evolved into Garfilas, but after absorbing the magic stone, you might only be able to help Faros. Well, magic drawing, or magic cat for short. I thought I was going to get a Godzilla, but in the end, Godzilla directly degenerated into a magical cat. Seriously, Riel's almost cried. Click, as if he was annoyed by Riel's nagging, after shaking the Garfield egg a few times, a crack appeared in the hard eggshell. When Riel saw this, he picked up the elf egg and jumped out of bed without thinking. Shanna, who was still napping, heard the noise and poked her head out of her little nest, looking straight at Garfield with her round eyes. To be honest, she was still a little sad when she saw the Garfield egg cracked, so she wouldn't be able to get out and play in the future. Click, click, crisp sounds echoed in the dormitory one after another, and the cracks on the Garfield egg continued to expand, like a broken mirror. Riel's looked at Garfield 110 nervously and expectantly. He really wanted to know whether he should say anything or not. Garfield plus Godzilla genetic fluid plus magic stone equals what can be fused under this formula? Is it Godzilla, Garfield, or a magical cat? Click, bang, there was a crisp sound of some changes, and Riel's quickly looked over, and then, he was stunned. Shanna, who was lying in the small nest, was also so frightened that she almost fell out of the small nest. Riel's eyelids twitched a few times. This arm, Dot has really turned into Garfilla's. No, this is not right. Garfield is obviously a big orange man, so why did he become a tattooed one? Looking at the muscular cat claw protruding from the huge eggshell, Riel's mood was so complicated that it was indescribable. What are these things? The final result of that formula won't be a muscular cat, right? But what's the point of him wanting a muscular cat? Can he be self-disciplined together? This is not as good as a magic cat. At least it can use magic and farm and so on. Click, bang, bang. As if sensing Riel's dissatisfaction, the arm suddenly retracted, followed by two more crisp sounds. The huge Garfield egg instantly changed from one hole to two holes, and the pair of arms full of muscles continued to expand the holes. For a moment, the only sound in the entire dormitory was the sound of eggshells breaking and falling off. Riel's frowned and wanted to pull him out directly to Garfield several times. But he thought about it again. The first step in the birth of egg-laying animals is to break the shell. This step is very important to them, and it may be counterproductive for others to interfere. Well, Garfield may have been a mammal before, but now, she's definitely a monad. A muscle cat will be a muscle cat. 
I hope you won't disappoint me. After all, it was a reward from his special lottery. If it was wasted like this, do you think he would feel bad? What's more, he also put in a magic stone, which is a good thing that can make the elixir of life. When you are short of money, you can use it to turn stone into gold. It is a perfect money-making machine, but it is a pity that it is gone now. And he had to find a way to explain to Dumbledore that drawing pictures of the Philosopher's Stone was no small matter. Click, boom, well, the sound of the eggshell falling off the bed and breaking into pieces, just by listening to the dull sound, you can tell that the little bed has endured a weight that it should not bear at its age. But this is not important. What is important is that the eggshell falls on the ground, which means that Garfield has successfully broken out of the egg. Riels looked at the bed expectantly, and with just one glance, he was completely stunned. No, he is about to burst. I saw that on the bed where Garfield eggs were originally placed, there were no eggs, and there was only one with well-developed limbs and a thick tail. Garfield. This is not the most important thing. The most important thing is that the cat has a dazzling big gold chain around its neck. That's right, a big gold chain, the kind that reflects light. Let's be honest, do you want another gold tooth? Riels complained speechlessly. Garfield looked at him dissatisfied, raised his head and let out a roar that he thought was mighty. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.